The Mafia King Wants Me Written by Nemera Narrated by Louise Mathias Chapter 1 Mr. Gennaro Antonio Gennaro His name was spoken with fear and with the utmost respect. One wrong word and you ended up dead. He was the ruler here, not the government. He was the police, the lawyers, the companies, and his word was law. How he managed to build himself such a kingdom, no one knew. But he did it slowly and with the strongest determination. He ruled in a ruthless way. Oh, and he owns the restaurant I perform in every night. And he's coming here tonight. When the word had spread about him coming to this restaurant, chaos erupted. The owner, Jonathan, and a very good friend of mine, had almost passed out when he called me to tell the news. First I wanted to stay home, but when Jonathan literally begged me to perform, I agreed. There are other singers, but I was the favorite of many. But I'm sure Antonio Gennaro has no idea who I am. I wasn't even aware I was small, but very fancy restaurant mattered to him. Nonetheless, he's coming. And I'm a bundle of nerves. No amount of people can make me this nervous. Performing was like breathing for me. But he was slowly cutting off my air supply. What if I sing wrong? What if my microphone stops working in the middle of the song? What if Antonio Gennaro hates my voice so much that he kills me? He certainly has killed for less. Sitting in my lounge and staring at my reflection, I inhaled and exhaled deeply. My heart was beating like a hammer against my chest and my fingers were trembling. I had warmed up my voice for several hours and only drank tea. Nothing can go wrong tonight. The time flew by, and after what felt like minutes were really hours, the clock hit 7.25 p.m. In five minutes, I will step onto the stage and perform for Antonio Gennaro. Everything must be perfect. For the hundredth time, I checked my makeup and hair. Then I rose from the chair and searched for any crease in my dress. Luckily, I found none in the black fabric. Let's do this. I drank the last sip of tea in my cup and took a deep breath. I left the safety of my lounge and wandered towards the stage through a narrow corridor. My heels clicked against the floor, but the sound was drowned by the noise of chatter and laughter. I was a tad surprised that Mr. Gennaro allowed other people in here. Perhaps he cancelled and isn't coming. I most certainly hope so. The buzzing from the crowd somehow made me forget all about Mr. Gennaro. For a moment. I closed my eyes and listened to the people. I just need to think this is a normal night. I need to forget who will be sitting and hearing me sing like everyone else. I need to forget he is here. The voice of an angel. Elena Hale. I heard my name being called. Applause echoed, and I knew it was time. The calm and soft keys from a piano silenced the entire restaurant. The song I was singing tonight, Million Reasons by Lady Gaga, had a short intro and gave me no chance to fill the rhythm, but I knew the song by heart. I raised the microphone, and when the words left my lips, I slowly started to walk onto the stage. The dining hall was decorated with lights and candles. The windows were covered with red banners. Small rose petals were all over the floor. The tables were decorated with cream cloths and with the finest cutlery money could buy. But I knew it was nothing compared to what was on Mr. Gennaro's table. Reaching the edge of the small stage, I stopped and let the words fill the silence. My voice echoed and I lost myself in the words that I sang. The piano to my right played along, but was careful not to drown my voice. 
It had happened once before, and the crowd had been beyond upset. I tried to keep my eyes steady, or closed, but my eyes scanned the crowd, and eventually reached Mr. Gennaro's table. A man dressed in a black suit, with rich chocolate hair, stubble on his strong jaw and thick eyebrows that made his eyes shine, stared at me. Never in my life had I seen such a man before. When our eyes met, I felt a surge in my stomach. I knew that if I kept looking at him, I would lose my words. So I, with much difficulty, tore my eyes from him. As I neared the end of the song and I saw the faces of the crowd, all affected with different emotions, I knew I had succeeded tonight. Well, partly succeeded. All that really matters is if Mr. Gennaro enjoyed it as much as the crowd. The last word of the song clung through the hall, and when I slowly lowered the microphone from my lips, applause and cheers exploded. Some even rose from their seats to applaud. A big smile decorated my lips as I watched them. But it dropped when I saw the look on Mr. Gennaro's face. He showed no emotions, didn't clap or cheer, and only stared at me with piercing eyes. Fear exploded my stomach, and I almost tripped over my own feet when I walked off the stage. Didn't he like it? Did I do something wrong? My mind was racing with possible reasons for his obvious resentment. I had done perfectly, and yet it wasn't enough. I never thought I would die because of my voice. But Mr. Gennaro will kill me. I'm certain of it. I could run. I could flee from here and try to escape him. But I knew it was impossible. He owns the city and everyone in it. Fleeing would only result in a more painful death. A sudden knock on my lounge door made me jump. I wiped the sweat off my brow and opened the door with shaky hands. It was Jonathan. Mr. Gennaro wants to see you now, he said and bit his lower lip, eyes full of concern. A harsh breath left my lips and I closed my eyes. If he decides to kill me today, I will show him no fear. I'll leave immediately, I said, trying to mask my fear and made my way towards his table. It was placed in the far end of the restaurant, in a more secluded area. He loves his privacy. But I saw that he wasn't alone by the table. A few men were sitting with him, probably his most trusted advisors. The people were still buzzing and eagerly ate the food cooked for them. I tried to stay out of sight and moved gracefully between the tables. The distance between me and Mr. Gennaro decreased with every step I took. Around his table sat four more men. They all wore suits from expensive brands and chatted with each other. But Mr. Gennaro was silent and watched me with cold eyes. I wanted to turn around and run away. His eyes made my knees tremble with fear. It was no easy task to hide it, but I was sure Mr. Gennaro saw right through me. Ah, the songbird. You truly have the voice of an angel, one of the four men said. He was younger than the others, and he had no beard or stubble like the rest. Compared to the rest, he looked like a young boy, a young boy who I should fear. Thank you, sir. You flatter me. I managed to choke out and nervously threw glances at Mr. Gennaro, who was still staring at me with emotionless eyes. And a charmer. I bet you would be feisty in bed, he said and smirked at me. The comment disgusted me and I really wanted to slap him right across his smug face, but slapping him is a death sentence. Leave, all of you, Mr. Gennaro suddenly ordered his voice harsh and his eyes shooting daggers at the young boy. The sudden distaste for one of his own made me raise an eyebrow, mentally, of course. But without question, they did as he said, and left the table. 
The young boy smirked at me and roamed my body with his eyes before leaving me alone with Mr. Gennaro. I'm alone with Antonio Gennaro. Fuck. He placed his elbows on the table and watched me with cold eyes. A glass of wine stood in front of him, but he had not taken one sip. Elena Hale. My name rolled off his tongue with a strong Italian accent, making it sound exotic and mysterious. If I hadn't been so afraid, I would have shivered. He tilted his head and watched me. I bet he can see the fear inside of me, even though I tried to conceal it. You truly have the voice of an angel. Please, sit. He said and gestured for the empty chair next to him. Relief washed over me. He did like my voice. That means he won't kill me, right? But his proposition, more of an order, of sitting next to him could still mean that he was planning to kill me. God damn it. Too scared to disobey, I did as he said and sat down beside him, my hands in my lap. Mr. Gennaro eyed me, never letting his eyes falter for one second. It's rare to find such a beautiful voice, he said. Th thank you, Mr. Gennaro, I said, almost too quickly. His eyes were staring so intensely at me that I couldn't meet his gaze. Hopefully he won't take offense. Call me Antonio, for I will call you Elena, he said, and slowly grabbed one of my hands. That made me turn my head and watch him which was clearly a mistake because his pale eyes, reminding me of a liquid silver, memorized me. Any woman would die to be in my position. Even if he was feared, women couldn't resist his extremely good looks and charm. And I was starting to falter too. As you wish, Mr. J. Antonio. I choked out when his plump and smooth lips kissed my hand, making a blush decorate my cheeks. When his name left my mouth, a silent growl emerged from his throat. It almost sounded possessive. My name sounds so sweet from your tongue, Elena, he said and stared up at me. I was close to telling him how incredibly turned on I was when he mentioned my name, but the words couldn't find their way off my lips probably for the best. I, I'm not sure how to, I said but stopped myself when he suddenly leaned in closer to me, placing his sweet lips on my neck. Oh my God. My stomach exploded with butterflies that sent beams of warmth throughout my whole body, and the strongest ones traveled straight to my womanhood. A small moan slipped out from my mouth and made me blush even harder. I can only imagine what lovely noises you would moan when I make you squirm of pleasure. He said seductively against my neck, making me shiver from delight. My whole body was burning, and my womanhood was pulsating. Only words and a kiss to my neck made me feel like jelly and extremely turned on. I didn't care who he was. I wanted him very badly. He was seducing me, and it worked. Suddenly, I felt fingers travel up my thigh, closer and closer to where I needed him the most. A shaky breath left my lips, and my legs spread automatically. I heard him chuckle before he kissed my neck again. I was in such bliss that I didn't notice the growing bulge in his pants. Mr. Gennaro, a voice called. It made me jump and widened my eyes. Antonio growled of disappointment and leaned back, still with his hand resting on my thigh. One of his four men, clearly older, with gray hair and equally gray beard, rushed towards our table. To say Antonio was not pleased was an understatement. I could feel him trembling with anger. What? He hissed through his clenched teeth and gave the old man a death stare. Even I felt afraid, and his anger wasn't even aimed towards me. 
We have a situation, the old man said and threw a glance at me. I bet he understood what was going on between us. Antonio sighed and clenched one of his hands into a fist. Damn it. Tell them I'm coming right away, he said and waved the man away, who nodded and left us alone again. I was staring at Antonio as realization of what just happened washed over me. Don't worry, I am not done with you yet, he said, squeezing my thigh and placing a hungry kiss on my neck. And then he rose from the chair and left me with a trembling body. What in the world have I gotten myself into? Chapter 2 Unknown Threat To say I was in a daze when I stared at my own reflection was another understatement. My mind was racing, yet standing still. Antonio had vanished in a hurry and left my body unsatisfied. I could still feel the tingles in my womanhood and my thighs trembling with anticipation. But he was gone. I wasn't supposed to feel this way about him. That man is trouble. And yet I couldn't say no. For two reasons. First, he's the goddamn mob. Second, I can't resist him. My mind was screaming no, but my body was screaming yes. I wanted nothing more than to give in to what my body was screaming at me. But I needed to think clearly, and about the consequences of even spending one night with him. I know what kind of man he is. He seeks pleasure for one night and then scrapes off the woman like they are dirt on his shoes. It's quite revolting. I should feel revolted. And yet, I didn't. I groaned and nearly gave myself a bruise when my forehead hit the table in front of me. What a complete and utter mess. Elena, thank God you're all right, Jonathan suddenly exclaimed. His sudden appearance made me jump and nearly knock down my perfume. I'm so clumsy off stage. Indeed, I sighed and continued to stare at myself. I had smudged out the mascara and my hair was a tad messy. Luckily, Antonio saw me at my best. So, did he like it? Will he return? Jonathan asked while biting his lower lip. I wasn't sure if he wanted a yes or no on the last question. Yes, and I don't know. I said and tried my best to focus on him, but it was useless. Well, aren't you cheerful? he muttered. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm exhausted after faring my life. I nearly hissed out. Don't get me wrong, I love Jonathan like my brother. But I really didn't need to hear his judgment right now. Hmm, I guess you have a point. Therefore you should head home and take tomorrow off. You deserve it, he said with an apologetic smile. I don't think he can understand how thankful I am to have him as my boss right now. A day off is really what I need. Thanks, Jonathan, really, I said and gave him a tired smile. Any time, good night, he said and blew me a teasing kiss, making me chuckle and gave him a quiet good night back. Both my mind and body were exhausted. The anticipation from before was slowly starting to wear off. Wonderful. At least I can get home without getting hit by a car. On my way out, I grabbed my bag and my more casual clothes from earlier today. I didn't bother to change. I'm only taking a taxi home. The summer night was warm, and a cozy breeze managed to find its way between the buildings. I was glad to walk the short distance to the bigger street without shivering from the cold. That's why I prefer summer over winter or any season for that matter. I could hear the traffic and immediately raised my arm when I walked out on the not-so-busy sidewalk. A few people passed me by, but we paid no attention to each other, but a taxi did and stopped right next to me. The driver was, of course, a man, but the dark hid his face. Where to? He said in a bored tone. Great, he's one of those drivers. 
South Charlotte Square 20, I said in an equally bored tone and stared out the window, trying to fix my makeup and hair. We shared no more words after that. The drive home was about ten minutes, and the time passed by rather quickly. When we arrived at the address, I gave him a twenty-dollar bill and a quick goodbye. I never say my real address. You don't know what creeps people can be, but my apartment is further down the street. With clicking hills, I walked through the darkness, not paying attention to anything around me, which was clearly a mistake, because when I dropped my keys, someone else picked them up for me. And there he was, the man I thought I never would see again, even if he said we would, Antonio Gennaro. My breath got stuck in my throat when I stared into his pale eyes. A wry smile decorated his plump lips and almost brought me to my knees. Not because of fear, but because he was so damn attractive. Good evening, he greeted and placed the keys in my open palm. I must have looked stupid because of the way I stared at him. Ah, uh, good, good evening. I choked out. My unsure and squeaky voice made him chuckle as he tucked his hands in his pockets. The black blazer was open and the first buttons on his white shirt were also open, bearing the beginning of his strong chest. I bet there's a six-pack under there. He looked oddly casual, like he wasn't the most feared man in the city. I came to apologize for the interruption earlier he said softly, and kept a charming smile on his lips. You could have just text, I countered. It was true. If he wanted my number, he could easily find it, using all his contacts. No one can hide from him. My remark made him chuckle again. I suppose there's something more to my visit, he said, and this time smirked fully at me, his eyes gleaming. Oh, dear. My heart started to beat rapidly again. I knew exactly what he was referring to. And if he touched me in the same way again, I won't be able to resist him. I need to think clearly. Sleeping with him is no good idea. I shouldn't even be talking to him. But can I really say no to him? My silence made his smile drop slowly. Could he see my hesitation? Your legs parted for me very easily before. What's changed? He asked and stepped closer. The smell of his perfume filled my nose. And damn it, it smelled good. Even having him just a bit closer made my mind race. You're Antonio Gennaro. Isn't the answer obvious? I said. I wasn't sure where my sudden bravery came from. Ah, I see. Afraid, are you? Afraid I will leave you in the cold once I'm done with you? He said, and continued to cross the distance between us. I wanted to back away from him, but my feet were glued to the ground. Isn't that your plan? I whispered. What else could I expect from a man such as him? There is no way he wants more than a one-night stand. He was standing right in front of me his eyes piercing mine. What if I told you how beautiful I find you? It would be a waste to only spend one night with you. Even how much I wanted to make you scream my name, he mumbled and leaned into me like at the restaurant. God, how I wanted to close my eyes and give in to my burning desire. How I wanted his hands to roam all over my body. But I'm not like that. When he leaned a little too close, I didn't actually mind his closeness. I placed a hand on his chest and pushed him back. I was careful not to place my hand on any bare skin. Touching him will only result in me wearing nothing. My resistance made him raise an eyebrow and stared down at me with questioning eyes. I'm not one of those girls, I mumbled. His pale eyes softened a bit and a strained laughter left his lips. If I read him right, he was struggling to keep his hands off me. 
what if I don't care, he said, towering over me like a predator. And that's when I felt fear build up in my chest. The way he looked at me, so determined and hungry, made me fear him. I can only imagine the horrible things he can do to me. But I can't find myself to hurt you. That sweet voice of yours has enchanted me, he said with a kind smile. I felt partly reassured by his words. Yes, he said he didn't want to hurt me, but he can still do horrible things to me and those that I love. I'm not sure how reassuring that is. I have an advantage then, I whispered out, not sure how to respond to his earlier statement. Indeed you do. Let's make a deal, something that will benefit us both, he said and ignored my hand on his chest as he leaned in closer. What kind of deal are you speaking of? I asked with a trembling voice. I once again pushed my hand against his chest, but this time I was unsuccessful, because he continued to lean in with more determination. The outcome is entirely up to you, he mumbled and set his eyes on my neck. What is it with him and my neck? But I'll bite, for now. Then tell me, I said and tried desperately to keep my voice steady. Have dinner with me, he said so abruptly that I first thought he was telling me a joke. But he wasn't. The seriousness in his eyes told me he was 100% serious. How does that benefit me? I asked him. A sigh left his lips, and before I managed to object, his lips kissed my neck again. I had to clench my thighs in a useless attempt to keep the hot beams from reaching my womanhood. It was as useless as my hand against his chest. His strong hands grabbed my waist and pulled me closer to him. I collided with his chest and felt the air leave my lungs for a second. His lips kissed and carefully bit my sensitive skin. Without managing to stop myself, my hands traveled up his chest, feeling his abs through the shirt and harshly grabbed his collar to pull him closer to me. This is exactly what I'm talking about. His touch makes me lose myself in ecstasy. It's insane how intoxicating he is. Free dinner and wonderful company, he mumbled against my neck. My benefit wasn't exactly as charming as he thought. If Antonio Gennaro has something, it's a big ego and much confidence. But then his lips started to kiss my jawline, and his proposition suddenly sounded amazing. Ah, uh, okay, I whispered, and with much struggle kept my eyes open. I could feel him smirk against my skin. Damn it. Excellent. I will pick you up at six tomorrow night, he said, and sounded very satisfied with himself. He kissed my neck one last time before leaning back with his hands still on my waist. I stared up at him, not sure what emotions were showing on my face. Lust? Desire? Probably because I was aching for him. I had given in to what my body was saying, not my head. Damn it, was the mild word I had for my weakness. Wear something elegant, yet sexy, he added. I narrowed my eyes at him. I'll wear whatever I want. I nearly hissed through my teeth. Antonia only laughed of amusement before stepping away from me. My body immediately missed his warm touch. You're one of a kind, Elena. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Good night, he said and looked at me with warm and excited eyes. It did surprise me, but I saw the truth in his eyes. He was really looking forward to tomorrow, but it could all be a trick to make me drop my dress, even if I'm almost doing so myself. Ah, yes, thank you. See you, I said quickly, feeling myself blush again. I spun around and swiftly unlocked the door and slammed it shut. Antonio can find his way home without a doubt. 
Hell, he found my home. The moment I was alone, a long breath left my lips. This is all so crazy and kind of messed up. I'm a decent girl, okay? And decent girls don't mix with the mafia, especially not the king. I just have to politely tell him to leave me alone tomorrow. But was I able to send him away? It wasn't only his touch that drove me crazy and trapped me. It was his way as well. I've seen so many genuine feelings in him tonight. If I may be bold, I think he actually likes me. No, it's a trick. I must tell him to leave me the fuck alone tomorrow. But leaving him made my heart ache in a way it shouldn't. Suddenly my phone in my handbag interrupted my slow breakdown at the door. I can't believe he's calling me already. I cursed to myself and aggressively ripped out the phone in my bag. Unknown was written over the screen. Of course, what else could I expect? Antonio, I really don't know how you're finding a reason to call me, but I'm... I started to say, but I was interrupted. Stay away from Antonio Gennaro. A dark and inhuman voice spoke harshly to me. I froze on my doorstep and felt my breathing stop. Who, who is this? I squeaked, asking the stupidest questions of them all. But I received no response and the person hung up on me. I was just threatened and I haven't even known Antonio for 24 hours. I'm both surprised and terrified. Whoever called me knows about my association with Antonio. That means someone was or is watching me. I carefully peeked out the window next to the entry door. I saw only the black night through the window, but out there, in the night, someone is watching my every move. Damn it. Chapter 3. At His Mercy the barista handed me the takeaway cup, full with hot and well-needed coffee. I didn't get much sleep last night. I was afraid someone would kick open my door and kidnap me. But nothing had happened, and now I was wasting money on a drink I didn't even like. Thanks, I said to the barista and tried to give her a thankful smile, but it must have come off as a grimace instead. The look on the barista's face said it all. Yeah, I can never return here. When I left the small coffee shop, I took a sip of the bitter coffee and continued on my way home. As I walked along the busy road, I glanced at every display window. I needed to buy a dress for tonight, but my hunt has been unsuccessful so far. Everything was either too expensive or too much. I wanted to find something elegant and yet revealing for tonight. How I came to the conclusion of still going was beyond me. But I wanted these creeps to stay away from me, and Antonio is the only one who can take care of them. Antonio can, without a doubt, find the caller. He can find anyone. But I needed to find a dress before I do anything, and at this rate, I have to ask Jonathan for one, which I hated because I've already borrowed enough from him. Worst case scenario is to ask Antonio for something, but that would be super awkward. Excuse me, miss, someone suddenly asked me. Ripped out of my daydreaming, I looked to my side and saw a petite young woman standing next to me. Then I realized I had stopped in front of a display window and was staring at the clothes. Wow, this is so awkward. Oh, sorry, I was lost in thought. I said and flashed her a quick smile. You don't need anything? The kind woman asked. Well, I do need a dress. Maybe she has something. I turned my head back to the display window and examined her wares. It was just as bland as the other stores. This is going to be a long day. But then a white piece of fabric caught my eye, and when I saw it fully in the window, I knew I had found my dress. Finally. I wonder what kind of car Antonio will drive. Obviously something luxurious, but what kind of car? A sports car? 
Or will he pick me up in a limousine? That would be so cool. With every second that passed, I felt myself grow more and more excited for dinner with Antonio. I tried to tell myself it was just because I was curious where he would take me. But I have always been bad at lying. Something Antonio must be a master at. Could all of this be one big lie? The questions circulated in my head non-stop. Was this all a charade? But what would he gain to lie? It couldn't be just because he wanted me in his bed. He can easily pick any girl out there. Was it because he found it fun? Or did he really like me? I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if he wanted something more than a one-night stand, even if he said something like that last night. It was difficult to paint a picture of how he truly was. Why is my love life such a mess? I sighed to myself and continued to apply makeup. The dress was elegant, yet sexy, and I wanted my makeup to be modest. All the attention must be on the dress. I did pay quite a lot for it. But is there really a price for love? I think not. Also, I hadn't told anyone, not even Jonathan, about my dinner with Antonio. Jonathan would most certainly try to stop me, and I know why. The idea of going out with him is crazy and suicidal. He can kill me if I say something he doesn't like. But with fear, I felt excitement and anticipation. I had never done anything like this before. My life was normal and boring. This little thrill will be a memory for life. If I live through the night, that is. But somehow I knew Antonio would never hurt me. Perhaps a naive thought, but I was convinced anyway. The last thing I did was to fix my hair. I had tried to curl it earlier today, but I failed miserably. So I pinned it up in a bun with some strands of hair framing my face. The look was complete, and I loved it. It was just perfect. What I adored the most was, of course, the dress. It showed off my curvy figure, and yet gave me an elegant look. A mix between sexy and elegant. Absolutely perfect. Hopefully Antonio will like it as much as I do. Speaking of Antonio, a car just honked outside my flat. It must be him, since it's exactly 6 p.m., he really knows how to be on time. Outside of my modest flat, a bright orange car waited on the street, and it made me drop my jaw just thinking about me sitting in it. The car was luxurious, indeed. It looked like a car straight out of a magazine. Even though I had no idea what kind of car it was, I instantly liked it. If I'd known the car would be orange, I would have picked a matching outfit. But what I'm wearing now is also perfect. I grabbed my small black handbag and rushed out of the apartment. I was so excited. My heart was beating in my chest and I skipped down the stairs, almost breaking my feet. How I managed to not trip is and always will remain a mystery. The excitement rushed through me like adrenaline and almost made me forget to lock my door. My clumsiness made Antonio chuckle as he leaned against his car. That pose made him look incredibly sexy. I turned fully around, fixed my hair, and walked towards his luxurious car. It's unbelievable I will be sitting in that. But what really caught my eye was how Antonio stared at me. His eyes were gleaming with lust as he roamed my body, probably thinking of all the things he could do to me. The lustful gaze made me bite my lower lip. Can someone fake such hunger? You look amazing. No, amazing doesn't begin to describe you. He said and bit his lower lip, like I did. Damn, he looked even more sexy doing that. Finding the will to push him away will be extremely difficult tonight. Thank you. You look decent yourself, I said playfully. Oh gosh, where did my playfulness come from? I'm out on thin ice already. Ow, my heart, he chuckled and opened the passenger door, gesturing for me to sit down. I gave him a small smile and took a seat, examining the car's interiors. 
It was all dressed in black leather. It felt a bit awkward to move, but the luxury made up for that. Not even my house was as fancy as this car. Antonio took a seat behind the wheel and didn't waste one second, turning on the car and driving away from my street. I turned my head and watched him. I'm very interested in where he's taken me. Where are we going? I asked eagerly. He chuckled. Don't want to spoil the surprise. Patience, baby, he said and used the nickname. I wouldn't mind him calling me that from time to time. God damn it. Focus. Is it close by? I asked, trying to pry something out of him. You are a curious one, he said, but didn't answer my question, smiling as he drove along the busy streets. Well, I don't have a topic to discuss with him. What does a mafia king talk about other than business and which people to murder? I can't imagine him talking about the weather. So, when did you buy this car? I said. I really had nothing else to speak about, and the silence was killing me. But when he placed a hand on my bare thigh, all my lust to speak vanished. His hand was warm and sent orgasmic shivers through my lower body. Damn it. Relax, Elena. You have nothing to fear when you're with me, he said calmly, squeezing my thigh as if to make a point. But it only made me choke down a moan. Safe with him. I'm much safer on my own. The phone call last night proves it all. I understand that he can protect me while he's with me, but when I'm on my own, I will be a target. That's why I have to sever our connection tonight. I don't want my mother to bury me in a coffin. I would feel a lot safer if you told me where we were going. I countered while trying to stay strong. His touch was distracting me from what's important. Now you're only using my promise. It doesn't work that way, darling, he said and smirked to himself. Well, he's really amused. I'm just trying to establish some sort of trust between us, I huffed. He squeezed my thigh again, and I swear I was losing focus. Does he know how his touch affects me? Because if he does, he's clearly using it against me and telling you where we're going, that's trust? He said while his smile was fading a little. Guess he didn't expect the resistance from me. Um, maybe resistance isn't the right word. Yeah, it is. What kind of trust do you have with your people? I said and quirked an eyebrow. A trust that they won't murder me in my sleep, he said like it was the most common thing in the world. Oh was all I could say. I really wasn't expecting such a straightforward answer. But to answer your question, we are going to one of my own restaurants, he said and put that smirk on his lips again. Oh yeah, really helpful. You own all the restaurants, Antonio, I said and rolled my eyes. He laughed out loud and squeezed my thigh in the process. His laugh was warm and made me lean towards him, unknowingly, of course. I do love your quick comebacks, he admitted and started to massage my inner thigh. A silent hiss left my lips when my legs automatically parted from his touch, something that he noticed and only boosted his ego. I will never be able to resist him, not while he's touching me. Ah, we're here, he said suddenly and pulled the car over to the street. When we had stopped, he gave my fire a final squeeze before stepping out the car and walking around it, probably to open a door for me. What a gentleman. The short moment alone I used to calm down my raging hormones, but I was completely unsuccessful, and Antonio opened the door, most likely leading me down a new path of hormones. As I stepped out of the car, I turned around to watch the place I was spending the evening at, and my jaw dropped. The luxurious Paradise Street was right across the sidewalk. A red carpet led up to the front door, with two doormen dressed in suits opening the door for entering guests. People wearing only expensive clothing entered the restaurants, 
and I know why. A drink here costs more than my rent. Antonio chuckled behind me and placed an arm around my waist to get me to move. I had been completely glued to the ground as I stared at the restaurant. Never in my life did I believe I would set foot in this restaurant. And now I'm entering with Antonio Gennaro, something I never imagined either. When we walked up to the front door, the doormen widened their eyes a bit before opening the door for us. Everyone knew who he was here. I wonder if he dines here a lot. The inside was even more luxurious than the outside. Most of the decorations were in gold, and the walls were dark, giving it all a cozy atmosphere with dim lights. Candles were also lit in pompous candle holders. The price of all this is probably more than what I'll make in my whole life. Come, darling, he said, and led me towards a stair leading up. Everyone else remained on this floor and waited for their tables. Aren't we supposed to follow them? Um, the tables are that way, I said and looked at his perfect profile. Yes, but I have something special just for you, my songbird. He purred and pulled me closer. Feeling his strong body closer to mine almost made my legs turn into jelly. The stair led us up to a narrow corridor that then led us to a door, and when he opened the door, my jaw dropped again. It was a small rooftop with a table and two chairs in the middle of it. Rose petals formed a path towards it, with a champagne bottle standing in the middle of the table. The city, all lit up, looking like another planet, almost blinded me. It was so romantic and somewhat personal. I'm sure Antonio didn't set this up himself, but it still felt personal in a way. Take a seat, he said when we walked up to the table. He pulled the chair out and pulled it in under me. Well, he has good manners. I didn't know manners existed in his world. Antonio took a seat across from me, placed his elbows on the table, and fixated his eyes on me. All of his attention was aimed at me. There was no way I could escape him. I hated to admit it, but I'm at his full mercy tonight. Chapter 4 Consequences Be Damned I stared down at the plate in front of me. It looked too good to eat. I couldn't destroy such a masterpiece. Imagine all the time and effort put into this little piece of salad. Just looking at it makes me feel bad. Antonio happily took a bite and seemed undisturbed by the extremely fancy food. Hmm, I guess he eats like this every day. The pros of being the king of the mafia, I guess. But I need to stop distracting myself and eat my damn food. It wasn't made to be stared at. Tell me, how long have you worked for Jonathan? Antonio asked and looked up from his salad. He tilted his head and watched my every move. It caught me off guard. Three years. He heard me sing at a bar one night and offered me a better job at his restaurant, I said, and smiled apologetically for my small mistake. The restaurant is really his, not Jonathan's. He owns every place in the city in some way. Interesting. It's unfortunate that I didn't find you sooner, he said and smirked at me. The candles on the table threw shades all over his perfect face, giving a mysterious and kind of badass look. Why do I always fall for the bad guys? And Antonio really is the baddest of them all. Oh, would things have been different if you did? I asked and slowly ate my small tomato. Absolutely. Instead of eating on this table, we would be fucking on it he said and winked at me. I literally choked on the tomato and nearly suffocated. I stared at him with wide and surprised eyes, and to say he was amused was an understatement. He was chuckling at my strong reaction to his remark. Our conversation had escalated from zero to a hundred real quick. I also felt extremely flustered by all the images he put in my head, images that would not leave my head for at least a week. I, uh, well, it's, um, 
I stammered and blushed madly. How the hell do I respond to that? Do I say thank you? No, that's just weird, and it's definitely not a compliment of us fucking on a table. It's a remark, and one he was very sure of. This guy has a bigger ego than Jonathan, and I'm sure I'm only boosting it. Ah, you think I don't speak the truth? He said and was only more amused. I didn't say that, not at all. I haven't even said a proper word. That's not... I started. But I do. You will see how persuasive I am, he said, and clapped his hands like a true businessman. Gosh, I can practically see his head expanding because of his ego. He's so sure of himself. I don't think I've ever met anyone with such confidence before. But why wouldn't he be confident? Every woman fell at his feet. I would also fall if he continued to touch me the way he does. But seeing his inflated ego also made me irritated and somewhat challenged. During my time on this planet, I've met my fair share of boys with big egos. They are nothing but trouble. But Antonio is, without a doubt, the one who wears it the best. Is that a challenge? I managed to say, now completely recovered from my suffocation by the tomato. My daring words sparked something in his eyes. They both surprised and intrigued him. Would you be willing to challenge me? He said and frettingly leaned forward on his chair, placing his elbows on the table. The change in his attitude scared me, but I told myself not to falter. I need to show him that I'm no ordinary girl that will obey his every order, even if I'm at his mercy this evening. I would. I barely whispered and stared at him with determined eyes. I expected him to chuckle or to smirk and comment on my strong will, but his reaction almost scared me to death. The chair scraped against the floor when he hastily rose and walked around the table with eyes burning with anger. I didn't even manage to react before he grabbed my chair and turned it to him, leaning down and staring at me with dark eyes. My heart was beating rapidly and stopping at the same time. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to do. Fear filled my gut, and I realized my mistake. I had become too comfortable in his presence. He had lured me in and used my own boldness as a weapon. I was trapped. No one would know if he killed me here. The personnel would not even raise a brow because he owns them. You don't challenge me, Elena, he said and leaned even closer to my face. If I wasn't trembling with fear, I would have loved his closeness. But now the atmosphere around us has changed and it was all my fault. Tell me, do you still want to challenge me? He said and tightened his grip on the armrest on my chair. The fear in me screamed no. Every part of the logic sense of my brain told me to say no. And yet, I knew I couldn't. I feared him, of course I did. I was scared to death. I was scared he would kill me right here. But if I were to die, I want to go down fighting. I refuse to be one of those girls that obey his every command, that he scares into submission. That is not me, and I won't let him change me. Yes, I breathed out. My short response made him falter for a second. He hadn't expected that answer from me. At every encounter before, I had obeyed him. But now I was starting to fight back. Damn, this is my death sentence. We stared at each other. The air was tense. My body was slowly trembling. His hands were almost breaking the wood on my chair. Then suddenly he laughed. It was a shaky laugh, and he lowered his head and continued to laugh. I continued to stare at him, confused and baffled. Was that another trick? Did he just test me? You truly are one of a kind, Elena, and I happen to adore you very much, he said and looked up again. His eyes were now soft and full of amusement. I felt myself relaxing and exhaling a deep breath. 
I still wasn't sure if this had been a test or if he simply changed his mind. Why did you change your mind? I asked breathlessly. Not many have the courage to stand up to me. I need someone who doesn't fear me, he admitted with a wry smile. Not fear him. I fear him. I know of his temper and methods. Not fearing him would be foolish. But I do fear you, I admitted. You think you do. But if you truly feared me, you would have said no instead of yes. He explained and stood straight. I guess there is some logic to his argument, but I still fear him, no matter what he says. So, it was a test? I said and raised my eyebrow, placing my hands in my lap. A warm chuckle left his lips as he scratched his neck. It made him look like a guilty child. Was he sorry for testing me? I must admit, yes. I'm sorry for scaring you, but I needed to know where I have you, he said, and smiled apologetically. Okay, where did all his ego go? I slightly narrowed my eyes at him. Was that a real apology? I really had no idea anymore. The way his moods change drives me crazy. Asking would have been nice. I huffed and crossed my arms. The way he threatened me before was not okay. He can't just threaten me whenever he wants to know where I stand. That's not how this relationship works. Forgive me, please. I'll make it up to you. He apologized and smiled sadly at me. Does that mean he's sorry for what he did? I believe this dinner is also for making it up to me. I countered and smiled at him. The air around us was relaxed again, and seeing him so calm made me happy. Then I need to figure out something special next time, he said, and gave me a slight nod. Next time, he wishes to see me again then. I must admit, I want to see him again as well. The goal of this dinner was originally to tell him to stay the hell away from me, but I can't anymore. I feel myself falling for him. That you do. I chuckled and looked down. A comfortable silence fell between us, and I wondered what would happen next. Dance with me, he suddenly said to break the silence. I met his eyes and my mouth formed an O. Oh. Dance with him? There's no music, I said and raised an eyebrow. Antonio rolled his eyes and smiled before snapping his fingers. How is that going to help? But to my surprise, Music started to play. Where did that come from? Is someone watching us? But when I heard the song, I couldn't help but to stare at him in surprise. Million Reasons by Lady Gaga filled the air. Antonio waited for my reaction like a child waited for his presence on Christmas. I could only chuckle at his choice of music. Dance with me? He asked again and reached out an open hand towards me. I'd love to. I said and took his warm hand. We walked away from the table, and when he placed an arm around my waist, I felt the air leave my lungs. No matter how he upset me, I still craved his touch and closeness. He's like an addictive drug. Our dance was calm and not something spectacular. We just slowly danced to the music and stared at each other. Just seeing him like this made me forget all about who he truly was. It's dangerous to forget, but it's only for one night. Reality can hit me later. You know that this is really weird, right? I asked and smiled at him. Antonio tilted his head. No, I don't. Why do you think it's weird? He asked me back. I saw the confusion and worry in his eyes. Well, you're the mafia, and I'm just a singer. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I said. I at least think it's kind of weird, but not in a bad way. It's just a very strange mix. The king of the mafia and a simple singer. Who'd have thought? But I shouldn't get ahead of myself. Just a singer? Is that how you see yourself? He asked and started to massage my lower back. 
I loved the way his hands moved across my back. How else can I see myself? I am a singer, I said. Now he's making me confused. What about beautiful, intelligent, bold, brave, he said, and pulled me closer. His words flattered me and I blushed. Did he really think that about me? He finds me beautiful? I couldn't help but to think how romantic this whole ordeal was. We were dancing on a rooftop with a glowing city as a view and a warm summer breeze warming us. The music symbolized our first meeting and I felt somewhat nostalgic about that. No one had ever done anything so romantic for me before. The dates I've had before were just a simple dinner and some conversation. I've never actually danced on a date. Okay, flatterer, trying to get on my good side. I joked and laughed, but he didn't laugh with me and only smiled. I'm already on your good side, and I do mean what I said, he said. Ah, there is that ego. It wasn't as big as before, but I still shouldn't boost it. I believe his head will explode if I do. Thank you. Really, no one has ever called me beautiful before, or intelligent, or bold, or brave, I said, and smiled at him. Antonio slowly shook his head. Then they are all fools. I have never met anyone like you before, he admitted, and looked at me like I was the reason to live. I didn't know how to think straight anymore, but honestly, I don't care anymore. I don't care if he's dangerous. There's no way I can give him up now, and he better not give me up either. I can say the same, I said, making him chuckle. It's true, there's only one Mafia King. Being with him, inviting him in like this, will give me consequences in the future. But consequences be damned. Suddenly he twirled me around in a purette, taking me by surprise, and I almost fell because of it. When he pulled me closer again, I was just about to apologize, but he never gave me the chance, because he captured my lips in a passionate kiss. Chapter 5. Attacked My stomach did a flip, and my mind did a 360. Antonio's lips were soft and had a lingering taste of champagne making his lips sweeter than candy. But what really made my heart race was the amount of passion behind the kiss. It was almost like I was the oxygen he so desperately breathed in. Never in my life had I been kissed in such a way before. But the kiss was short, and he leaned back only moments later. He stared at me, waiting for my reaction to his sudden kiss. But I wasn't sure what my mind was thinking because it was completely blank, so I let my body decide. I grabbed his collar and crashed my lips on his, taking in the sweet taste and the warmth from his body. Antonio obliged immediately and roughly embraced me with his arms. I moaned of content and started to pull at his collar. I wasn't sure where the hell this was going, but I wasn't going to stop either, and Antonio seemed just as eager as me if not more. Instead of roaming my body with his hands, he suddenly grabbed my thighs and lifted me up, making me encircle his waist with my bare legs. This allowed him to feel my buzzing skin, and he used that opportunity very well. I could feel his rough but soft hands squeezing and caressing my skin at the same time, and it sent strong orgasmic shivers through my body. He was still dancing with my lips, and when his tongue begged for entrance, I allowed it, and our tongues started to fight for dominance, and not even in this fight did I back down in submission, and it made him growl of pleasure. My whole body was buzzing with warm energy and made me warm in my womanhood. Also, with my legs around his waist, I felt a bulge press against my core. Waves of excitement rushed through me. This was really happening. The king of the mafia was kissing me like I was the love of his life, and I drowned in his touch. 
It reminded me of a romantic novel and all of the feelings described in one because I was exploding with so many loving warm feelings towards him. Suddenly I heard a chair scrape against the ground. It made me gasp and release his lips to see what he was doing. Antonio had just pushed away the chair I had sat on and was moving towards the table. Is he thinking of, and just like I had predicted, Antonio placed me on the edge of the table and took a moment to stare down at me. The strong and utter hunger after me in his eyes made me moan and bite my lip. I jumped when he roughly pushed everything off the table. The plates, the glasses, and even the napkins. The only thing remaining on the table was the open champagne bottle but he didn't give me time to turn my head and watch the mess on the floor because he captured my lips again and pressed me down on the table. My back was resting against the cold glass, and it made my body quake of the mix between warmth and heat. Antonio wasted no time and caressed my bare legs from my feet and up to the edge of my dress. A silent gasp left my lips when I felt him slowly starting to pull at my dress. I didn't care if anyone could see us. My body was aching for him, completely and utterly aching for him. I longed to fill him, but I knew he also was teasing me because he released my lips and started to assault my neck, probably leaving hickeys. I moaned loudly and arced my back like a bow, wanting to fill him closer. Antonio was just about to pull my dress up when the champagne bottle suddenly exploded. I didn't even have time to react before I was on the floor with Antonio over me. What just happened? Antonio, I squeaked. His whole body was pressed against mine, and we were laying on the ground. How did the champagne bottle explode? The sweet liquid was pouring down from the table and soaked down my dress. Keep your head down, he hissed in my ear, and started to look around. Keep my head down? What? Then something, something small and too fast to see, passed by my head. And that's when I knew someone was shooting at us. Panic started to erupt in my chest. A fucking bullet had just passed by my head. We're going to die. It started to pound in my head and my heart was beating out of my chest. Never in my life had I felt such fear before. Not even my first meeting with Antonio compared to the fear and panic running through my veins and mind. All possible scenarios of death circulated my head. Stay low and follow me. Antonio's shout whispered in my ear, grabbed my hand and violently pulled me to my feet. Stay low? This is not staying low. And who the hell are those people? Why are they shooting at us? Ugh! Why am I even asking that question to myself? I know exactly why they or someone is shooting at us. It's because he's fucking Antonio Gennaro. Antonio held my hand tightly and pulled me with him, away from the open area where the shooter could easily kill us with a single shot. He pulled me towards the side of the rooftop and then crouched down, dragging me down with him. My feet were aching, actually aching, after running such a short distance. I will never be able to run in these shoes. Take off your heels now, he hissed and glanced over the edge of the rooftop, only to instantly crouch down again when a bullet passed above him and shattered a vase. Who are they? I asked with a scared voice as I removed my heels. I could barely speak because of fear bubbling in my chest. I even felt like throwing up. Even Antonio was stressed. Maybe because I was with him. I don't know, but we need to get away, he said and clutched his jaw. Oh God, we might die. I might die. I'm not ready to die. Suddenly Antonio placed his hands on my cheeks and forced me to look into his pale eyes. Perhaps he had seen the horror and fright on my face. I was so incredibly afraid. My legs were shaking and my mind was running wild without even producing a proper thought. All I could think was that I wanted to get out here alive. Listen to me. I know you're scared. I'm not letting anything happen to you. But I need you to listen very carefully to me. Can you do that? He asked me, 
and stared deeply into my eyes. My throat felt dry like a desert. It was like I had lost my voice. So I gave him a short nod. He is my ticket out of here. Good. Now we're going to make a run for the door. I know when to run. Just trust me and don't look back, he said, and gave me a short kiss on my lips. Even now, when death was possibly near, his lips still sent a shiver of delight down my spine. The worry on his face took me by surprise. I know he's used to these situations. Why wouldn't he be? The worry is for me. And that made me trust him. I'm going to count to three. And then we run together, okay? One, two, three. Run, he exclaimed and dragged me off again. We ran straight towards the door, but it felt like I wasn't running. Somehow I distanced myself from the bullets flying around me. The only thing I could process was the fair and rapidly beating heart in my chest. Antonio held my hand tightly and Nelly crushed the glass door when he pushed it open. The glass isn't going to stop bullets. We aren't safe yet. I just want to be safe. This is so crazy. Antonio turned around, taking me by surprise, and grabbed my waist to pull me around the corner. Now a wall was shielding us from the bullets. But even if they couldn't reach us anymore, they still kept shooting. I screamed of fear and buried my face in the crook of Antonio's neck. He didn't hesitate and held me. Among all the fear and terror, he was the only thing that felt safe. Elena, listen to me, he said, and carefully pushed me back. I noticed they had stopped shooting now. Does that mean we are safe? I'm going to get you out of here, he said so fiercely, his eyes burning with determination. It almost scared me to see him so set on a goal. What are you going to do? I managed to say, my voice was so weak. My people cannot get here in time. The shooters are probably infiltrating this building as we speak. We sneak past them and get to my car. Antonio said carefully, talking to me like I was a child. But I didn't care to feel irritated about the way he was speaking to me. I actually appreciated it, because the fear made it hard for me to focus. But he's missing one detail. I have no idea how to sneak past arm killers. Antonio, I... I can't. I'm too scared, I stuttered, and felt the tears run down my cheeks. I didn't care to wipe them away either. We have more important matters at the moment, like getting out of here alive. But he's asking the impossible of me. Hey, you can do this. I know you can, Elena Hale. You just need to follow me he said and kissed my forehead. In my head, I was thinking of all the ways this could end, and it can only end in two ways. First, I do as he says and try to sneak past the killers. The chance of getting killed is high. But the second option is even dumber and riskier. Not listening to him is a death sentence. I have to trust him on this. Fuck. Okay, okay. I croaked out and nodded several times. He smiled for a second before turning serious again, probably thinking of a way out of here. I hope he has some sort of mental map of this place. Otherwise, we're screwed. If I know one thing from watching action movies, it is to never walk in blind. We're going to take the side stairs down to the dining hall, then try to sneak out the entry door. They've probably secured all the back exits. The front door is our only way, he said, more talking to himself than me. Okay, it sounds reasonable, but walking out the front door cannot be easy. Trust me, he mumbled before kissing my forehead again. Let's go. He grabbed my hand again, and we ran down the narrow corridor. What I didn't notice while walking through here earlier tonight was a door. It was practically invisible because it matched the wallpapers. Is this some sort of secret entrance? Through here, he said, and opened the door, peeking through before opening it fully and pulling me with him. The staircase leading down reminded me of apartment stairs. It was all white but fairly dark. Wait, what about all the people? The staff? I asked. The thought of them suddenly running through my head. 
I ordered the owner to clear the guests out earlier tonight, including the star. But those who were left are probably dead, he said, and we started to run down the stairs. Dead? They are dead? The horror and the sorrow of their family made my heart ache. They are dead because of me, because I wanted a fun night out. This is all my fault. I didn't get the chance to fully think about it, because the staircase wasn't that long, and we quickly reached the end of it. And that's when I heard people speaking to each other on the other side of the door. But it wasn't in English. I wasn't sure, but it sounded like Italian. We need to stay quiet. Never leave my sight. Got it? Antonio whispered, but not turning around to look at me in the eye. I got it. I whispered back. Now I can only hope to leave the place alive. What happens next is completely up to Faith and Antonio's skill to sneak out of this place. Antonio opened the door, extremely carefully, and I noticed that all the lights were out. So they cut their power. Clever fuckers. Let's go, he said, before slowly opening the door and pulling me with him. He was crouching too and I followed suit and crouched down. The door closed silently behind us, and I noticed a wooden counter was protecting us, but I was hearing people speaking and walking. Their voices were angry, but I didn't understand a word they said. Now I felt true fear. I was so scared they would hear the beat of my heart, because it was beating so incredibly fast. Don't screw up. Don't screw up. Antonio checked around the counter before we moved over to another counter, right in front of us. But neither of us saw the killers, but we did see the front door. Luckily, we were rather closer, but it would be dangerous. We needed to move behind another counter and then cross an open area to reach the door. That can't be good. He didn't say another word before we carefully sneaked to the next counter, but in order to do that, we had to cross a small space between the counters, and that small distance nearly got us killed. One of the killers, wearing masks and armed to the teeth, turned around just as we crossed the small distance. The flashlight gave him away, and Antonio was seconds away from being caught, but he pushed me forward and retreated in a second. If he hadn't reacted so quickly, we would both be dead, but now we are separated. Not good. I stared at Antonio with terrified eyes. What the hell am I supposed to do now? The only thing left was to run to the front door, but Antonio also needed to run over to my counter. Otherwise, he would be running right into the killers, and crossing that distance will most likely cost him time. Too much time. On three, he whispered. What? He can't seriously continue with this plan. It's madness and he will die. I shook my head, feeling more tears run down my cheeks. Trust me, he whispered. He looked so sure of himself, and I found myself defeated. Antonio peeked around the counter before looking at me again. One, two, three, he whispered, and I did the craziest thing in my life. I darted around the counter and ran for my life. The killers reacted immediately and shouted things I couldn't understand, but I didn't let that stop me. My legs were moving on their own. With every step I took, the closer I got to the exit. Also, I could hear Antonia running behind me. Holy shit, we might make this. Then a shot was fired, and Antonio screamed behind me. Chapter 6 Priorities Antonio's POV. I didn't even realize I was screaming before my own scream echoed in the almost empty dining hall. My eyes were set on her, and the fear gripped my heart so tightly that I thought it would break. One of my worst nightmares had come true when I saw her falling to the ground, blood covering her left shoulder. They hadn't aimed at me and missed. They targeted her. They knew my one weakness, her. From the moment her voice reached my ears, I was mesmerized by her. 
she had no idea how deeply she had ensnared me. I was completely and utterly lost in her. The way she spoke, the way she held her head high as she walked, and her blue eyes deep as an ocean. I had turned into some poetic schoolboy because of her, because of Elena, and now I saw my only weakness fall helpless to the floor as blood oozed out of the bullet wound. It should have been me. The rage started to boil inside of me. I had to resist the urge to turn around and break the necks of the scent killers. No one hurts what's mine and gets away with it. But right now, Elena needs me more. She is more important than revenge. She hadn't even managed to scream before I grabbed her right arm and dragged her with me. It made my stomach twist when I heard her yelp of pain. She barely managed to stand on her own two feet, but the killers won't stop. We need to get out of here, and that's now. I must protect her. I will never allow anyone to hurt her. And yet, here she is, blood seeping out of her shoulder. My car was still parked outside. I was just about to drag her with me, but her legs gave up and she fell to the ground. Tears ran down her cheeks, smudging out her makeup. The pain and fear in her eyes took me off guard. I felt so worthless when I saw her terrified face and bloody dress. I had turned sloppy. I should have been more careful. The only thing I can do now is to get her the hell out of here. So I quickly bent down and lifted her up, holding her close to my chest and carried her back to the car. She sobbed in my arms, probably because my body pressed against her open wound. She was losing blood, fast. I could already see her face growing paler. The killers in the restaurant followed us out, and I had barely managed to close the passenger door when shots started flying around me. Luckily, the windows were bulletproof, and I knew exactly what to do. I ran around the car and threw myself in the seat behind the wheel. I wasted no more time and turned on the engine, getting me and Elena out of here. She was crying and screaming at the same time. It hurt me so much to see her like this. I wanted nothing more than to take her into my arms and never let her go. Keep pressure on it, keep pressure on it. I begged and managed to place her own hand on the wound. But it was useless to try and stop the bleeding. The bullet had gone all the way through. She was bleeding from two places. It hurts, she whispered. I know, baby, but you have to keep your eyes open, you hear? I said, feeling the panic starting to eat at me. What if I didn't reach my home fast enough? What if she died right beside me? The imagination of losing her felt unbearable. But it didn't hurt when I closed them, she said and closed her eyes. I panicked and harshly grabbed her exposed thigh, making her flutter her eyes open and stare at me. Her blue eyes still managed to enchant me, but they were glossy because of the tears in them. I could see the pain in them as well. It was a look I never wanted her to have. Listen to me. You cannot close your eyes. Please, do it for me, I said, and bit my lower lip, darting my eyes between the road and her deep blue eyes. It sounded a bit selfish to beg her and live for me, but it was the only reason I could give her now. I knew nothing of her family and friends. We hadn't reached that point of our relationship where we shared information about our family. Besides, the tale of my family is too complicated. I'll try, she mumbled. The answer satisfied me, for now. But if she doesn't keep her eyes open, I have no idea what to do. I wasn't used to these kinds of situations. Whenever someone got shot, I left them to die, whether they were with me or against me. I was used to taking lives, not saving them. That's how I ruled, with fear 
and determination. Among the panic and heartache, I felt relief when I finally turned into the driveway to my home. The mansion was big and still lit up, with other cars parked outside. I could see men, my men dressed in suits guarding my property, armed to the teeth. If only I had ordered some of them to guard us. Elena wouldn't be in this situation if I had. I speeded into the driveway and stopped abruptly, making Elena yelp in pain when the seat belt tightened around her shoulder. But at least it woke her up a bit. When I exited the car, four armed men and one of my more trusted men hurried towards me. They had noticed my unusually quick entrance and the blood on my white shirt. Mr. Gennaro, are you injured? Michael asked and widened his eyes. Michael has been with me from the beginning, and I trust him. I don't trust people easily. I didn't answer him and ran to the other side of the car and lifting Elena out of the car. No. We were attacked at the restaurant. Elena took a hit. Get the doctor now. I growled and narrowed my eyes at them. One of them, the brutes, immediately took her from my arms, making me clench my fists when I saw another man touch her. Her head rested against his shoulders, and she mumbled something I couldn't hear, and her eyes were closed. I cursed and barely managed to stop myself from punching the car. The brutes ran into the house, leaving me alone with Michael. I wanted to be with her, but I needed to discuss this whole ordeal with Michael. We were attacked, Michael. How did they know our location? I barked out, letting out my anger. Michael flinched and lowered his gaze. I don't know, Mr. Gennaro. I made sure to keep this quiet, he said, fear flaring up his eyes. He better be afraid. If it wasn't him, and if I didn't need him like I do, I would have killed him on the spot. These kinds of attacks shouldn't happen, and yet tonight it did. They targeted Elena, not me. They had a clear shot and could have easily killed me, but they shot her. That means they know about her. So you find them. I ordered and stepped closer to him. Michael looked up into my eyes and swallowed. I will, Mr. Gennaro. Did you see a mark or anything connecting them to a gang? He asked and eyed me up and down. I must have looked stressed. And maybe even horrible. The stress of nearly losing Elena took a great deal on me. Now that I knew she was safe, the tiredness washed over me like a tsunami. But I cannot rest yet. No, but they were good, Michael. They were not from some low-life gang. They were professionals. I explained and closed my eyes, breathing in the fresh air. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest, and the adrenaline pumped through my veins. I need to calm down if I'm to think straight. I will start my search immediately, Mr. Gennaro, and I will make sure Miss Hale is taken care of, Michael said and nodded to himself. No, I will take care of Elena. You focus on finding the attackers, I said and gestured for him to follow me. Together we walked up the stairs leading to the front door and together we entered the house. Everything was fancy, open and well cleaned. The colors were mostly black and white, with splashes of color on things such as pillows and paintings. We walked through the home, Michael waiting for further order, as we neared the room where they had taken Elena. The white door was closed, but I could hear the doctor barking out orders to the brutes. Michael, prepare the jet. I want to be able to fly tomorrow, I said, with one of my hands on the door that led to Elena. My order surprised him and made him blink rapidly. The jet? Where are you traveling, Mr. Gennaro? He asked and crossed his arms. Home to Italy, and pack for Elena as well. 
I said, and furrowed my brows. Moving Elena is maybe not the best option, but we need to leave America. We are safer in Italy. Italy? You mean, Michael said and trailed off. I sighed mentally. Yes. We are to visit my mother. Now do as you're told, I said and waved him off. Of course, Mr. Gennaro, Michael said and walked away, leaving me alone outside the door. I sighed to myself and opened the door, fearing what I would see inside. The doctor, an older but very skilled gentleman, had a needle with a thread in his bloody hands. Elena had been placed on a metal bunk on her stomach. Her eyes were closed, and I noticed she had been sedated. The brutes guarded her and carefully watched the doctor, waiting for him to order them. The old man didn't look up as I walked up to the table looking down at her. Elena looked so calm now. I saw no pain or fear. It made me sigh of relief. Knowing she was safe made me feel safe. How is she, doctor? I asked and placed my hands on the bunk, leaning on my arms. She was lucky. The bullet missed important nerves and bones by millimeters. And since the bullet went all the way through, I don't have to pick it out and search for fragments, he informed and continued to sew the wound close. Will she be ready to be moved tomorrow? I asked and looked down at her. The doctor stopped for a second. I could see he didn't like the idea of that. It's not a recommendation. Where are you heading? He asked and continued his work. If he is something, he's skilled and patient. Italy by plane, and I want you to come with me in case she needs anything. I said and started to chew on my bottom lip. In that case, I need to pack my medical equipment, he said and gave me a look through his glasses. Packing his equipment was a hard and very time-stealing job. His items needed to be handled with care and respect. You, take three others and start packing his equipment. Aim any questions for Michael, I said, and pointed at a brute, who nodded. Yes, sir, he answered, and three more brutes followed him out of the room. It was nice with less people in the room. The emergency was over. Elena was in safe hands. But I was still pissed. The attackers knew our location. Hell, they knew we were on the rooftop. They knew I had ordered to clear out the restaurant early. Whoever they are, they were well informed. That's why I fear we have a mole. The things I would do to that mole... When will she wake up? I asked, not wanting to dwell too deep into the problem before Elena was healed and ready to be moved. My professional opinion is to keep her sedated during the flight and a day after, he answered, sewing the last stitch and cutting the thread, cleaning his hands. I and one more brute helped him turn Elena around before he started to stitch together the other wound but I didn't like having her sedated that long. What if she never wakes up? Or what if the drugs harm her in any way? If, if that's what you think is right, was all I said, clenching my jaw. It's what I know is right, he said, and gave me a long look. I gave him a short nod before looking down at Elena again, reaching out and caressing her cheek. She has no idea of what she's doing to me. I'm even taking her to Italy, inviting her into my personal life. The risk was great, and it could be seen as a weakness among my allies. But I don't give a fuck what they think. They have no right to decide my priorities. And Elena is my priority now. I knew I would do anything for her. It was like I was compelled to embrace her and protect her from all the dangers I brought into her life. The consequences of falling for her will be great, maybe even catastrophic. 
for consequences. Be fucking damned. Chapter 7. Anger. I groaned when I felt my pulsating head. My body, especially my shoulder, was aching, and I felt sick to my stomach. At least the bed I laid on was soft, with fluffy pillows and a nice thick cover. It was extremely comfortable, but I couldn't shake the aching away, and just like that, the memories washed over me, the restaurant, Antonio and me, and I got shot. I widened my eyes, opening them too quickly, and I was blinded by the sudden bright light. But the light didn't come from the lamp. It came from the sun shining through the wall consisting of glass. I had never seen this room before, and panic mixed with the bright light made me blink rapidly. It was difficult to think clearly because of the pulsating pain and grogginess in my head. The memories from the moment I put on my white dress till the doctor sedated me by a needle in my throat filled my head. Everything after that was black, gone. Whatever the doctor injected into my system was really strong. How long have I been dozing off? I groaned again and placed a sweaty palm against my forehead, feeling the cold skin. But when I tried to lift my left arm, a sharp pain shot through my entire shoulders. It was a foreign pain and couldn't be compared to a broken bone. It stung and pulsated, like my head. And where the hell am I? Am I in Antonio's house? I remember him begging me to stay awake, and some bodyguard carrying me into a big mansion. That must have been his house. But where is he now? I turned my head and stared out of the glass wall. I saw a balcony, then the beginning of an ocean. Wait, ocean? Also, I could spot some trees that I didn't recognize. This can't be New York, right? Then where am I? The effort of sitting up and rising out of the fluffy bed sent beams of pain through my shoulder, but I clenched my jaw and dealt with the pain. The need of knowing where the hell I was made me stand proudly on my two feet, scanning the room with my eyes. Before the doctor sedated me, I managed to see a bit of Antonio's house, and it looked nothing like this. Most of it was wood, dark wood, and in calming colors such as red. It reminded me of a beach house somewhere. Is that where I am? At the coast? This is crazy, I mumbled before pulling the shirt closer to my body. Wait, a shirt? I looked down and saw that I didn't wear my white dress anymore. Instead, a completely white suit shirt covered most of my body but left my legs completely bare, and I was sure I didn't cover my butt. Antonio, he didn't. Did he change my clothes? Oh my God, I can't believe he did that. He literally saw me half naked. Has he no sense of privacy? But maybe I should also consider that he saved my life. Maybe I shouldn't be so angry at him at first. I can be mad at him later for this, because this is something I would never forget. I snorted before slowly walking to the glass wall, seeing a handle. Guess this is a slide door. I slid open the door, inhaling the fresh air and stepped outside. It was surprisingly warm, tropical even. This is definitely not New York. It's never this damp, not even at the coast. Then where has he taken me? Somewhere else in America? I shook my head and looked around, following the outline of the wooden balcony. It ran until the forest swallowed the beginning, but the ocean in front of me caught my interest, and I walked up to the ledge, placing my hands on the sun-heated railing. What I saw made my jaw drop. The forest surrounding the house was indeed more tropical. But the ocean, clear as crystal, and a long white beach reminded me of the tropical paradise. The sky was a bright blue color and carried no clouds, only a big yellow sun. My shoulder was aching from the short distance of walking, 
but the view set my mind on other things than pain. I actually felt a bit panicked at what I saw. If Antonio has taken me somewhere, what about my home? What about my job? Jonathan, my mother, do they even know? But my mother is the one I don't need to worry about. We don't have much contact nowadays. But Jonathan must be worrying out of his mind. How many days have I been sedated? Elena. Someone breathed. I quickly turned my head and saw Antonio staring at me. He looked breathless, like I was some sort of miracle. He wore a simple blue suit shirt, long black pants, and fine polished shoes. The shirt had the first buttons open, bearing his strong chest. The stubble on his jaw had also grown into a small beard, giving him a more masculine but older look but I could also see the dark circles under his amazing eyes. I felt shocked to see him. It felt like a whole eternity had passed since we last met. I wanted nothing more than to leap into his arms, holding him and crying into his shoulder. But the memories of the scent killers was like a stigma in my mind. I remembered the fear and the pain I felt that night. How could I forget? and I had a hurting shoulder as a constant reminder. You're awake, finally, he said and flashed a smile, quickly sweeping his eyes over my body. But for perhaps the first time, I saw no sexual hunger for me. Instead, I saw utter relief and happiness dance in his gleaming eyes. It made a shaky breath leave my lips. How long have I? I asked, my voice only a whisper. Antonio swallowed before slowly walking towards me. Three days. We had to keep you sedated when I moved you. Less pain that way, he said, and bit his lower lip, not looking away from my eyes. I had no idea what to feel at this moment. Happiness? Anger? Relief? Where are we? Where have you taken me? I asked hastily. This time, my voice was a lot stronger. It made Antonio blink rapidly before answering. Italy, in my hometown. It's called Capri, he said, and stopped walking when he was about a meter away from me. Another aching replaced the one in my shoulder, a mental aching of longing. I longed for him, even after everything that happened. But hearing how far I was from home made me place a hand over my mouth in shock. Among all the loving feelings, I felt anger, a boiling anger, and even violation. How dare he fly me to another country? How dare he rip me away from my home? What? Why? I breathed out, trying my best to swallow my anger aimed towards him. I had to. We had no idea who the killers were. We weren't safe in America. That's why I took you here. To a safe place, Antonio said softly. Could he see my anger since he spoke so softly? I was sure my face resembled an emotionless mask. But Antonio can see through any mask. But his answer still didn't cool me down. I knew I didn't have a reason to be angry at him. He did it to protect me and I had accepted his character and the danger when I agreed to dine with him. I just wasn't ready to face such fear and danger so quickly, and it made me angry. Antonio walked the distance between us and looked down at me, smiling lovingly at me. Normally his perfect smile would melt my heart, but this time it only made me even more angry. And so I slapped him right across his face, with my left hand. The pain exploded in my shoulder, and I nearly screamed when I felt the burning pain. But what kept my scream down was the look on Antonio's face. He wasn't angry, but he was shocked and surprised at my sudden slap. His eyes were wide, and one of his hands caressed his now red cheek, his mind trying to process what just happened. But when I whimpered and closed my eyes, biting my lower lip in pain, his mind immediately set itself on me. You're so reckless. 
your stitches might have opened, he exclaimed and grabbed my right arm, making me gasp when he lifted me off the ground and carried me back to the bedroom. Antonio, I breathed, how is this supposed to help? My shoulder only burned even more from his harsh grip. Did he even try to be careful? Antonio nearly threw me on the bed and ripped the shirt away from my left shoulder. A yelp left my lips. The sudden harshness made me afraid. I should have carried you here right away. You shouldn't even be out of bed. He growled and stared at my wound, not touching my itching skin. What made it itch was his eyes, because I felt them on me. It made me clench my thighs to try and prevent the beams traveling to my womanhood. The anger had vanished just as quickly as it came. Now desire replaced it, and when his soft and cool hands caressed my skin around the wound, I nearly let out a moan of pleasure. His hands were so gentle, not like the look on his face or the tone of his voice. Christ, woman, do you want me to worry to death? He growled and pulled the shirt back up. When his hands left my skin, I felt a bit disappointed. But what else could I expect? Sorry, I just... I was angry. I felt violated that you just shipped me off to Italy without my consent. I huffed and started to fiddle with the thick cover. Antonio froze behind me, then sighed and rose, sitting down in front of me instead of behind me. I didn't look up from the cover. I wasn't ashamed of my anger. I had all the right to be angry at him. But maybe the slap wasn't deserved? Maybe? Antonio placed a hand under my chin and tilted my head up, making me look into his eyes. They were now soft and full of compassion. I swear this man's temper is as unstable as the ocean. You have all the right to be angry, and I'm sorry for grabbing you like that. I was just scared about the wound, he said and looked at me with guilty eyes. Oh, he feels guilty about what happened, doesn't he? Well, I can partly blame him since he is the Mafia, but I also cannot blame him since I chose to walk into this. I was aware of the danger following a relationship with him. Hey, it's not your fault, I whispered softly, and placed my right hand on his jaw. The beard was soft against my skin but I preferred the stubble. It didn't make him look as old. Don't. I know it is. I should have been more careful. I should have, he said, but I stopped his upcoming speech by leaning forward and gently kissing his lips. No tongue or fierce passion, just a simple kind kiss, but it still made my stomach explode with butterflies, and the way Antonio stared at me only added to the excitement. Stop talking like that. I don't like it, I whispered. We stared at each other, basking in the loving atmosphere around us. Then what do you want me to say, he asked, whispering like I did. The question made me smile softly. I don't want you to say anything. I want you to kiss me, I answered as softly as my smile. Antonio happily obliged and leaned forward to capture my lips. But just before our lips locked in a passionate kiss, I stopped him, leaving him confused. Just be gentle, I scolded teasingly, remembering the passionate kiss we shared on the rooftop. Antonio only smiled against my lips before finally capturing my lips in a gentle kiss. His tongue immediately danced with mine, and I moaned into his mouth. But we both kept it slow and gentle. The wound on my shoulder stopped us from doing anything too passionate, and that was a real pain. I wanted to press my body against his, remove our clothes, and feel his skin against me. I wanted him to touch me, to have me. But that aching wound on my shoulder stopped us. Antonio gently grabbed my forearm, pulling me slowly closer to him, not letting my lips leave his. He was such a good kisser. I tried to memorize everything I was feeling. The sweet taste of his lips, 
the warmth radiating from him, the loving caress from his hands. I wanted to remember it all. Oh, perhaps I have arrived at an inappropriate time, a voice said suddenly next to us. Me and Antonio immediately stopped kissing and turned our heads towards the stranger. It was an older woman, wearing expensive clothes and a pair of sunglasses, standing in the opening to the bedroom, and I could immediately see that she was absolutely stunning. Mother! Antonio yelped in surprise. Wait, that's his mother? I looked at Antonio's surprised face before looking back at his mother. We locked eyes, and she gave me a big white smile. Chapter 8 Raging War I figured you were here, Antonio. You have barely even visited me, his mother said and smiled. Just looking at her stride gave her an aura of confidence, and it intimidated me as a woman. She may be older, but she was gorgeous, with a slim figure and a fancy dress that only enhanced her figure. Antonio shifted on the bed, but I wasn't sure why. Was he embarrassed of being so close to me while his mother was here? Yeah, that's probably it. Because I also felt awkward when she stared at us like we were the most common thing in the world, when clearly we're not. Forgive me, mother, but I was worried about Elena, Antonio said, and grabbed my hands, pulling them down from his face, but still holding them tightly. It made my heart clench, in a good way. I can't imagine what he has been through these last few days. If the situation had been reversed, I would have cried my eyes out and worried myself to death about him. Understandable. I have been looking forward to meeting your new girl, his mother said, and looked straight into my blue eyes, a smile on her lips. It was obvious her words were meant to hit a sore spot, and it did. Just hearing her hinting that Antonio has had other women made me clench my jaw. Is she testing me? Perhaps we should talk alone, mother. I believe Elena needs to rest, Antonio said, not even looking at me. It wasn't a wish. It was an order. Can he just order his mother around? She doesn't strike me as the submissive type. But of course... A bullet to the shoulder can tire one out. Come, son, she said, and turned around on her heels, making her long light brown hair swirl around her shoulders. I moved my gaze from her form to Antonio. His jaw was clenched, and I could sense how tense he was by the way he was holding my hand. I reckon he and his mother have quite the history, but that can be discussed later when his mother isn't around. I wouldn't want to say a bad word about her and risk another bullet, only closer to my heart. I will be right back. Just rest, Antonio said and turned his head, caressing my cheek. I sighed and leaned into his touch. God, how I need him. Okay, be careful, I said seriously, but immediately felt stupid for saying that about his mother. I can handle her. Don't worry he said and chuckled, kissing my nose before leaving the bed, joining his mother on the balcony as he closed the glass door behind him. Whatever they will be discussing, he doesn't want me to hear it. Well, I've officially met a part of his family. What does that make me? His girlfriend? Lover? No, not lover. We haven't even had sex yet. I simply hadn't had enough time to ponder where we stood. Frankly, I didn't know what to call us. We do care about each other like lovers do, and yet we know so little about one another. Well, Antonio probably knows more about me than I do him. Hopefully that will change while I heal. He does come from Italy, and maybe this is his home. Antonio must trust me, or find me valuable enough to bring me to his home. It's a very intimate gesture considering who he is. I could easily call the police and tell my whereabouts, or betray him in another way. Not that I would do that. I sighed to myself, feeling my shoulder ache. I crept back into the bed and tucked myself in, 
closing my eyes and enjoying the silence. But I just couldn't fully relax, not while Antonio was talking to his mother. She made me tense, somehow, but I could see where Antonio got his good looks from. After what I felt like hours, the door finally slid open again. I opened my eyes and smiled, expecting Antonio, but it was his mother that was walking towards me, still with the smile on her lips. My body immediately tensed, and I swallowed. Is this mother and son's lover bonding time? How is your shoulder, dear? She said kindly and sat down on the side of the bed. I wasn't sure what to think of her. She said kind words and smiled to me, but the aura around her and her former hints of Antonio's other women told me otherwise. It's fine, I finally said. Lie. My shoulder wasn't fine, not completely. It was still hurting like hell. You don't have to lie to me. I know a bullet hurts. But you have handled yourself well. I expected you to panic, she said, not blaming me for my lie. Truth be told, I expected myself to be more panicked as well. Maybe my mind hasn't been able to process it all. Maybe my panic attack was coming. Have you ever been shot? I dared to ask. I have, many years ago, when Antonio was only a child, she answered calmly, then pulled up the dress to bare her right leg. On the thigh close to the knee, I saw a scar. It was round and the skin was shaped like a small bubble. What happened? I asked, feeling curious to know about his childhood. She smiled kindly and covered her legs again. Another family attacked our home and tried to take Antonio as a hostage. I wouldn't let them take him, and before his father arrived, they shot me in the leg as punishment for not telling them where I hid him, she said, and stared at me, and I stared back in awe. What would I answer? That she's brave? She must know that already. A mother would do anything to protect their child. Well, except for my own mother. I hate her with a passion. He's lucky to have a mother like you, I said and swallowed. She tilted her head and looked at me as if she found something very interesting in my eyes. Oh, I don't even know her name. Antonio didn't introduce us before. Best to introduce me now. I'm Elena Hell. Nice to meet you, was my short introduction. Antonio's mother smiled, but this time it was a different smile a motherly smile. Hello, Elena. I'm Sofia Gennaro. A pleasure, Sofia said without reaching to grab my hand, which was good because I was completely tucked in, and it was starting to become very warm beneath the covers. We sat in silence, only staring at each other. For me, it was awkward to just stare at her, but the look in her eyes told me she was inspecting me perhaps trying to figure out what type of woman I am, hopefully one she will like. Well, I should leave you to rest, and Antonio is pacing. I hate it when he paces, Sophia said, and rose from the bed, not turning around to look at me as she left the room. I saw her and Antonio speaking silently to each other before she left the balcony. Antonio immediately turned his head and looked at me, a grin reaching from air to air. What made him so happy all of a sudden? He was a tense mess before. Did his mother say something? He still grinned when he closed the door and jogged towards me. Okay, this is weird. With a chuckle, he threw himself on the bed by my feet, staring up into the roof. I just watched him with surprised eyes. What the hell is he doing? I have never seen him so boyish before. She likes you, he finally said after a moment of silence. I slowly sat up and stared down at him. She likes me? Fuck yes. Now I won't have to fear for my life anymore. I exhaled deeply. But not as much as I like you, Antonio said and turned his head, staring at me with his pale eyes. 
From my point of view, he looked like an angel. How did this man ever notice me? I like you? That's all I get? I took a bullet for you, you know. I huffed. It was meant as a joke. But Antonio's eyes darkened and his jaw clenched. Ah, oh, shit. Too early? Hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, I mumbled and reached down to caress his cheek. His beard was softer now that it was longer. Hmm. Look at me, drowning myself in pity because I almost lost you. It's pathetic. It's you who got shot, not me, Antonio said, and closed his eyes. My eyes softened, and I sighed. Even if my shoulder hurt like hell, when I crawled over to him, I was set on cheering him up. And I should tell him about the phone call, the one with the man or woman threatening me to stay away from him. I should have told him during our dinner, but I was very distracted. Antonio remained still with his eyes closed, but when I straddled him, he opened his eyes and stared up at me. Only this time, his eyes were dark with lust. I wanted to bend down and passionately kiss him. I wanted him to unbutton my shirt and touch me all over. But I must tell him. Antonio, I need to tell you something. I said, and bit my lower lip. He furrowed his brows, confused. After you left when you asked me out for dinner, someone called me. They told me to stay away from you. I don't know who they are, I admitted in a low voice. Antonio's reaction was very strong. He sat up so quickly that our forehead almost collided. His mouth was open and he stared at me very intensely. I couldn't describe the look or feelings in his eyes. Fear? Anger? Hurt? Maybe all of them. I know I was stupid not to tell him. If I had, maybe he wouldn't be in this position. You didn't tell me, he whispered. His gaze was so intense that I felt myself starting to tremble. I know, I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you at dinner, but I got distracted. I'm so sorry. I should have told you immediately. Maybe none of this would have happened. I'm so stupid, I said and felt the guilt wash over me. And the way he looked at me made my stomach drop. Now he was confused. Did he feel betrayed as well? God, what if he hates me now? What if he never wanted to take me here and I forced him because I didn't tell him about the threat? I'm so stupid. No one knew about us, he whispered. I know, but they did. I really should have told you. It would have prevented all of this shit. If you want to send me back, I... I sighed and grabbed his collar. Elena, stop talking, he interrupted. My mouth hung open in surprise. I saw no anger in his eyes, only confusion. But I saw that he was thinking. I could almost hear the cogs turn in his head. Then, like lightning hit him, his eyes widened. No one knew about us, except for my inner circle. They were there when I met you, Antonio said and grabbed my arms. It sent pain up my shoulder, and I hissed, but Antonio ignored it. What are you talking about, I said, and tried to get out of his grip, but it was impossible. Betrayal, Elena. Betrayal. One of them orchestrated this, he said, and slightly shook me, only making my shoulder hurt more. But the pain vanished as soon as I realized what he just said. He can't possibly believe. But you're their king. No one would dare to oppose you, I countered. He only shook his head. A king always has his rivals. I knew this day would come sooner or later, he said and looked away from me. If the attack was planned by one of them, they definitely aren't done yet. Attacking us must be the beginning of a war. Shooting me was a warning. I get it. It all makes sense. 
But we are safe here. They can't reach us here, right? I asked in a whisper. Antonio met my gaze, and my heart dropped just like my stomach. I thought the attack was random, that somehow the information was leaked. But the phone call explains it all. One of them, maybe all of them, wants to take my throne. And they are all here in Italy, Antonio said slowly. Which means they are closer than we think, and we are still in danger. Antonio, does this mean war? I breathed out. Fear gripped me so roughly that I forgot to breathe. No one hurts what's mine without paying dearly. Antonio answered as his eyes darkened again. A mafia war? I've been dragged into a mafia war? Ah, uh, fuck. Chapter 9 Mother Dearest Ever since I told Antonio about the phone call, his visits have become fewer, but when he did come, his explanation was that he was busy, but with what he didn't tell me. I wasn't sure why. Didn't he trust me any more? Didn't he want me to worry? Whatever the reason was, it pissed me off, and I could barely function because of how bored I was. My wound was healing fine, but Antonio never said when I'd be able to leave this house. He had become distant, cold even, and that made me stay up at night, staring into the ceiling with nothing but my thoughts. After a while, my thoughts became just as boring as the shows on TV. I was really sick of this place, but I tried to tell myself he only wanted me safe. I was just so frustrated with not doing anything. And the guilt of not telling him about the phone call was eating at me. Also, I started to miss the USA. More precisely, I missed singing. Singing has always been a passion of mine. And at home, I sang nearly every day. Now my voice hasn't sung a single tune in a week. A whole fucking week. I missed Jonathan as well. Antonio hadn't allowed me to call him and tell him where I was or what had happened. He just said he had taken care of it. I can't imagine how rugged Jonathan must be right now. Gosh, I'm filled with guilt. What would I say when we return to the USA? Could I tell him the truth? Am I even going home? The thought of not returning to my house scared me, and Antonio never gave me any answers. We shared something, him and I, passion, lust, and perhaps even love. And because of my feelings for him, I stayed in the house and never questioned him. But now I was starting to grow tired. Now I was starting to grow angry. In my head, I started to prepare myself for his next visit and how I was going to yell at him and order him to tell me everything. And when the glass door slid open the next day, I was fully prepared. Hello, darling, said Sophia. I froze in my chair and stared at her, my mouth forming an O. Oh. I was not expecting her again. After our last talk, she hadn't come to visit me. And now here she was. Sophia! I mean, Mrs. Gennaro! I squeaked and rose from the chair fixing my hair so I at least looked presentable. She only chuckled. Call me Sophia. We are family now after all, she said and smiled at me. In her hands she held a shopping bag from some Italian clothing brand has she been shopping? As you wish. May I ask why you were here? I asked and crossed my arms. Since our last meeting, I had grown quite fond of her. Sophia is a strong, independent woman. I admire women like that. I spoke with Antonio, and he told me how he keeps you locked up in here. I can't imagine how boring it must be, she said and closed the door behind her. Boring doesn't begin to describe it. 
I really appreciate her coming here. At least I will have something interesting to do. I admit, it's very dull. I fear I will die of boredom. I sighed and sat down again. How's the shoulder? Better? Sophia asked as she walked closer to me. Much better. I can move with little pain now, I answered. When I told her of my condition, something lit up in her eyes. Is she planning something? Wonderful news. Then you can change into this, she said and handed me the shopping bag. The gesture surprised me. Has she bought me clothes? Oh my God, at what price? Probably a high price. She's the king of the mafia's mother after all. And this house tells me the Gennaro family bathes in money. Um, thank you. What is the occasion? I asked. Am I going out? Am I leaving this house? Butterflies fluttered in my stomach when I thought about it. Leaving these walls is my greatest wish at the moment. You and I are going to have some fun today, she said and grinned, proud of the plan. She's my savior. I was just about to thank her when I thought of Antonio. Won't he be angry if I leave this place? He strictly told me to never leave until he said I could. Even if I'm pissed at him, I don't want to make him angry. And leaving will lead to just that, a very angry Antonio. Unless he knows of Sophia's plan. What about Antonio? I asked and took the bag from her hands. A laugh left her nude, painted lips. My comments only made her eyes gleam even more. I am his mother. He can do little to stop me. Besides, this is actually my house, and I don't want you in this room. Therefore, you must come with me to be protected, just like he wants, Sophia said. I felt a bit torn about this. I really, really didn't want to upset Antonio. But Sophia was right. I will be protected just like he wants, and if this is really her house, I must obey the owner. Antonio will kill me for this. Then let's have some fun, I said and grinned for the first time in days. Sophia nodded, content about my decision. I suggest you change. I'll be waiting, she said and sat down in a chair. I hastily walked over to the bathroom with millions of butterflies in my stomach. The clothes Sophia had bought me fit like a glove. How did she know my size? No matter, I looked good in what she gave me. The long dress sat perfectly and flowed down my legs. Sophia had also bought a pair of simple black heels to match. It was extremely comfortable and I felt ready to have some fun. Whatever she had planned, it must be something expensive. Sophia is a fiery soul. I can't imagine how wild she must have been when she was younger. You look stunning, darling. Let's go, Sophia said when I exited the bathroom. Together, we left the bedroom behind. I had spent most of my evenings on the balcony, admiring the sunset. But now I will leave this place. Sophia walked so confidently next to me and passed the bodyguard without even looking at them. I, on the other hand, nervously crossed my arms and lowered my head. I was afraid they would stop me. But walking with Antonia's mother seemed to scare them off. She's so badass. A red Ferrari with no roof was parked on the driveway. I took a good look around since I hadn't been here. The bodyguard didn't allow me to leave the balcony and they had their eyes on me at all times. I felt relieved to be rid of their watchful eyes. Also, I would ride a Ferrari. That's something to brag about to Jonathan. Just the thought of telling him made me smile. The leather seat was comfortable, and Sophia eyed me as I took in the car. I settle for nothing but the best. She grinned and turned on the engine, driving away from the house. I hadn't even put my seatbelt on before she were racing down the narrow road. 
Antonio told me about Capri. It was an island, and they practically owned it. Nonetheless, the nature was beautiful. I admired the vegetation around me as Sophia drove way above the speed limit. But no police would dare arrest her. So, what are we doing today? I asked, speaking loud because of the strong wind. My hair was everywhere, so much for looking presentable. First, you must eat a proper meal. Then we must fix your wardrobe. And later, we shall take a drink at my favorite bar. Who knows, we might even fly to Rome, Sophia said. Wow, fly to Rome? Antonio would be beyond angry if I did that. But the rest sounded pleasant and I felt excited for the upcoming day. Only one problem, money. I can't afford to buy myself a whole new wardrobe. Sophia saw the puzzled look on my face and laughed. Don't worry, darling. Antonio will pay for everything, she said and grinned. Oh, he must be thrilled about me spending his money without his permission. I'm digging my own grave. Luckily, I have Sophia. How can Antonio deny her? Is he really okay with this? I asked. Sweet Elena, you need to stop worrying about what he wants. You don't belong to him in any way. You are your own woman, just like me. Don't ever forget that, Sophia explained. Shit, she's right. Have I forgotten to be independent because of Antonio? When did I turn so submissive? So, this is what this whole day is about. To build up my confidence. To boost my independence. Sophia wanted to remind me how to be my own and not just Antonio's girl. Don't get me wrong, I cared deeply for him. But I didn't want to become the submissive girl that obeyed his every command. I must remain myself. I would not let him tame me. After a short drive down the mountain, Sophia suddenly turned right and stopped in front of a lovely house. It didn't look like a restaurant, but the food was delicious. It seemed like Sophia knew the owner and happily spoke in Italian to an older man. Since I didn't know a single word in Italian, I sat there, looking dumb, with a smile on my face. But Sophia was great company. She continued to tell me tales from when Antonio was a little child, and laughed so much that I nearly cried. It also made me love him even more. The more she told me, the more I fell in love with him. Caring about him, learning things about him, made me feel closer to him. I can't begin to explain how grateful I am for Sophia. She treated me like a daughter, which did feel kind of weird since I was dating her son. But never mind that. We still had a great time. After a long lunch, we continued down the mountain and entered a city. It was very small compared to New York, but it was extremely cozy. There, Sophia shoved me into an expensive store and showered me with clothes. Even there, we had a great time. We spent hours in that store and bought me an entire new wardrobe, just like she said we would. The words were never spoken out loud, but I knew I wouldn't be able to go home for a long while. Why else buy so many fancy summer clothes? Sophia was meticulous to make me comfortable, and I really appreciated it. With several shopping bags in our hands, we left the store and drove even deeper into the city. Sophia only had one more thing to show me, her favorite bar. Where is Antonio's father? I asked as I played with the small umbrella in my gin and tonic drink. Sophia had ordered something I couldn't pronounce, but it looked like Coca-Cola. He died years ago. It was after his death that Antonio took over as king and decided to move the organization to America, she explained, and a sudden sadness overwhelmed her. The gleam in her eyes turned dull. And you didn't come with? I said and took a sip of my drink. It hurt to see her so sad, but I also needed to know about Antonio. I didn't want to. Me and Antonio had a huge argument before he left. I didn't want him to abandon what his father built. 
but he's just as stubborn as my old man, she said, with a smile playing on her lips. Do you know why he wanted to come to America? I asked, feeling more curious. It's a very big thing to just leave everything behind, like he did. Hell, he left his mother. What could drive a man to do such a thing? Sophia snorted and smiled at the table. What drives all men away? Love, she said, and looked straight into my eyes. I felt my breath hitch in my throat, and my body freeze. My hand grabbed the glass so hard my knuckles turned white. Antonio left because he was in love. Chapter 10 Drunken Seduction Unfucking believable, Antonio muttered when he saw the empty room. The lamps were still lit like I had never left, but I wasn't there. The only trace of me was the unmade bed and clothes hanging over a chair. Where had I gone? More importantly, where had I gone without clothes? He groaned in frustration and exhaustion after a long day. He had really looked forward to seeing me. All day I had been on his mind. He longed to come to me and lay in my arms. But I was gone. Was it because I was mad at him? He knew how angry I was to be locked in here and not knowing a thing. But it was for safety. All he did was to protect me. Then he saw a note on the chair where my clothes hung. He picked it up and read it slowly. Antonio, I have taken Elena out for the day and perhaps night. Don't worry, she'll be fine. Sophia. Damn her! He exclaimed and clenched his hand with the paper in it. This was exactly what he feared would happen. The anger boiled in him. How dare she take what was his? How dare she put me in danger? He thought of thousands of dangerous things that could be happening to me right now. What if I was hurt? What if I'd been kidnapped? It was unbearable to even imagine me in danger again. A bullet through the shoulder was more than enough. All he could think of was getting me back from his mother's grasp and save me from whatever danger she had put me in. Meanwhile, at the bar... Sophia burst out laughing when I had finished the story with a big drunken gesture. We were drunk. No, I was wasted. That one gin and tonic umbrella drink had turned into several gin and tonic umbrella drinks. It had been a long time since I last drank any alcohol, and amidst all the drinks I had forgotten how easily I got intoxicated. That's why I was so wasted. Fortunately, no one raised an eyebrow or told us to quiet down. They just saw two girls having a fun night out, and I bet they know who Sophia is. That Jonathan sounds like a funny man, Sophia chuckled and took another sip of her vodka mixed with Coca-Cola. He is. He's like a brother to me. I could tell you about all the boyfriends I have set him up with, I giggled. Finding a boyfriend for Jonathan was like finding a needle in a haystack. He's so picky. How did you two meet? She asked and grabbed my hand, eyes gleaming. Well, my boyfriend had just broken up with me before a gig at this sleazy bar. Jonathan just happened to walk by and heard my voice. After that performance, he hired me, and the rest is history. I explained and took sip after sip. If I tell a story about my past and I have a drink in my head, I can't stop myself from sipping all the time. It was a strange and bad habit I had developed. How many boyfriends have you had before Antonio? Sophia asked curiously and dropped her hand to take another sip. Her glass was almost finished and so was mine. About three, I would say. But what about Antonio? I asked and lowered my voice. The bubbling happiness vanished when I thought about that. Sophia had told me about him being in love, and how that's why he left Italy. But who it was, she never said. Well, she didn't manage to say anything else before I'd swept the entire glass of gin and tonic. I wasn't sure why, 
but just thinking about him having others bothered the hell out of me. Only one, before you, but it's not my place to say, she said and laughed nervously. Bullshit, you told me about her in the first place, I countered. I would have never talked to her like that if we hadn't shared intimate stories of our past. I considered Sophia a friend, and therefore she has to tell me. Sophia sighed and looked into my eyes. It bothers you, doesn't it? She asked instead of answering my earlier question. I groaned in frustration. Hell yeah, it does. Now tell me about her. I deserve that much, I said, hearing about his ex will require another drink. So I ordered another gin and tonic for me and another vodka and Coca-Cola for Sophia. But I could see that she was starting to feel defeated. Sooner or later, she will tell me about her. Fine. She was a girl from another family, a family we considered enemies. Antonio's father didn't approve of the relationship and forbade them to meet. But just like Romeo and Juliet, they met in secret. Antonio threatened to leave the family for her. He and my old man fought for hours. Then Antonio left, and his father was killed just days after. After his death, the leadership fell to Antonio. He finally saw reason and stepped up as the king. But the girl, Alexandra is her name, distracted him from his duties and for the first time he could see it. So he left. He couldn't live so close to her and stay away from her at the same time. Sophia explained. It sounded like a goddamn love story. My heart swelled in my chest in jealousy and anger. Antonio loved that girl, perhaps even more than he loves me, if he even loves me. I pictured her in my head and how perfect she must have been a pretty Italian babe. And now we're in Italy. That means she's close to him again. How would he react if he saw her again? And then it hit me like a fist. What if he's been with her? What if he's with her every time he's not with me? The anger screamed in me, and I could hear the glass crack in my hand. I was so angry that I could barely function. Was he cheating on me? I don't give a fuck if we're not officially a couple. That's fucking cheating. But I was more furious at her than him. How dare she steal him like that? That bitch. Elena, calm down. He hasn't seen her. If that's what you think. Sophia said calmly and grabbed my hand again, comforting me. My face had turned from white to red just because of how angry I was. And how do you know? I snared back. I didn't mean to snare, not at her. Sophia hadn't done anything, because I have been watching her every move. I don't want her back in Antonio's life. She's bad blood, Sophia explained. So she hates her, just like I do. Good. But hearing her say that calmed me down immensely. Perhaps I overreacted a bit. I still hate Alexandra, as her name is. I didn't really have a good reason to hate her like I did. Being an ex isn't usually what triggers me, but it did with Antonio. I can only imagine how he must feel about my exes. Slowly I released the glass, now with a small crack in my hand, and took a deep breath to calm down. I'm sorry, that was so... I don't even know. I sighed and faced palmed with an elbow resting on the bar. Sophia chuckled softly and stroked my bare shoulder. You're drunk, my dear, and I know how you care about Antonio, she said. Well, I suppose that's a fairly good excuse for my very dramatic mood swings, and I thought Antonio was dramatic. Why don't you want her back? Did she do something horrible, or is it just because she's from an enemy family? I asked. I never liked Alexandra as a person. She's cunning and up to no good. Antonio was just blinded by his love for her. 
but he sees it now after he became king. She said Alexandra's name with a sneer. There's no stronger friendship than two women hating the same person. I started to chuckle all of a sudden. It was just so pathetic. I doubted Antonio and accused him of cheating with a girl he doesn't even care about anymore. It was just as funny as it was pathetic. And maybe the alcohol had something to do with my behavior. Sophia joined in and we chuckled together. How grateful I am for her. We haven't known each other for that long, and yet, I trust her. The same goes for Antonio. They are just very likable people. I'm so fucking glad I met you. I blurted out. Sophia stopped laughing and smiled at me. Me too, dear. Me too. She said and caressed my cheek. I smiled and we started to laugh again. This day has been fantastic. It's been adventurous and so very fun. Me and Sophia should do this more often. When this whole situation with betrayal in the Mafia is resolved, everything will be back to normal. If you consider being with Antonio Gennaro as normal. Elena, hell! I heard someone growl. I turned my head and saw Antonio in the opening of the bar. He wore a suit as always, but now he had no jacket and just a plain white button-up shirt. The sleeves were folded up to his elbows. He looked extremely sexy. The shadows from all the candles brought out his sharp jaw. It's not natural to be so good-looking. Antonio, babe, I'm so glad you're here, I exclaimed. The look on his face consisted of pure rage, but my drunken self ignored it. Hold my spot. I sang to Sophia and unsteadily rose from the bar stool. Sophia didn't say anything when I made my way towards Antonio, who now looked baffled. My walk was a bit wobbly since I wore heels. My drunk self and heels were not good friends. I smiled brightly and reached out for him. Unfortunately, I reached out a bit too early and nearly face-planted on the ground. But Antonio caught me and held me tightly by my forearms. You're drunk, he said, and stared down at me. Well, of course I am, you dummy. And you're sexy. I giggled and leaned closer to him. Antonio lusted after me all the time, but seeing me in this state made him worry for me instead. Sophia's work, no doubt. He sighed and glared at Sophia, who remained at the bar. She only gave him a shy wave. Sophia was proud of her work, and so was I. This night has been awesome. Don't be such a party pooper. We had so much fun, I said and pouted my lower lip, trying to make a puppy face but failed miserably. I'm not even going to start a discussion with you in this state. I'm taking you back to the house, he said and started to pull me out of the bar. Hey! I haven't even said goodbye to Sophia. She's your mother. I whined and tried to twist out of his grip, but it was impossible so. Solemnly, I accepted my defeat, but he can't stop me from talking. Good night, Sophia. Thank you for this evening, girl. I shouted as Antonio dragged me away from all the eyes curiously watching us. Night, honey. She shouted back and laughed. We didn't manage to exchange any more words before Antonio shoved me into a car. I didn't get a good look at it before he sat down behind the wheel. Now he was mad again. I can't stand his anger. It's so boring. You shouldn't wear the jacket. You look better without it. In fact, you shouldn't wear anything at all. You sexy thing. I giggled and struggled with the seatbelt. Antonio sighed and rolled his eyes at my comment. When I didn't manage to buckle myself down, he sighed again and leaned over to help me with it. And having him so close, let's say I couldn't let such an opportunity go to waste. I grabbed his jaw with one hand, with the other behind his neck and smashed my lips against his. Feeling his lips on mine made me moan loudly. It sent shivers down my spine, 
and made it ache warmly in my womanhood. Antonio groaned against my lips. I knew he didn't like taking advantage of me in this state, but resisting my tempting lips was impossible for him. When he tried to pull away, I just pulled him closer. I'm not letting him go so easily. But the alcohol has made my limbs weak, and Antonio managed to pull away. He breathed deeply and rushed with turning on the car and leaving the bar behind. What? Why'd you stop? I said, disappointingly, and tried to make the puppy face again. You're drunk, Elena. You're not yourself, he muttered as a response. How do you know this isn't me, when I'm clearly me? I blurted out and smiled teasingly. Antonio furrowed his brows at my weird statement. Carefully, I pulled up my long dress to bare one of my thighs. That makes no sense, he finally sighed. I want you, I said, grabbed the hand that wasn't on the wheel and placed it on my thigh. A sharp hiss left his lips when he touched my warm body. The hand on the wheel tensed, just like his jaw. There's something arousing with him clenching his jaw like that. I loved to see him lust and squirm after me. Elena, he warned. Don't you want me? I whispered and pulled his hands further up my thigh. Fuck, Elena, you know I do. Antonio hissed and tried to concentrate on the road, but I was a lovely distraction. Then act like it. I'm all yours, I said seductively and bit my lower lip, intertwining my hand with his and pulling our hands further and further up my thigh. I know the whole me being his and only his thing played a big part of our relationship. Antonio always stressed the fact I belonged to him. Hearing me confirm it turned him on. Not like this. You're not yourself, and I don't want you waking up tomorrow and regretting it, he said harshly and ripped his hand out of my grip. It hurt that he rejected me, but my numb brain didn't register it and just couldn't give up. I couldn't make another advance before we arrived back at the house. Antonio quickly left the car and helped me out, holding me tightly as he walked across the balcony. When we reached the glass door, and he opened it. I stumbled into the room and headed straight for the bed. Antonio sighed in relief, thinking I had given up on my attempts to seduce him, but I wasn't near done. I removed my heels, almost falling over in the process, and slipped out my dress. I wore black lace undergarments. I was just about to step out of the dress on the floor, but in some magical way the dress caught my foot. Let's just say I was lucky to fall backwards onto the bed instead of the floor. A small yelp left my lips and Antonio turned around to see what the hell was going on. What he saw made him clench his right hand into a fist. My arms were up my head, my hair in a mess around my head, and my body was fully exposed to him. Fucking hell, he hissed and placed one hand over his mouth. I was drunk and still managed to turn him on. Suddenly his pants felt a lot tighter. My foot, I mumbled out, disorganized after the fall. The alcohol had finally gone all the way to my head. A tiredness filled me, and I wanted nothing more than to just sleep. It's usually like this when I drink. First I'm all energetic, then it suddenly turns around and makes me extremely tired. Antonio sighed and bent down to untangle my foot. I hummed with content and made myself comfortable on the bed, but it was missing something. No, I was missing someone. Antonio, I mumbled out and reached out my arms like a baby. He sighed in defeat and started to remove his clothes. I smiled to myself when I saw his half-naked form. Damn, he was so hot. His chest had a perfect six-pack, his form slim and yet so masculine. Antonio is just perfect. The sexy king lifted up the covers and made himself comfortable next to me, but I wasn't content with just laying next to him. I crept closer to him, 
placed my head on his chest and intertwined my legs with his. He sighed and embraced me with his arms, kissing my hair sweetly. He was so warm and cozy. You're like a teddy bear. I giggled and hugged his chest. Good night, my darling Elena. He chuckled into my hair, holding me throughout the night that we shared together. Chapter 11 The Fiery Queen You really think this is going to work? He asked and crossed his arms. The woman scuffed. Antonio Gennaro will never let anything happen to her. You have my word, she answered in a strong Italian accent. Let me be clear. Your word means nothing. Just get it done. The man threatened. The woman only chuckled and took a step forward, looking him straight in the eye. Let me be clear. I know Antonio better than any of you. I know the way he thinks, the way he acts. Without me, your plan of taking over the throne is useless. So show me some respect. She spat and narrowed her eyes. The man narrowed his eyes as well, but decided not to argue against her. The words she spoke harbored truth. If there's anyone that knows Antonio, it's her. Now, you better get back to the circle. We don't want them getting suspicious, she said, after a moment of silence, stepping back and heading towards the black SUV parked nearby. The man scuffed at her and cursed in Bulgarian. The only thing stopping him from killing her was their deal. He wanted the throne, and she was the woman who could hand it to him on a silver plate. A silver plate with the head of Antonio Gennaro. Capri, Italy It was a warm and cozy day. No, wait. Ah, my head. What the hell? I didn't drink that much, did I? But apparently, I did because it felt like a roller coaster of pain inside my head, and my shoulder was aching. Why do I always drink when I talk about exes? At least it was warm and cozy. Antonio was still holding me in his arms, but he wasn't awake yet. My weird and perverted attempt of seducing him last night made me groan. I just wanted to sink through the floor. The embarrassment was physically painful. I can't imagine how angry he will be when he wakes up. The getting drunk thing, I can understand if he's upset about it. But me leaving and having a fun night out with his mother? That part he just has to accept. I'm done being kept in the dark. I deserved that night out. I've been nothing but obedient. Like a fucking dog. Well, no more. Suddenly, Antonio twitched and frowned before slowly opening his eyes. I looked up at him and waited for him to look down at me. And when he did, my lips automatically smiled. I must look like shit because I feel like shit. Not only did my head hurt, my feet were sore after wearing heels. This isn't how I normally wake up after a night out with Jonathan. It's usually me taking care of him. Morning, sunshine, Antonio mumbled in a husky voice and smiled. Wow, his morning voice is really sexy, but he didn't sound angry like I expected him to be. Morning, I chuckled and breathed in deeply. I suspect you have a hangover, he said in an amused tone. I blushed and stared out the glass door, my cheek resting against his chest. Antonio took that as a yes. He chuckled and started to caress my bare arm. Luckily, I still kept my underwear on. It would have been a completely different level of embarrassment if I hadn't. I thought that you would be angry, I whispered. I didn't want to make him angry. I didn't like him in that state. But I also couldn't stop myself from having fun because of his temper. It was really a dilemma. Elena, look at me, Antonio said softly. I did as he asked and met his gaze. At first, I was furious, but not at you. I was furious because you might have been in danger. 
and I was angry at my mother for taking you without telling me, he explained, and caressed my cheek. It was understandable. Truly, I understood his anger and worry. Just leaving without telling him directly was perhaps not the best way to go, and yet I don't regret it. But I realize that I have been too protective. I took away your freedom and withheld information simply because I wanted to protect you. He sighed. Yet again, I understand him. But he needs to understand me too. Antonio, I don't blame you for wanting to protect me. But you can't keep me in the dark anymore. I'm already involved. I have already made my decision to stay with you. Is that not enough? I asked him. My words made him smile, but I also noticed a twitch of surprise. Perhaps he hadn't expected me to be so devoted to him already. Our time together has been brief, but I cannot stop my feelings for him. You can still leave, but if you don't, there is no turning back, he whispered and stared at me. I don't want to leave him. I can't leave him. My decision has already been made. I smiled softly at him and escaped his embrace by straddling him, fully exposing my half-naked body to him. The motion did send a sting of pain through my shoulder, but I didn't care at the moment. Antonio's eyes left mine and he roamed my body with his pale eyes, but I felt no embarrassment or doubt. I'm not turning back, I said. A smile decorated his lips, a smile so big I couldn't help but to grin myself. Come here. He grinned and placed his hands on my hips. I chuckled and leaned down to capture his soft lips. The contact made me forget all about the pounding in my head and the aching in my shoulder. I was drowned in his taste and the groans that left his throat. I wanted him. I needed him. I was completely and utterly in love with him. And I'm willing to accept the danger that comes with it. Antonio's hands traveled up all the way to my arms. But in the act of kissing me, he must have forgotten about my shoulder. I hissed in pain when he grabbed my shoulders to pull me closer. Fuck, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Does it hurt? He said and pulled away immediately. My lips missed the taste of him, but I couldn't ignore the pain any longer. It seems I had forgotten all about it last night because of the alcohol. I'm sore, but okay. Don't worry, I mumbled and looked at the scar forming on my skin. It wasn't pretty. It resembled the scar Sophia had on her leg. Of course I'm worrying. Your shoulder has barely healed. Antonio countered and furrowed his brows in worry. I smiled to myself and looked down at him. His concern is so sweet. It has healed well enough. I just need to rest, that's all. I said and climbed off him, laying down next to him. Antonio kissed me on the cheek before leaving the bed. Where is he going? I wanted to cuddle now that we have resolved this whole situation. He walked over to a chair and started to get dressed. Something is wrong. I just know it. And it's not about my shoulder. Perhaps it has something to do with the betrayal he faces. Antonio, talk to me. No more secrets. I demanded as I sat up to watch him. It was quite sad to see his well-defined body disappear under his clothes. We must share more nights together but my words made him clench his jaw. Oh, whatever it is, it must be important. All right. I have been somewhat successful in finding the traitor, but I just keep running into obstacles that delay my search. Whoever it is, they are smart. He admitted and stared at the wall, deep in thought. And with you here, I have to think about your safety as well. I can't keep you locked up in here or keep you company all the time. There is only one solution, Antonio said, and turned his head to look at me. The seriousness in his eyes told me that this solution must be very dangerous. It's not like me to just jump into danger, 
but with him I'm more than willing. What is it? I asked in an emotionless tone. I will take you to Rome and to my home. There you will be safe, but directly involved. If you come with me, I will show you to my world, and they will expect full loyalty from you. They will expect you to act as the queen, he explained slowly and in a deep voice. Act as the queen, directly involved. And who are they? My head was spinning even more than before. I thought we had more time, that me staying with him would include baby steps into his life. But this? Just fly to Rome and devote myself fully to him? It's very, very dangerous. Imagine all the enemies. Antonio is very respected and feared, but also hated by other families. I suppose that cannot be avoided when you're part of the Mafia. Every family wanted to be on the throne, and if I stand beside him, I will become a target. My life will never be the same again, and I don't even know what a queen does. Who are they, and what is a queen? I asked, gripping the sheets when I felt panic in my chest. I'm not going to lie and say that I'm not afraid. This is not what I was expecting. They are my closest allies and friends, fully loyal to me. And the queen, well, she acts like the right hand and rules alongside me, Antonio said in a low voice. I swear my voice flew out the window and disappeared. My throat dried up immediately and I stared at him with wide eyes. I will have to rule the mafia with him? I will have to order assassination and perhaps even kill people? Shit! Why do I never think before I speak? I had fallen deeply for Antonio and wanted to be with him. But to become a part, a serious and ruling part of his mafia, can I be able to handle that? Can I leave my simple life behind for him? Can I sacrifice everything for him? Mr. Gennaro, someone suddenly exclaimed. Me and Antonio immediately turned our heads and saw one of the bodyguards standing in the doorway. Judging from the look on his face, something serious had happened. I pulled the cover closer and tried to cover up as best as I could. What? Antonio growled and narrowed his eyes. I'm sure he doesn't appreciate a random bodyguard seeing me in this delicate state. The one you sent for, Mr. Thompson, has been kidnapped by the Abano family, the bodyguard explained hastily, sweat glistening on the forehead. Thompson? As in Jonathan Thompson? Jonathan? I breathed out and stared at Antonio, who clenched his jaw in shame and looked at me. What did he do? What has he done to Jonathan? I was planning on telling you, but I called for Jonathan to be sent here, just to keep you company in Rome, he said and stared at me with shameful eyes. I couldn't believe the words that left his mouth. He drags Jonathan into this, and he was planning on telling me? How dare you drag Jonathan into that kind of danger? Have you not considered what the hell that means? I exclaimed, furious over the betrayal. Jonathan was to have no part in this. I wanted him to stay the hell away from me, since I was involved with Antonio. The danger I would put him in. I would never do such a thing to him. But it seems Antonio has done it anyway. I thought we finally had understood each other. I thought he wouldn't go this far as to involve other innocent people. Involve people that I love. I was so angry that I bawled inside. Elena, he started with a soft voice. Don't you Elena me. You, bodyguard, tell me what happened now. I demanded with narrowed eyes. The bodyguard was taken aback from my sudden harshness and glanced at Antonio. Miss, I'm not sure who you are, but I only follow, he started to say. I am your queen, I nearly screamed out. That really took the bodyguard and Antonio off guard. Perhaps claiming the title without proper thought was reckless. But this is Jonathan we're talking about. I cannot, 
I will not let anything happen to him. If becoming the queen is the only way to save him, I will gladly do it. Now, you are going to tell me everything. I want names, locations, and a timetable. And fix us a plane to Rome. We are leaving immediately, I ordered in a harsh tone. The bodyguard looked at Antonio, who only stared at me, too taken aback to say anything. But since he didn't deny my claim, the guard couldn't argue against me. He knows very well what power the queen has. Yes, miss, right away, miss, he said in a shaky voice and rushed away from the balcony. An airy silence filled the room as I calmed myself down, but I couldn't shake away the internal anger. Jonathan is like a brother to me. He has taken care of me several times and helped me whenever I needed him. I will not let anything happen to him because of me. I slowly turned my head and stared right back at Antonio. This fierce and brutal side of me was completely unknown to him, and to be honest, I was surprised too. This isn't a side of me that I have experienced before. But I didn't care. No one hurts Jonathan. If they've hurt him in any way, I swear to God, I will kill them all. I growled. Chapter 12 Jonathan You need to calm down, Antonio said to break the uncomfortable silence between us. His words only made me feel more irritated but they were also true. I really needed to calm down. After we left the house, I hadn't said a single word to Antonio. The way he betrayed my trust by not telling me about Jonathan, who I love so much, was like a stigma on my skin. Jonathan is the only person on this planet that fully understands me and knows every part of my life. Just imagining him hurt or dead made anxiety bubble up in my chest. I was so worried and angry. Antonio was ashamed. I could see it in his pale eyes and how he acted towards me. I'm not sure why he thought bringing Jonathan into this was a good idea. It seems he only thinks about me and it doesn't give a fuck about him. I'm calm, I mumbled as I stared out the plane window. The sky was clear of clouds and the sun was burning my eyes but I didn't care. We had left for a private airfield on the island and were now flying to Rome. The plane was also luxurious since it was their own private jet. I'm not stupid. I know you're upset. Antonio sighed and scratched his neck. Upset? Try furious. But bickering about this won't help Jonathan. I just want him safe. Then I'll discuss this with Antonio. Let's just get Jonathan first, then we'll talk, I said and forced a smile on my lips. Antonio raised an eyebrow and sighed, looking away. He isn't going to let this go, is he? What you said back there. You took the role of a queen, Elena. That can't wait, he said seriously and caught my gaze again. True, what I said back there will surely have consequences. Just how grave they will be is unknown to me, but I do know they are worth it if I can save Jonathan. From what Antonio told me, being the queen is very, very serious. All the things that will be expected of me now. I wasn't ready to be queen. Deep inside I knew that. I still wanted to spend more time with Antonio, to get to know his family and be ready to leave my life behind. But now that opportunity has vanished. If only Jonathan hadn't become involved. I love Jonathan. He's family. If stepping up as a queen can save him, I'll do it. I said and looked deeply into his pale eyes. Antonio didn't like that answer one bit. It's not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to accept because you want to be with me. Antonio breathed. That's where the sore spot is. Antonio wanted me to become queen because I wanted to be with him, not because I wanted to save Jonathan. But surely he can't blame me. None of this would have happened if you hadn't involved him, 
I countered, my tone being a bit too harsh than I wanted. Sure, I blame Antonio for the kidnapping of Jonathan, and yet a part of me wanted to forgive him, hold him. That's the part that loves him. Antonio sighed, knowing the truth of my words, and leaned forward to take my hands. I swallowed and let him squeeze my hand. Perhaps it was his way to ask for forgiveness. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. I just wanted you to be happy. I promise I'll save him, whatever it takes, he said, and didn't look away from my eyes. The sincerity in his voice made me swallow, but I couldn't just forgive him. When Jonathan is safe, we will talk about this but now I just want him to be safe. I can't think straight when I don't know if he's in danger or dead. And if he is dead, no, I can't think like that. If I do, I will be broken before we land in Rome. The worry that ate at me kept me watchful and tense. Never in my life had I felt so worried before. I wasn't even this worried when I got shot. Losing Jonathan is unthinkable. I won't let him die because of me. Instead of answering Antonio, I gave him a short nod. Truth be told, I didn't know how to respond. Should I thank him for promising me to save him? No, I shouldn't. Saving him should be a fact, since he brought him into this in the first place. I'm going to see how long we have left. Antonio mumbled, sadness evident in his eyes, and released my hands. I said nothing and watched him as he vanished behind the door leading into the cockpit. Being this cold to him hurt me. I didn't want him to look so sad and broken. But I also couldn't forget about his betrayal or what he made me do. He made me accept the role as queen. It's all his fault. So why do I still love him? My queen? Someone suddenly said behind me. Just hearing that title made me shiver. It was really true. I couldn't take back what I said. I had hoped it could be reversed. That somehow Antonio could say it was all a mistake. But the rumor of me being the queen seems to have spread. I looked away from the empty seat in front of me and saw one of the bodyguards towering up at my side. But it was different this time. Last time a bodyguard had spoken to me, they sought Antonio's permission. Now I saw respect in his eyes. I saw that I held authority. Um, yes, I answered, my answer being more of a question. Shit, I am a terrible queen. I wish there was a manual I could read. Ah oh, well, I do have Sophia. She has been the queen once. If only she were here. We have an update regarding Jonathan Thompson he said seriously. About Jonathan? My eyes lit up and I leaned forward in suspense. Please, let it be good news. Go on, tell me, I said hastily, showing my panic. Perhaps being too emotional is an error, but I don't give a fuck about that. Mr. Thompson is being held by the Abano family in one of their storehouses. We know which one. How do you wish to proceed? He asked me. I struck silent. He's asking me how I want to proceed? But what about Antonio? He's their king. I don't know how to proceed. I have no experience whatsoever. What about Antonio? I blurted out, making the bodyguard raise an eyebrow. I must be the worst queen ever. He can clearly see how little I know about being the queen. Also a reason why I wanted to wait before becoming queen. I really don't know how to be one. Miss, you are my queen. You have as much authority as my king, he said slowly, letting the information sink in. I have as much authority as Antonio? Imagine all that power at my fingertips. Oh, no. Imagine all the responsibilities. All the fucking enemies. Me and my stupid mouth. No. I mustn't think like that. Jonathan is worth it. He's worth it all. Now, back to the situation at hand. Since I don't know shit about proceeding, we need Antonio. 
Go and find Antonio, please. We'll handle it together, I finally said kindly. Once again, the bodyguard raised an eyebrow. Isn't a queen supposed to be kind? Oh, maybe I should have been more strict. Shit, I can't do that either. If I'm strict, I will sound mean. I don't want to be mean. Well, I can make an exception towards the Abano family. Right away, my queen, he said, and left for the cockpit. Finally, we are making progress. Antonio will know what to do. He did promise to get Jonathan back safely after all. Hopefully, we also know something about the storehouse they have taken him to. The bodyguard returned with Antonio, and he took a seat across from me again, taking one of my hands. I squeezed his hand and bit my lower lip. This is it. We need to make a plan if we're going to save Jonathan. How many? Antonio asks shortly. At least twenty of them, sir. If I may, I can send some men to ambush them by the back exit. It's not as heavily guarded as the front door, the bodyguard said. Wow, he really knows a thing or two. I wonder how long he has worked for Antonio. Only if you know the location of Mr. Thompson. I don't want you going in blindly and risking his life, Antonio said sternly, showing authority. I squeezed his hand as a thank you. Luckily, we do know his location. Your spy has provided us with all the information, the bodyguard answered. Then you can proceed, Antonio said and nodded. Antonio has a spy within the Abano family? Isn't that dangerous? What if they find out his or her identity? Wow, there's so much I need to know about Antonio's resources and where they are. The bodyguard nodded and left us alone. I felt karma now that we had a plan. All that I need now is his men to succeed. If they don't, Jonathan will most likely die. My best men will take care of it. They will bring him to you, alive and unharmed, Antonio assured me and reached out to take my second hand. The anger and betrayal I felt were slowly fading away. I trusted Antonio enough to know he really would send his best men. Ever since we met, he's only wanted to protect me, taking me to Capri, introducing me to his mother. I know he trusts me, just like I trust him. Although the sting of bringing Jonathan into this was raw, I saw myself forgiving him in the future. When he is safe, we will discuss about me being the queen. I've figured out on my own that I can't take it back. I really am the queen now. Is there something we can do in the meantime? Anything? I asked, with big eyes. If I stay behind and just wait, I will feel useless. I will probably be a wreck by the time when Jonathan is rescued and brought to me. All we can do is wait, Antonio said and kissed my hands. The contact sent shivers down my spine. He's making it very hard to remain angry at him. And I waited. I waited until we landed in Rome at a private airport. I waited when a luxurious sports car drove us to an even more luxurious mansion. I waited while I paced in the grand living room decorated with paintings and golden ornaments. I waited when Antonio embraced me from behind and held me, whispering sweet nothings in my ear. I waited for Jonathan. I waited for him to be rescued. And after four hours of constant worry, Antonio's phone rang. I didn't want to get my hopes up. That call could concern something else. But still, the hope fluttered my heart when he answered. Jonathan is safe. They are on their way here, he finally said, his lips curving into a smile. A long breath of relief left my lips. My whole body turned into a bubble of happiness. He's safe, it's true. Jonathan is safe. Tears of happiness started to run down my cheeks. Antonio reached out and I happily leaned into his embrace. Holding him brought me utopia. I leaned back and kissed his neck, his cheeks, his nose, and his lips. Antonio immediately pulled me closer and devoured my mouth. I felt the longing in the kiss that I never wanted to end. 
My body was floating in a distant land, my lips tingling from the sensation of tasting him. I love him. God, how I love him. I loved him so much that the words nearly left my lips. Luckily, Antonio kept them busy with deep kisses. The desire of having him burned like a fire in my stomach. The way his hands explored my curves through my clothes made me moan and grab onto him, never wanting to let him go. It was without a doubt the most passionate and hottest makeout session we've ever had. Suddenly someone coughed. I was the first one to react, leaning back and blushing madly when I saw one of his guards looking at us. Antonio groaned in disappointment when I no longer kissed his lips. Mr. Thompson has arrived, my king, my queen, the guard said, also addressing me. I'll never get used to that. But just like the guard said, Jonathan had arrived, and when he walked into the living room, complete joy filled me. I had never felt such relief or happiness before. Just seeing him, my Jonathan, made all my worries wash away. When our eyes met, and a smile decorated his lips, I leaped out of Antonio's arms and ran towards my old dear friend. Jonathan opened his arms for me, and when we finally embraced, it was like embracing a long-lost brother. All my love for him poured out when I cried into his shoulder, clinging to him like a lost child. He was here. He was finally here. My Jonathan was safe. Chapter 13 A Ball I stared at Jonathan as he slowly ate the food given to him. The Abano family hadn't hurt him too much, but he still had a black eye and a cut lip. Seeing him hurt, even if it was nothing major, made my stomach turn. It's all my fault. My involvement with Antonio is the reason for his kidnapping. I can feel you staring at me, you know, he said, and looked up, a hint of a smile on his lips. How can he be so kind towards me? I've put him through hell. It's all my fault. They hurt you because of me, I said sadly and tried to hold in my tears. Jonathan reached out and took my hand, holding it tight. That's why we should leave, go back to America he said and stared deeply into my eyes. His words surprised me. They weren't what I expected him to say. Leave? Leave Antonio? Jonathan, I breathed, too shaken to say anything reasonable. Look at what they did to me. You can easily be next, Jonathan said. Antonio is protecting me. They can never take me, I counted back. I was under Antonio's protection, too, and look what happened, he said, sounding more desperate this time. You're not directly under Antonio's protection. I'm around him. Elena, no, I will not discuss this with you. The silence that then echoed between us was both uncomfortable and tense. Okay, let's calm down. He's scared. I get it. I understand his part of the argument. He just got kidnapped, beaten, and threatened. Of course he wants to leave, and thinks Antonio is endangering me, which he is. Being with him is a giant risk, but one I'm willing to take. I've already made my decision. Also, I've claimed the title of queen. There is no way I can go back to America now. Jonathan, listen. I get it. I really do. I wasn't so happy after I got shot, I started. You got shot? How? Jonathan exclaimed, staring at me with big eyes full of fear. Fuck, he doesn't know about that. Hell, he doesn't know anything. Jonathan is completely blind. All the things I have to explain to him. We sort of had dinner, and we were attacked. One of the mercenaries shot me in the shoulder. Antonio saved my life. That's how I ended up in Italy, I said, placing a hand over my shoulder, carefully tracing the sore scar. Jonathan stared at me like I was some sort of alien. I also understood why this upsets him. 
I can't believe you kept me in the dark like this. He breathed and slumped back in the chair. Suddenly I realized the truth behind his words. I was angry at Antonio for keeping secrets from me, but I had done the same thing to Jonathan. Guilt filled my stomach again, but it was a different kind of guilt. I felt ashamed. I didn't tell Jonathan about Antonio even if I trust him more than anyone. I kept a dear friend in the dark. I sighed and placed my head in my hands, trying to keep the tears from falling down my cheeks. Jonathan, I'm so sorry. It all happened so fast, I mumbled, knowing my apology was petty. It all happened so fast, really? That was a pathetic excuse. I had all the time in the world to give Jonathan a call and tell him where I was. I would have kept some details secret because of the delicate situation with a traitor in Antonio's inner circle, but I should have called him. I should have done something about this. Jonathan sat silently in his chair, probably staring at me. You're such a problem magnet, he muttered. I couldn't help but to smile and look up at him. It was very true. I really am a problem magnet. This whole ordeal with falling in love with the king of the mafia, it's all a big mess. But it's a mess I can't leave. Please don't ask me to leave. I can't, I said slowly. Jonathan furrowed his brows, clearly displeased by my words. I reached out with my good arm and grabbed his hand, squeezing it. Just give it time. Give him time. You'll see how kind he is. I assured and gave him my attempt of puppy eyes. It worked better now since I wasn't drunk. Jonathan sighed and slowly shook his head. For a minute he was silent, not saying a word or even moving. I could see the cogs turning in his head. What goes on in that head of his will determine my friendship with him. If he still wants me to leave, I have to leave Jonathan behind. And I really don't want to leave him. Not again. This is such a bad idea, Jonathan said finally and withdrew his hand, the gesture hurting my feelings. It wasn't often Jonathan treated me like this, but I guess this is a very special situation. He has every right to be cold or harsh to me. Most likely, but even if I wanted to leave, I cannot. I proclaimed myself queen, so I'm sort of a leader now. I admitted and bit my lower lip. This time Jonathan didn't stare at me like I was an alien. He stared at me like I was crazy. I completely understand if he's shocked about this. It's a lot to take in. I haven't even taken it in. When Antonio returns to interrupt my and Jonathan's reunions, I will be thrown into the mafia and into a war. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that, but it doesn't matter if I'm ready or not. It will happen anyways. What are you thinking? How long have you known him? Huh? Not long at all. And you've already become queen? Jonathan exclaimed and rose from his chair in frustration. I quickly followed him, placing my hands on his shoulder to calm him down. I did it for you. When the news of your kidnapping reached me, I had just wanted to get you home, I said with a tone full of guilt and sorrow. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, and yet it did, and I will have to face the consequences. But I know it's worth it. There's no way I would let Jonathan be harmed because of me. Jonathan looked at me, baffled and confused. You did that for me, he whispered. I gave him a short nod. His eyes left mine and trailed off. Once again, he was deep in thought. I don't want you to be with him. Or in this whole mafia thing. It's dangerous. But I know I can't change your mind. Just be ready to face the consequences. He sighed. A sigh of relief left my lips. Good. Then he won't try to convince me anymore. I can't take it when we're fighting or not agreeing with each other. Thank you, Jonathan, I whispered and embraced him. 
Jonathan mumbled something under his breath, and then encircled me with his arms. It felt wonderful to not fight with him anymore. The only other time we fought was when he didn't want to leave one of his boyfriends. It was chaos. I hated the guy so much that I nearly strangled him one time. He was arrogant and treated Jonathan like crap. But when they finally broke up, mostly because of me, Jonathan didn't speak to me for about a month. But I knew he would come around eventually. And when he did, we vowed never to fight again. I guess we just broke it. Promise to not fight again? I asked and smiled into his shoulder. Jonathan chuckled. Promise. He laughed and leaned back to look at me. I'm glad we resolved that. Just don't think I like this whole situation. I still think it's best to leave. But you make your own decisions. He added with a scolding frown. Don't worry. I won't hold it against you. I chuckled and playfully punched him in the shoulder. My best friend laughed again, and this time the silence between us was pleasant. I couldn't have asked for a better or more patient friend than Jonathan. We have a long history together, which includes some crazy adventures in the hunt for love. But I can say that mine's the craziest. My queen, the king has returned, a guard suddenly said interrupting the moment between me and Jonathan. Happiness bubbled in my stomach, and my lips curved up in a big smirk. Jonathan rolled his eyes at my behavior, acting like I was some schoolgirl in love. Come on, a proper introduction would be nice, I said, grabbed his hand and dragged him with me back to the living room. Antonio said to wait for him there. After Jonathan had been saved, Antonio had left almost immediately. He said something about a lead on the traitor, but he didn't say more because he was in a hurry. Hopefully he has found someone to pin the blame on. I don't appreciate getting shot. There was also a very believable theory that the Abeno family were working with the traitor. That would explain how they knew Jonathan was coming. Whoever that traitor is, I will not let him or her hurt Jonathan anymore, or Antonio. As we entered the living room and found it empty, my shoulder slumped. I was really looking forward to seeing him again. We had only been apart from each other for a couple of hours, but I still missed him. Care to fill me in? What's happening? Jonathan asked and took a seat in one of the sofas. I started to chew on my bottom lip and hesitated. Should I tell Jonathan the details? It will only put him in more danger, but I also cannot keep him in the dark anymore. We think the Abeno family, the one that kidnapped you, have ties with the traitor in Antonio's inner circle. Antonio's been trying to find out who, but has turned up with almost nothing. But this time, he's certain it will lead somewhere. I informed and sat down beside him. Jonathan slowly nodded cogs turning in his head again. Jonathan has always been more of a thinker. It's not easily noticed, since he mostly acts on emotion. But when he starts to think, he's really thinking. Elena, someone breathed. I turned my head and saw Antonio in the opening to the living room. My lips once again curved up into a smirk, and I leaped from the sofa to embrace him. Antonio chuckled and kissed my forehead. Missed me? He asked, clearly amused by my clingy behavior. Don't flatter yourself, I joked and stepped back, taking his left hand instead. Jonathan coughed uncomfortably behind us. That's so like him. I rolled my eyes and turned to look at my friend. How about a proper introduction? I'm Antonio Gennaro. It's a pleasure to meet a dear friend of Elena. Antonio said and reached out an open palm to Jonathan, who eyed it before agreeing to take it. Jonathan Thompson, pleasure, he answered, and withdrew his hand as quickly as possible. I could see how uncomfortable he was. Maybe it's because Antonio is the king of the mafia, or maybe it's because he got kidnapped when Antonio was supposed to protect him. 
I nudged Antonio in the ribs with my elbow, making him hiss out a breath and send a glare at me. I just gave him a scolding glare back. And I'm sorry for putting you in danger. It was never my intent to hurt you, Antonio said like a little boy being forced to say an apology. My God, he's such a child sometimes, although it did amuse me. Oh, yeah, it's no trouble. I got out, didn't I? Jonathan said nervously, scratching the back of his neck. He hadn't expected an apology from him. So, did you find something? And don't make some excuse since Jonathan is here. I've already told him everything, I said and waited anxiously for the response. Apparently, Antonio didn't like me sharing secrets with Jonathan. But I don't care what he thinks. Jonathan is more than trustworthy. I did recover some information, but still not enough to figure out who the traitor is. Luckily, I have a plan, Antonio said, and suddenly smiled, a smile full of mischief. What is he up to? Will I not like it? Will it involve Jonathan? If it does, I will not be happy. Jonathan has done enough for us. I cannot possibly ask him to do more. Well, getting kidnapped isn't really a favor or something I asked him to do, but it's still enough. I don't want him in any more danger. We're going to have a ball. Chapter 14 Getting Ready You failed, the man said and crossed his arms. He was not pleased by the outcome of the kidnapping. A minor setback, not a failure, she scoffed and narrowed her eyes. Not a failure? You're lucky Antonio's men weren't looking for information. That warehouse was a gold mine. The man sneered back. The hate grew between them with every passing second. This partnership was only temporary, but they had to endure each other. And now it isn't. Besides, we have a new opportunity. Antonio's throwing a ball, probably to catch the traitor. We're both invited, the woman said calmly, trying to act superior. The man only clenched his jaw in frustration. He was already regretting the partnership. The woman was insufferable and couldn't see her errors. So we go with plan B, he finally said to break the tense silence. We go with plan B, the woman repeated. The boy didn't work. What makes you think the girl will do? The man asked. She wanted to sigh because of his stupidity. The boy was only part of the plan, but the girl, she will prove valuable, more valuable than her partner can imagine. Antonio has no ties with the boy, but the girl, he would never let anything happen to her. We get to her. We get to him. We make him angry, make him start a full-out war, and then we destroy him from within, she explained. The plan was perfect and wouldn't fail even if they didn't get to the boy completely. He was just a pawn, but the girl, she's the goddamn queen. And how exactly do you plan on making him angry? Kidnapping her is not enough, the man countered. Yet again, the woman wanted to sigh out loud, expressing her disappointment in his ability to think. We don't kidnap her. We kill her. Rome Jonathan eyed me up and down, raising an eyebrow and then shook his head. I sighed out loud. This is the tenth dress, Jonathan. I can't handle any more. I said and crossed my arms in disapproval. Jonathan rolled his eyes at my childishness. You're going to a ball, not a performance at Antonio's restaurant. You need something glamorous, he countered and nodded towards the rack again. One of Antonio's female minions had provided me with several dresses to try on for the ball. In the beginning, it was fun, but now I just wanted to find a dress and be done with it. The whole idea of a ball made me nervous. Not only would Antonio try to catch the traitor, he would introduce me to the world as his queen. The rumor had already spread among other families, allies, and rivals alike. 
I had no idea what it would be like to be a queen, and we didn't have time for a lesson. And I have just the thing, someone suddenly said. Me and Jonathan turned our heads, and my lips curved up in a big smile. It was Sophia. We hadn't seen each other since our night out. I was so relieved to see her. Sophia, I'm so relieved you're here, I giggled and ran up to embrace her. Sophia chuckled and hugged me before leaning back and smiling at me. Jonathan rose from the couch and fixed his shirt before walking up to Antonio's mother. I had told him about her as we tried on the dresses. Jonathan was quite eager to meet her, even if he also felt a bit scared. The news reached me, my queen, Sophia said slowly. My smile faltered. I don't regret it. There was no other way to save Jonathan, but I wanted to be more prepared. I sighed and stepped back. Sophia just smiled softly and caressed my cheek. I could see compassion in her beautiful eyes. Friendship is invaluable. I take it this is Jonathan, Sophia said and moved her gaze to Jonathan, who stopped abruptly and swallowed. He gave her a nervous smile and reached out a shaky hand. Wow, I had no idea he's that scared. But Sophia ignored the scared look on Jonathan's face that he tried to hide and shook his hand, her smile not faltering. Sophia is kind to everyone. A pleasure, Miss Gennaro, Jonathan said after a moment of awkward silence. Pleasure's all mine. And please call me Sophia. Everyone does, she said and once again concentrated on me. She did say she had something for me. I can guess it's a dress, which really wasn't necessary. We have several of them here, although the gesture is sweet. Now, back to business at hand. Just like Jonathan said, you need something beautiful and sophisticated. Like this one, Sophia said, and waved towards one of her bodyguards accompanying her almost anywhere. It was a bit funny to see a big brute carrying something. Red? Oh no, not red. I do not look good in red. It's a very daring color. Something a queen would wear, no doubt. I trust Sophia knows what she's doing. I need to make a good impression tonight. Every important person is going to be here. Where did you get this? I asked and touched the soft silk fabric. It even smelled wonderful. What kind of silk is this? It's a little secret of mine. Consider it a gift for the future queen. Sophia smiled and gestured back to the large mirror I had posed in front of. The guard handed her the dress and left the room directly after. Jonathan curiously eyed the dress and touched it before grinning. Hopefully this dress fits. I don't think I can try any more. Well, what are you waiting for? Try it on. Jonathan beamed and nearly jumped in anticipation. I laughed and rolled my eyes at him. Sophia helped me out of the dress I wore and into the red one. The fabric was incredibly soft and it fitted me perfectly. When I pulled the straps onto my shoulder and looked at myself in the mirror, my stomach did a flip of excitement. The dress was stunning and with my brown hair cascading over my shoulder, gave me the look of a princess. No, not a princess, a queen. Jonathan held back his tears, and Sophia grinned from ear to ear. The dress was perfect. I loved the belt of diamonds around my waist. That's the one, Jonathan said and nodded to himself. I couldn't agree more. Sophia is a mastermind. Thank you, Sophia, truly. I said and smiled warmly at her. She just waved it off and blushed. It was a pretty color on her. It was nothing, she chuckled. I eyed me one more time in the mirror, picturing myself next to Antonio. Even though I was very nervous about the ball, I was also excited to spend a wonderful night with him. We haven't had a night together since when I was shot in the shoulder. Wow, we really do need another night together. But unfortunately, this night won't be very relaxing like I want it to be. Maybe we won't ever have a calm night together again. How long until I need to be ready? 
This whole finding a dress scenario has taken too much time. I sighed, giving Jonathan a long look, making him chuckle again. Jonathan has always been very picky about my clothes, especially when I performed in the restaurant. Sophia walked up to me and placed her hands on my shoulders. In an hour or two, no need to worry. We will get you fixed, Sophia said. Jonathan nodded in agreement. They will get me ready? Sophia knows what she's doing. But Jonathan, this will certainly take more than an hour or two. I know what you're thinking, honey. But don't worry. I will behave, Jonathan said and wiggled his eyebrows, making me and Sophia laugh. He is so likable. But more on that later. Now we need to get ready. I need to look like a queen. Sophia and Jonathan did my hair, curling it, and doing a smoky eye with a bold red lip, matching the dress. I have never looked this beautiful before. This is what a queen's supposed to look like. The time had flown by with laughter and jokes. Sophia and Jonathan had already started to like each other. And I get why. They both have a sense for fashion. I think you're ready, Sophia said, and fixed a loose brown curl. Ready? I'm more than ready. Well, in appearance I am, but my heart was beating rapidly in my chest, and thousands of horrible scenarios of me falling down the stairs were on a loop in my head. Hopefully my clumsiness won't ruin this night. I rose from the chair and stood in front of the tall mirror again. Wow, I really looked like a queen. You've both outdone yourselves. Thank you. I smiled and did a purette, making the skirt spread out like a red sea. They both laughed and admired my final look. Antonio will love this dress. I just know he will. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door. Sophia went to open and was greeted by one of her guards. Mr. Gennaro is ready, he said shortly. Sophia gave him a nod and turned to me. My heart leaped out of my chest and I had to inhale deeply to try and calm down. Jonathan saw my distress and took my hands, giving me a look full of love. You look lovely. Just don't fall, Jonathan teased. Jerk, I laughed and punched him in the shoulder. He pouted and avoided a second slap. All right, all right. Cut it out, it's time. Sophia chuckled. Yeah, it's time. What will Antonio wear? What will he think of my dress? What will the rest think of me? Shit, I need to calm down. You got this, trust me, Sophia said and stepped back from the door. I guess the guard is supposed to escort me to Antonio. Am I not even safe in his house anymore? I will see you both later. I smiled and gave both of them a long look. They smiled and nodded. Good, I would need them here tonight. The guard coughed, ripping me out of my bubble of worry. Right, time to go. I stepped away from the mirror and followed the guard out of the small room. I couldn't help but to feel that something would go wrong tonight, or that something horrible would happen. I tried to shrug it off as we walked down a narrow corridor, leading to the grand living room that had been rearranged into a ballroom. It wasn't like a real ballroom, but it was more than enough. The guard didn't say a word to me, and when we reached the end of the corridor, he gestured for the stairs. The stairs led up to the second floor, but instead of going all the way up, it splits into two, and you can either turn right or left to continue up. I wanted to chuckle when I realized what entrance Antonio had planned. I stopped in front of the first step and turned my head up and saw him. Antonio looked like an angel standing on the other side. Our eyes met and I felt my heart melt. He wore a black suit, reminding me of the one he wore when we first met, and smiled brightly. His eyes wandered up and down my body, and by the way they lit up, I knew he loved the dress. The whole scenario us standing opposite sides of each other, reminded me of the scene in Beauty and the Beast, when Belle and the Beast saw each other in their formal outfits. 
It was very cheesy, but very romantic. Antonio couldn't stop smiling when we both started walking down the stairs, meeting in the middle. The room was already full with people from different countries, different ethnic backgrounds, and different opinions of the Gennaro family. I felt my heart ready to almost burst from the rapid pulse it had. You look stunning, Antonio mumbled, and took one of my hands, sending shivers down my spine. It had been a long time since we had a truly romantic moment. If we ignored all the people looking at us, this would be very, very romantic. You don't look so bad yourself, I chuckled, giving us both a flashback of our first dinner together. Even if I did get shot, the memory of it made Antonio smile even bigger. Are you ready, my queen? Antonio purred. I wanted so badly to embrace him and let him do whatever he wanted to me. I am, with you here, my king. I smiled and squeezed his hand. Antonio chuckled and kissed my hand before turning us towards the crowd. Everyone was silent and stared at us, probably examining me more than Antonio. While we walked down the stairs, and I prayed not to fall on my face, Fear gripped my stomach in a tight grip. What I feared was the traitor. Someone in this very room wanted to kill me. Someone in this room still wants to kill me. And even if I felt so incredibly safe standing next to Antonio, I couldn't stop myself from thinking about all the ways this ball could go wrong. What if Antonio hadn't lured in the traitor, but signed my death warrant? Chapter 15. The Traitor The whole room was quiet when we reached the last step on the stairs, where Antonio stopped. I was quite taken back from his sudden loss of movement, but luckily I didn't fall like I feared I would. All eyes were on us. I tried to keep a calm and professional face, but I wasn't sure if I succeeded. Allies, friends, family. I am grateful for your presence here tonight to celebrate my and your new queen, Elena Hale, he said and turned his head to look at me. I met his gaze and smiled, but I still couldn't get the thought of the traitor out of my head. My worry was going to ruin this whole night. Maybe Antonio noticed my worry, maybe he didn't. Let us have music food, and good company tonight, Antonio finished in a strong and confident voice. The people with us hollered of approval and music started playing just seconds after. A group of musicians were playing classical instruments, and one of them, an African-American man with a very impressive voice, sang. Since I was a singer myself, I was very impressed by his voice and listened intently. I listened so closely Antonio nearly made me stumble when he stepped down the last step. A crimson blush of embarrassment decorated my cheeks when I looked out on all the people around us, and one of them approached us. Antonio, let me be the first to congratulate you on your new and very stunning queen, he said and smirked at us, giving me a wink when he called me stunning. I smiled at him taking a step closer to Antonio. I didn't trust anyone here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I'm glad you're here, Antonio said and smiled a very genuine smile. He trusted this man then. Good to know. Knowing Antonio trusted him did calm me down, but he also trusted his circle, and yet one of them had betrayed him. What a dangerous game this is. Are you American, Mr. Williams? Your surname is surely not Italian. One thing Sophia told me, while she and Jonathan did my hair and makeup, was to talk and make myself known. To just fade into the background is no way of being a queen. A queen was supposed to be strong, confident, and unafraid. Unfortunately, I'm none of those things. At least I can pretend. Mr. Williams looked at me and gave me a big smile. Indeed, I am. You have a good air, and if I'm correct, you are American as well, he said, 
How does he know that? I thought no one knew of me. I wanted to look at Antonio and ask him about this, but instead I acted on Sophia's advice. Be my own woman. You are very well informed. I am American, I answered, not sure what more to say. Well, I'm so great at making conversation. Note the sarcasm. Ah, a little bird whispered in my ear about our new queen. Mr. Williams chuckled, probably caught off guard by my unasked question in my former sentence. Perhaps he hadn't expected me to act the way I did. Sophia gave me millions of tips and helped me a great deal, from one queen to another. And who might that bird be? You must know that I don't appreciate gossip. Antonio countered and sounded satisfied with blackmailing Mr. Williams. Well, so much for friends. Mr. Williams' smile faltered and his jaw tensed. It seems we caught him off guard. Wow, I never imagined myself capable of such a thing. I'm awesome. I, uh, it was Mr. Amari, Caleb Amari. Mr. Williams finally said after a short moment of silence. The name made Antonio tense beside me. I felt how his hand squeezed mine harder. Caleb Amori, who is that? I've never heard of him before. I see. It was a pleasure speaking with you again, Mr. Williams. Have a wonderful night, Antonio said, forcing a smile onto his perfect lips. Damn, even if that smile was fake. I still wanted to kiss him. And you, my king, my queen, Mr. Williams said, and left us. I immediately turned fully to Antonio, waiting for him to tell me all about Caleb Amari. Antonio, who is Amari? I asked when he didn't say anything. The look on his face was betrayed and extremely tense. If he doesn't calm down, people will know something is wrong. There were more people starting to approach us. You have met him before. Caleb Omari is the youngest in my circle. Antonio forced out. The youngest in his circle. My mind went back to that night when I met him at the restaurant. One of his members, the youngest, flirted with me. I still remembered his face. Is he the traitor? It certainly looks that way. He did know certain details about me. And why did he spill them to Mr. Williams? Are they in on it? Are they plotting to take Antonio down? My heart was racing in my chest when the next couple approached us, consisting of an older man and woman. My mind was clouded when I said my hello and expressed my gratitude. Antonio was the same next to me. The people we greeted were so many that I barely remembered their names. Elena, I need you to create a distraction, Antonio said suddenly, after a woman just left us alone for a short moment. His words made my head spin with confusion. Me? Create a distraction? What could I possibly do without embarrassing myself? Distract them? All of them? How? I breathed. Antonio turned and looked down at me, staring deeply into my eyes. I felt my breath get stuck in my throat. He was so incredibly beautiful. Do what only you can do. Enchant them with your voice, he said. He wants me to sing? Impossible. I haven't prepared anything. My voice is untrained since I haven't sung for a very long time, and I need to memorize the words, vocals and all that shit. He can't expect me to just burst out in a song but it was already too late. Antonio captured my lips in such a passionate kiss that I forgot all about the people around us. And when he leaned back, he discreetly pushed me towards the stage. To save myself from falling, I automatically stepped up one step up to the stage. The band immediately stopped playing and watched me. Oh shit. They expected me to say something? My heart was pounding in my chest, and I wanted to run away. I had never been so nervous before. I knew walking away was out of the question. It would look very, very weird. So, with a rushing mind, I stepped in front of the stage 
staring at the people who stared right back at me. The room had gone very quiet, and all eyes were on me. I swallowed. What would I sing? Then words flooded my mind, and I opened my mouth to sing them. Make You Feel My Love by Adele left my lips. The band immediately started to catch on, and a piano quickly joined in. How they knew exactly how to play the song must have been a miracle, or they are just talented. I expected my voice to falter or crack at the wrong places, but no such thing happened. I just sang from my heart. This is one of my favorite songs, and it was the song I sang that night Jonathan heard me from the bar. Speaking of Jonathan, where is he and Sophia? They said they would be here tonight. Casually, I scanned the crowd, careful not to seem distracted, but there were so many people. I will never be able to spot them among everyone. I can ask Antonio if he has seen them when he has finished whatever he's doing. It has something to do with Caleb Amari. I just know it. If Caleb is the traitor, Antonio will deal with him. A part of me wished Caleb was the traitor. At least then, this whole ordeal will be over and me and Antonio can move on. My future is with him. I came to the end of the song and applause filled the room. Some even cheered and seemed impressed by my voice. Perhaps this was a good move after all. Not only did I distract the crowd, I impressed them as well. I smiled brightly when I walked down the steps. It had been so long since I last sang that I had forgotten the thrill. Singing is my passion. I'm so glad to finally have broken my silence, and I bet Jonathan and Sophia will be damned impressed as well. Some people praised me as I made my way through the crowd. I was trying to find Antonio or Jonathan and Sophia, just someone that I knew. It wasn't comfortable walking around alone. Luckily, I caught a glimpse of Antonio, who was talking to someone. I recognized the older man from the circle. Is it really safe for Antonio to discuss anything with them? The band had started playing a good song to dance to, and many people were dancing waltz or something alike. Me and Antonio must dance later. Suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist and spun me around, making me collide with a strong chest. When I looked up to see who the hell dared touch me, I looked over into Caleb Amori's dark eyes. My breath got stuck in my throat, and so did my voice. Elena Hale, a pleasure to see you again. And a queen, no less, he said and smiled, giving me the creeps. The fear bubbled up in my stomach. I was possibly in the arms of a traitor, the traitor who ordered my death. This man, right in front of me, wants me dead. I felt my heart pound in my chest, and my hands started to tremble. It has been long, Mr. Amori, I managed to force out. Caleb chuckled and pulled me closer to his chest, and now I felt disgusted towards him as well. Doesn't he realize who I am? I might have been a mere singer the last time we spoke, but now I'm so much more. Indeed. How about a dance? I can't wait to catch up, he said, but before I managed to protest, he dragged me out on the dance floor. To stop myself from colliding with another couple, I walked closer to Caleb, allowing him to start dancing with me. I wanted to rip myself away from him but this was a perfect opportunity to force some information out of him. Shit, Antonio will not be happy about this. Just as good at dancing, I'm impressed, Caleb commented and smirked down at me. How I wanted to punch that smug look on his face. I can do many things, Mr. Amori, I said and faked a smile. Call me Caleb. You and I are going to work together in the future after all, he said, and leaned down. Why is he being this close to me? If Antonio sees him doing this. As you wish, Caleb. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you worked with Antonio? 
I asked to make him lean away from me. I couldn't stand having him so close to me. Where is Antonio when you need him? Four years. We have a strong bond, Caleb said quickly, his eyes faltering for a second. A strong bond? His eyes tell otherwise. If he really is the traitor, I need to find Antonio. I need to end this dance. Sorry for being so nosy, but like you said, we are going to be working together. I said and smiled an innocent smile. Caleb chuckled, but it wasn't genuine. Suddenly the music stopped and the people walked away from the dance floor. Finally, I thought that the dance would never end. It was shorter than normal, but I'm very glad about that. Time to find Antonio. Mr. Gennaro is over there. Come, I will follow you to him, Caleb said and placed an arm around my waist. I wanted to step away from him, but I managed to contain my anger and followed him. As long as I get to Antonio, everything will be fine. We were walking towards the end of the dance floor, where there weren't many people, when Caleb suddenly grabbed my waist tightly and pulled me out in a corridor. I didn't manage to scream or even make a sound before his hand covered my mouth, his whole body pushing me up against a wall. My eyes widened with fear when I stared down at Caleb who almost choked me with his giant hand over my mouth. There was no one around. We were completely alone. Just kill you, she says. No, no, we can't have that. It would be a waste to just kill you. I'm going to have some fun with you. Sleep tight. Caleb smirked and pulled a cloth out of his suit pocket. That's when I noticed how wet the pocket was. What the hell is he going to do with me? I started to struggle in his grip. I tried to kick him or reach him in some way, but it was in vain. Caleb was so much stronger. When he removed his hand, I opened my mouth to scream, but the wet cloth muffled my voice. The liquid tasted bitter and made me want to vomit, but I also felt a tiredness wash over me. No, I can't fall asleep. Fuck, fuck. But it was no use. The tiredness overwhelmed me and everything went black. Chapter 16 Enemies When I started to feel my body again, I was immediately hit with extreme grogginess. My head felt heavy, and I had a strange taste on my tongue. I was well aware why I felt this way. That fucking Caleb drugged me. Antonio was right to suspect him. My kidnapping proves it all. I just know I'm not in Antonio's mansion anymore. Morning, my queen, I heard someone say in an amused tone. But it wasn't Caleb. It was a woman. When I managed to force my eyes open, I was first blinded by a bright light. The room I was in reminded me of a basement. And the light that blinded me came from a naked light bulb dangling from a ceiling of cement. When I then turned my head to look at the woman who had spoken to me, I had to squint my eyes to see her in the dim light. The light bulb was terrible to look straight at, but it didn't give off much light. From what I could see, the woman was about my age, perhaps a bit older, and had long flowing light brown hair. I had never seen her before in my life. Was she working with Caleb? Most likely she was. You were out longer than expected. It just proves you're frail and pathetic, the woman hissed. I narrowed my eyes at her, sending her a long glare. She might have the higher ground, but I won't take insults. Who are you? What do you want with me? I managed to choke out, my voice rough. The drug, or whatever Caleb used, must have been awfully strong. I couldn't even think straight. The woman snorted before stepping out in the light. I would lie if I said she wasn't beautiful. She was absolutely gorgeous. Her eyes were a pale green color. Her skin tanned and her lips nude but plump. And judging by her looks and the accent, I'd say she's Italian. 
I'm the only one who should have your place, was all she said. Then like a puzzle, it all fell into place. I remembered my chat with Sophia that night, when we went out. Sophia told me about Antonio's former lover, Alexandra, who he left to explore the USA. Alexandra, I whispered. Me knowing her name surprised her. I could see it in her eyes. Hmm, you're well informed. At least you're good at something, she scuffed. Is this her plan to take revenge on Antonio? Because if she thinks she'll take him from me, she's dead wrong. Antonio is mine. This is your plan? Kidnap me? How is that supposed to win Antonio's favor? I asked. Alexandra must be working with Caleb. There's no other way. You think I want Antonio back? I don't want him. I want his throne. And if Caleb hadn't screwed everything up, you would be dead by now. Alexandra hissed. I remember Caleb talking about that. Alexandra wanted me dead. But he wanted to play with me first. Luckily, it seems he isn't here at the moment. But I'm not sure if I prefer Alexandra over Caleb. But why hadn't Alexandra just killed me then? I was drugged and in her grasp for many hours. Why not kill me? It was a perfect opportunity, although I'm glad she didn't take it. I wanted to find out more, but I knew my time was limited. Alexandra would probably kill me as soon as she could. What I need to do is to keep her talking. At least then Antonio will have a chance to find me. He must have noticed my and Caleb's absence from the party rather quickly. Because he left you? Is that it? I asked and looked into her furious eyes. Her jaw tensed at my question. I guess I just found a sore spot. Someone as beautiful as her didn't expect to be left behind, it seems. Alexandra started to slowly walk towards me, making me tense as well. There's nothing stopping her from killing me. I felt panic in my stomach and fear. Since both my legs and arms were tied to the chair I was sitting in, I couldn't defend myself. The only thing I have at the moment are my words. She stopped right in front of me and placed her hands on the chair's armrests, staring intensely into my eyes. I did everything for him. My family turned their back on me. My friends dishonored me because I loved him. And then he threw me in the dirt when I gave him the throne. Alexandra hissed in my face. The hate in her voice scared me, but I also didn't understand what the hell she was talking about. She didn't give Antonio the throne. He got it after his father was murdered. Unless... No, she didn't. She couldn't have. Antonio's father. It was you, wasn't it? You killed him, I breathed. If she managed to kill a king, I can't begin to imagine what she could do to me. My confidence suddenly deflated. The look on Alexandra's face told me everything. She really had done it. She murdered Antonio's father, Sophia's husband. His father never approved of us. The only way for us to be together was for Antonio to become king. I did it for him, and then he left me to chase dreams in America, she said, her eyes burning with rage. Is she insane? She killed his father. How could she ever expect him to love her again? Did Antonio know of her betrayal? Sophia didn't say who killed her husband other than a rival family. That family could have been hers, and that's why Antonio left her. Has he suspected her this entire time and never told me? My head was spinning from all the questions. And killing me would solve everything? I asked. I was straining to keep the conversation between us alive. All I wanted to do was to smack her right across her pretty face for hurting Sophia and Antonio like that. 
How dare she say she loved him? Not everything, but it would feel damn good to see his face when I kill you. I was going to do it at the party, but then Caleb couldn't control his silly desires. I guess I have to satisfy myself by just sending your body in pieces. Alexandra almost screamed in my face. I pressed myself against the chair, wishing I would just sink through the floor and escape her wrath. She may be fucking crazy, but she's extremely dangerous. Then what? Is Antonio next? I managed to say. Just keep her talking. Just killing him would be too easy. No, I'm going to destroy him from within. I'm going to rip away all his allies, the ones he loves, and then I'll kill him. His throne will be all mine. Alexandra smirked. Wow, she's really a crazy bitch. Antonio leaving her must have destroyed her sanity. But I didn't feel sorry for her. She killed Antonio's father. And I could only presume she's behind everything that's happened. Me getting shot? Kidnapping Jonathan? It's all her and Caleb. Suddenly, Alexandra grabbed my left shoulder, making me yelp in pain. Of course she wants to hurt me. She's crazy. My shoulder was healed, but it still hurt whenever someone touched it. Oh, what's this? A little injury? Alexandra smirked and pulled down the red strap from my shoulder. I realized that I was still wearing the long red dress, but it was dirty and the end of the skirt was slightly torn. The red scar after the bullet almost gleamed in the damp light. Has she already forgotten how she almost killed me? Alexandra raised an eyebrow and gently caressed the ugly scar. What the hell is wrong with her? This is recent. How did you get this? She asked, suddenly intrigued. What is she talking about? She gave me that scar. You and Caleb did this to me. You sent mercenaries to attack me and Antonio at the restaurant in America. I said harshly. Alexandra didn't like my tone and pressed her thumb against the scar, making me scream out in pain. My shoulder started to pound and ache. I didn't do this, nor did Caleb. It seems someone else wants you dead. How amusing. She smirked and stepped back, leaving me with a bare shoulder. I stared at her, not sure what to say. If they didn't do it, then who did? Or she could be lying. No, that doesn't make sense. Why would she lie in a situation like this? She admitted to murdering Antonia's father. Why deny trying to kill me? An evil chuckle escaped her lips and she bent down close to my face again. This time she didn't say anything. She just stared into my eyes like a fucking maniac. She must have been sane when she was with Antonio, because who could love someone as crazy as her? Suddenly the door opened and a man looking like a soldier with all that gear swallowed before looking at Alexandra, who had turned her head. I could see that she wasn't amused to be interrupted, but I secretly thanked the soldier for opening that door. Miss Abeno, we are under attack, the soldier said nervously, casting me a short glance. So she is a part of the Abeno family. I knew she was behind Jonathan's kidnapping. A growl left Alexandra's throat before she straightened her posture. Don't go anywhere. I'm not done with you yet. Alexandra taunted before leaving the room with the soldier. Antonio has come for me. Finally, I was so scared that I would die. This is the perfect time to try and escape. Unfortunately, I'm not the most graceful person, and I'm tied down. I turned my head to take in my surroundings. I looked for something to cut open my ropes. The chair wasn't pinned to the floor, so I could move it if I really tried. There must be something sharp around here. Alexandra must have been prepared to kill me with something, unless she planned to strangle me to death. It was very difficult to see anything because of the damp light. All I saw was dark walls 
and the drug was still making my vision blurry. I had just spotted something gleamy in a corner when the door opened again. Caleb. My heart started to beat rapidly in my chest, and I had to stop myself from spitting at him. My eyes were wide in both fear and anger when I looked at him. I'm still tied down and can't do anything. I need to behave, otherwise he will most likely hurt me. A sickening smirk decorated his face when he walked closer to me, closing the door behind him. The need to sink through the floor was almost deafening. Our king can't stand being without you. He has already attacked our base. But I'm glad Alexandra didn't kill you. I made a promise before. Caleb chuckled and slowly walked towards me. He made me sick to my stomach, but he also made me shiver with fear. No cloth stopped me from saying anything, but I didn't dare open my mouth. Caleb kneeled in front of my legs, placing his hands on my thighs. I flinched from his touch. Tell me, have you fucked Antonio yet? He said, in an amused tone. My eyes widened with fear. Oh no, he can't. No, please. Tears watered my eyes when I knew what was going to happen next. I take that as a no? You see, if I can't take his throne, I will take his queen. Caleb smirked and pulled out a pocket knife. A sob left my lips when I stared down at him and the knife. My mind started to spin in fear, and my body started to tremble. He can't. No. 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 With two rough slashes, Caleb carved two slits in my red dress, bearing my thighs. A rumble left his throat, and my tears started to fall. Several sobs left my throat when I watched him stare at my bare skin. I prayed for Antonio to burst into the room and save me. I prayed for a fucking miracle. He stood up and dragged the tip of the knife across my thigh, up my stomach and over my bare shoulder. I sobbed and sobbed, tears streaming down my cheeks. I felt so helpless. With another rough slash, Caleb cut off the strap resting on my left shoulder. A yelp of surprise and fear left my mouth. You move, I slit your throat, understand? Caleb said darkly. I only sobbed as a response when he cut off the rope around my wrists. I was too afraid to move. He bent down and cut off the rope around my ankles as well. I don't know what the hell got into me, but I just knew I couldn't let him touch me. I knew I couldn't let him destroy me in such a way. In a quick movement, I kicked him right between his legs with my right foot. A huff left Caleb's lips, and he fell to the ground, grabbing himself where I just kicked him. It was so satisfying to look at him squirm on the dirty floor. But the sudden adrenaline pumping through my veins threw me out of the chair, out of the room, and I closed the door behind me. I even locked it to keep Caleb from escaping. Luckily, there were no guards around, but I could hear weapons firing. Antonio had already breached the building. The corridor I stood in was dark, but not as dark as the room I just locked Caleb in. And since the corridor only ran to the right, I didn't have to choose which way to go. I took off running through the dark corridor, away from Caleb and towards the shooting. Antonio or his men must be there, and I will reach them alive. Chapter 17 Pain Running with a long but torn dress turned out to be a bit of a challenge. The fabric constantly got in the way, and it got stuck on several other items along the way. Curse Caleb for turning my dress into an unusable piece of fabric. Although I was slowed down, I was still running undetected towards the shooting. The automatic guns were extremely loud. Not even my heavy breathing was heard throughout the corridor. And the shootout must have attracted all Alexandra's and Caleb's soldiers since it was empty as well. 
I can only hope to reach the right soldiers, and not my enemies. If something goes wrong, I can get shot again. Just thinking about it made my shoulder pound. I still remembered the pain after being shot once. There's no way I can live through this again. After just a minute of running, I abruptly met the end of the dark corridor. Now the bullets were so loud that my ears started to hurt. I pressed myself against the wall and slivered along it, carefully sticking out my head to get a good look. I feared that I would get a bullet right between my eyes, but luckily I was hidden behind a rather big crate. The corridor had led me to a big warehouse, and the giant room with a high ceiling contained hundreds of crates with unknown cargo. It was difficult to see anything because of the crates blocking most of my view. But I did see some men and women with guns that they fired. From what I could see from my hiding place were two geared up groups shooting at each other. Just seeing that wild battle made my stomach turn. I had never been in this situation before. Of course I've seen a fair share of action films, but it was nothing like this. My body barely reacted when I told myself to run behind a crate for cover. My mind was running wild with fright. My queen! Someone suddenly shouted, ripping me out of my bubble of fear. A woman, covered in military gear and an automatic rifle in her hands, hid behind a crate not far from me. Somehow, I had leaned out a bit too much and exposed my entire head and upper body. If she hadn't been friendly, I would be dead by now. My queen, I need you to run to me. We will get you to safety, she shouted above all the shooting. It was difficult to hear her words, but in some way I did hear her, and I didn't like it one bit. Me? Run over to her. I will get shot without a doubt. The woman must have seen the fear in my eyes because she gracefully crossed an open area to reach a crate closer to me. I was surprised by her devotion. I will cover you. Run! She shouted and fired her gun at some soldiers I couldn't see. Just by doing that, she risked her life, and I won't let it go to waste. I inhaled deeply before sprinting from the safety behind the wall, and in some miraculous way I reached the woman without a scratch. I'm so glad to have found you. Our king is here with us, but he's on the other side of the building, pushing back attackers. I will escort you and protect you with my life, the woman said bravely. I couldn't see her face because of the helmet she wore. Her vow to lay down her life for me made me lose my words. What was I going to say? I had been so confident at the ball, but this was a whole other situation. I couldn't just say thank you and let her die for me. I felt so wrong. I didn't want her to die for me. I, I, was, was what I could choke out of my throat that felt like a desert. I know that you must be traumatized, but we must move. There are too many and we are losing ground. Now that we have found you, we will join our king. And the woman started, then suddenly she fell to the ground with a heavy thud. At first I just stared at her, wondering what the fuck just happened. But when I saw the red liquid starting to cover the floor around her head, I realized what just happened. She had just been shot. She's dead. My entire body froze when I looked at her. She was dead. My queen, run! The corridor to your right, run! We will cover you! A man shouted from another crate, having witnessed the death of the woman I didn't know. She had died for me, and I didn't even know her name. We had never met, and yet, now she's dead because of me. I couldn't move. I was terrified. You must run, my queen. The longer you linger, the more likely we are to die, the man shouted. His words made me bite my lower lip. More lives could be lost because of me. No, I won't allow that. I looked away from the dead woman and at the man, who also wore a helmet. Don't take any chances, I shouted back, surprised how strong my voice suddenly had become. The man nodded before standing up, firing wildly. 
I took the opportunity he gave me and ran like a crazy person towards another corridor. I didn't know where it would lead me, but I had to take that chance. When I reached the corridor, I threw myself up against the wall. Like the other corridor, it only went one way, forward. I gathered the little courage I had after just witnessing my first death and sprinted into the dark. The sound from the bullets started to vanish, and after just a short moment I couldn't hear the fighting anymore. Again I was on my own, and it scared me. I had felt safer with the soldiers, even if I was closer to dying with them. They wanted to protect me, and now I had to protect myself. Hopefully I will reach Antonio, and we can get the fuck out of here. The woman did say that Antonio was here, and that thought made me run faster. He's in this very building, waiting, and looking for me. The end of the corridor came faster than I thought, and I ran into a similar cargo room, only that this room was much smaller, and it was completely empty. So I only slowed down a bit and ran towards another corridor I saw at the other end of the room. Stop, or I'll fucking shoot you, someone shouted behind me. My feet suddenly stopped moving and I nearly fell on my face. I recognized that voice. Alexandra. Turn around slowly with your hands in the air, she growled. My mind shouted at me to continue running, but my body did as she said and turned itself around with my hands lifted up. Our eyes met, and I swallowed. Alexandra started to walk towards me, and from the light, from the ceiling, I could see that she was bleeding from her arm. What happened to her? I should just shoot you right now. But I'm going to kill you in front of Antonio, she snarled. I swallowed again and tried to come up with a way out of this. But the only two ways out of this room was the one behind me and the one behind Alexandra. She would most likely shoot me if I tried to run away from her, as well as trying to run towards her. I couldn't escape this time. His little rescue came quicker than we expected. Luckily, our spy provided enough information to push them back, she said, this time sounding more confident. A spy? I thought Caleb was the spy. We have more traitors? The look on my face made Alexandra chuckle of delight. She must like to see me scared and confused. Didn't expect that, did you? That means he did a good job. Now, if you do anything stupid, I will shoot you in the leg and make you walk on it. She hissed and walked closer to me. I wanted to back away, but my body wouldn't move. I need to get out of this but I couldn't see how I would manage that. Alexandra closed in on me, and I realized that I was defeated. She's not stupid, and if I do anything, she will shoot me. I know she will. Stop! A man shouted behind Alexandra. I recognized that voice. What the? Jonathan appeared behind Alexandra, pointing a gun at her. When the hell did he learn to hold a gun? And why is he here? I swear, I will have a talk with Antonio about constantly putting Jonathan in danger. But even if I hated that he was here, and in more danger, I was still relieved to see him. If everything goes down smoothly, me and Jonathan can leave and return to Antonio. But how would we do that? Decided to join us, did you? Alexandra smirked. I hated the way she spoke to him, and I narrowed my eyes on her. I felt a lot more confident with Jonathan here, even if I know he can't handle a gun. Alexandra took a small step to the left, still pointing her gun at me, and looked at Jonathan, who swallowed. I could see the terror on his face. Whatever he's doing, it must be improvised. Slowly Jonathan walked up to us too, and he briefly looked at me and my torn dress. I could see his hands shaking from here. Don't make me do this, Jonathan said. Alexandra only sighed and continued to smirk. Why is she so confident? He's pointing a gun at her. You have no choice. Do it. Come on. Alexandra chuckled. Oh no, she's trying to make Jonathan shoot her? No, I can't let her do that. 
Jonathan is not a killer. I know him. He will never be able to live with the guilt. Jonathan stopped just half a meter away from Alexandra, aiming the gun at her head. I wanted to say something, but my voice had vanished again. Do it, now, Alexandra said, this time more harshly, and she narrowed her eyes at him. That sounded like a command. Is she trying to get herself killed? Forgive me, Jonathan whispered, and then he pointed the gun at me. Time stopped around me. My body froze. My mind went still. Jonathan, I whispered, feeling an ice-cold shiver run up my spine. I told you to stay away from him. I tried to get you out of this, Jonathan said with shaken hands. Then it all dawned on me. He can't be. No. My jaw dropped. The sting of betrayal hit me like a wrecking ball. After everything we've done together, he's been lying to me? You didn't listen. You became queen, goddammit. I didn't want it to come to this. That night he came to the restaurant and asked for you. I prayed that he wouldn't want anything more than a one-night stand with you. But then, then I saw you with him the night after. Jonathan breathed, tears running down his cheeks. I also felt how my cheeks were wet. I was crying. My heart was breaking in my chest. All the wonderful memories we had together. Those nights we would stay in the restaurant, eating leftovers and laughing until we couldn't breathe. Did it mean nothing? I didn't want them to hurt you. I told them to kill Antonio, but they messed up, he continued. No, 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 it can't be. A heartbroken sob left my lips. Ah, oh, so touching, Alexandra laughed. I ignored her and continued to stare at Jonathan. The kidnapping was fake. I told Alexandra that I was coming. It was all a ruse to get Antonio to trust me, Jonathan explained. I didn't want to believe it. My mind wanted to reject everything he said, but I couldn't. I couldn't look away from this. Now, I was planning on killing her in front of Antonio, but I want you to shoot her, Jonathan. Prove your loyalty to me, Alexandra smirked. Jonathan's grip on the gun faltered for a second. I could tell that he wasn't expecting Alexandra to give him that order. I stared at him, not caring if he shot me or not. I was already dead. Just looking at him, the friend I loved so incredibly much, betraying me, felt like dying. I couldn't say a word to him. My mind didn't function properly with a broken heart. Please forgive me, Jonathan whispered, and gripped the gun tighter in his hand. Suddenly, Alexandra yelped in surprise and dropped her gun to the floor, and I knew why. A bullet had just flown past us and hit a crate. We all turned our heads to the right, and I saw soldiers rushing in. Apparently, a big crate had been hiding another corridor. Alexandra didn't hesitate and turned around to flee, leaving Jonathan behind. So much for loyalty. Jonathan also reacted quickly, but instead of running with Alexandra, he rushed past me and into the corridor that turned left. I didn't know what got into me. I didn't know why my body picked up Alexandra's gun from the floor and ran after him. I didn't care about the soldiers shouting after me. All I could think about was Jonathan. I was so heartbroken that I cried and sobbed as I ran after him. My world was crumbling down around me. I thought he loved me. I thought he cared for me. I thought he trusted me. But they were lies. All of it was lies. The pain exploding inside my head made me want to scream until I couldn't scream any more. I wanted to fall to the ground and cry until I couldn't cry any more. My vision was blurry from all the tears, but I still saw the narrow corridor that twisted and turned many times. I also managed to spot Jonathan a few times, but he always vanished around a corner or a curve. I ran until my lungs ached and continued anyway. When I reached the end of the corridor, I saw Jonathan run past a green crate, heading towards a door. 
I didn't stop and followed him. What would I do? What would I do if he stopped? Suddenly Jonathan's foot slipped against the wet ground and he fell, stopping the fall with his two hands. The gun he held dropped right next to him. In those few seconds I caught up with him, and I aimed my gun at him, my hands shaking. It was heavy, heavier than I thought, but the adrenaline in my veins gave me strength to hold it up. Jonathan turned around on his back, lifting himself up with his hands and looked at me. How could you? I loved you! I sobbed, my body shaking from the sorrow ripping my heart to pieces. I wanted to tell you, but then Antonio came, Jonathan whispered. You think that makes it right? I trusted you. You lied to me, I sobbed. Elena, I love you so much, but I can't turn away from Alexandra, Jonathan said, glancing at the gun he dropped. It was terrifyingly close to him. Just seeing him look at it made me step closer to him. Yes, you can. I will help you, I whispered. Even if my heart was breaking, I still loved him. I still wanted to save him. I can't lose him. Not Jonathan. Not him. You can't, Jonathan whispered back and glanced at the gun again. Jonathan, please don't. Please don't do this, I said and sobbed, the pain ruining my mind. I love you, Elena. Forgive me, Jonathan said. Then he grabbed the gun in just a second and aimed it at me, and a gunshot echoed in the corridor. Chapter 18 Guilt The silence that followed echoed just as loudly as the gunshot. Me and Jonathan stared at each other. The first seconds were just a blank stare. I felt my hands shake. The pain that exploded in my chest seconds after made my heart clench, because I remembered pulling the trigger, and the blood that slowly started to seep out on Jonathan's white shirt confirmed it. I had just shot him. I had shot Jonathan. A ragged breath left Jonathan's lips, and his arms fell to the floor, followed by his head. Then he didn't do anything more. He just laid there completely motionless. His eyes were still open, and they stared up at the ceiling. But they were lifeless. That spark of life had left him. A broken sob left my throat, and I dropped the gun on the floor. I killed him. I killed Jonathan. A pained cry left my lips when I stared at his lifeless body. I didn't want it to end this way. I wanted to help him break free from Alexandra and Caleb. Why didn't he listen? I thought he loved me, but he was ready to kill me. I fell to my knees and buried my head in my hands, crying and crying, the tears smudging my makeup. But I didn't give a fuck about my appearance, not when someone I considered to be my best friend was dead by my hands. Everything has gone to hell. The pain in my chest was pulsating, like an open wound and there was nothing I could do about it. It didn't matter if I felt betrayed or hated Jonathan for what he did to me. I still loved him. I still wanted to save him. I didn't want to kill him. I begged him, and yet he didn't listen. Why? What could inspire such loyalty to Alexandra? Did she threaten him? Fuck. None of that matters now. I don't care what Alexandra did to turn Jonathan to her side. What matters is that Alexandra is going to get what's coming for her. Elena! Someone shouted behind me. I recognized that voice. It was Antonio. Normally, I would have felt relieved to see him after Caleb kidnapped me but everything had gone in a direction I couldn't handle, and I couldn't handle Jonathan's body just a meter away from me. It was like a nightmare coming true. A pair of hands gently grabbed my shoulders, but I ignored whoever it was. The pain had swallowed me. Elena, honey, 
I heard Antonio say softly. Perhaps he tried to hide the worry in his voice, but I heard it clearly. Of course, I can't blame him for being worried. I was kidnapped after all. Slowly I looked up and was met with Antonio's pale eyes. They were so soft, full of both joy and sorrow. When he saw my torn dress, my smudged mascara and bloodshot eyes, I thought he would cry with me, but he didn't. It was Jonathan. It was him, I whispered, feeling an ache in my throat after all the sobbing. Lonely tears were still falling from my eyes. Are you hurt? He asked, clenching his jaw. I can understand that he must feel betrayed, like me. Antonio had most likely started to trust Jonathan and brought him here as protection. But he betrayed us and almost killed me. I shook my head, fearing my voice would fail me. Good. I'm going to get you out of here. I promise, my darling. Antonio said and lifted me up from the ground, carrying me in his strong arms. I pressed my face into his neck and inhaled his scent. I felt safe with him. Alexandra, I saw her flee, I said and looked up at Antonio, who narrowed his eyes when I mentioned her name. I could see the anger in them. Had he not suspected her? She managed to escape. I never thought she would dare oppose me, much less Caleb, he sighed. Just hearing his name made me shudder. The memories of him cutting my dress open played over and over in my head. It was unbearable. And Caleb? I asked. Please tell me he didn't escape as well. Locked in a cell. He said it was your doing, Antonio said, sounding quite impressed. I would have felt impressed if Caleb hadn't tried to assault me. Perhaps I even would have smiled at my cleverness. But I just closed my eyes and tried to force my brain to think of something else. Not only had I almost been raped, I had killed Jonathan. I could still feel the weight of the gun in my hands, even though I had dropped it. This whole fucking day was hell. When I noticed your absence, I feared the worst. But when I found out Alexandra had been at the party and left with Caleb, I... I thought she... Antonio said but trailed off, his eyes blinking rapidly, but he couldn't hide the tears from me. You thought she killed me? I finished, staring up at him. Antonio looked down at me and nodded sadly. The fear was evident in his eyes. I can't imagine what he's been through. Just losing me so quickly at the ball, it must have been excruciating. I know I would have been a wreck. Although after the events of today, I already am one. Did he? Did Jonathan work for Alexandra? Antonio asked carefully, knowing the subject was sore. What else did he expect? I had just killed my best friend. I had killed someone that I loved more than my own absent mother. Not opening my eyes, I exhaled a deep breath and tried to get the image of Jonathan's body out of my head. Yes. Even before we met, he did. He was the one who sent the mercenaries after us that night at the restaurant. I said shortly, not wanting to talk about it anymore. I know Antonio wants to know everything that happened here, but now is not the time. I need to rest, to think and process everything first. My body was extremely exhausted, like my mind. Having Antonio carrying me did bring me comfort, though. I had worried about him. When that woman who died told me Antonio was here, a beacon of hope had lit up inside of me. I just never expected this to happen. What did I ever do to Jonathan? Was it just because I love Antonio? Because I had become his queen? That loyalty he had for Alexandra, how? How did she make him choose her over me? The question made me sick. That explains everything, 
Elena, I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful, Antonio said, voice full of guilt. No, I don't want him to blame himself for this. If someone should be blamed, it's that bitch Alexandra. Stop. It's not your fault. It's Alexandra's, I said seriously, opening my eyes and forcing him to look down at me. I will never blame him for anything that happened here today. It's Alexandra and Caleb's fault, not his. A sad smile tugged at his perfect lips, and he leaned down and kissed my forehead, not wanting to talk about it any more. I knew he would continue to blame himself no matter what I said. The cold morning air made me shiver. It was just past dawn. Antonio pulled me closer to keep me warm. While he was wearing a jacket, I was only wearing my dress that barely could be called a dress anymore. And when I thought of the dress, I thought of Sophia. Antonio, is Sophia all right? Does she know what happened? I asked. Don't worry, she's fine. I forced her to stay at the mansion when I told her what happened. She wanted to come with me first, but I talked her down. Antonio explained slowly. I sighed in relief and closed my eyes, but immediately opened them again when Jonathan's lifeless body flashed before my eyes. Why do I feel so guilty? Sure, I loved him and wanted to save him, but he was ready to kill me. I had to defend myself. Antonio and Sophia will say the same thing. I had to kill him, right? Then why do I feel so guilty? Why? I squeezed my eyes shut, forcing my mind to think about something else but Jonathan, and stopped the tears from flowing down my cheeks. Antonio didn't ask anything about how Jonathan died. I knew he already had it figured out, but I couldn't see any remorse or pity for him in his eyes. The only pity he had was for me. He knew how hard this would be on me, and he doesn't know half of it. I still haven't told him about Caleb. I doubt Caleb will tell what he did by free will. If he does, Antonio will show him no mercy. And right now, I just want to get to the mansion. I can tell him about Caleb later. At least he's not going anywhere. When I opened my eyes again, I felt warm. The cold morning breeze didn't blow against my skin anymore, and I felt an engine spin. I was laying down in a car with my head in Antonio's lap. One of his big hands was slowly playing with my tangled hair. When our eyes met, he smiled at me. You dozed off. I didn't want to wake you, he said, and I noticed that he didn't drive. We were sitting in a big car, probably a Range Rover, with a geared-up man as a driver. I ignored his words and grabbed his jacket, forcefully pulling him down towards me and capturing his lips in a passionate kiss. It was quite awkward for Antonio because of the angle, but he didn't seem to care and answered my kiss by tangling his hands into my hair and pulling me closer. In the kiss I felt the worry, agony, rage, and joy he felt. We didn't need words to speak. Our actions were enough. I feared for my life back there, and my mind had constantly wandered to Antonio, rotted into my survival. That, without a doubt, is love. I knew I loved him. I've loved him for a long time now. But I still hadn't said those three words to declare it. And Antonio hadn't said anything either. It was clear that he wanted me and not just my body or my pretty face. He wanted me, and only me. That is also love, but he hadn't said anything. I pondered those three words as Antonio kissed me until my lungs screamed for air. Don't let them take me again, I whispered as I pulled back. The kiss had made me vulnerable, and now I was pouring out my feelings to him. I was so afraid of Alexandra and Caleb, I was so afraid of everything that had happened. I swear on my life, I will never let them touch you again. Antonio growled against my lips before kissing me again. I felt the hunger he had for me, 
all those agonizing feelings that had plagued him since I was kidnapped were all pouring out from his lips. As an answer, I allowed him to taste me as long as he liked. When we get back, I will hunt down Alexandra and end her life. She doesn't deserve to live, Antonio said once he pulled back. Normally, I would have screamed at him for suggesting to kill Alexandra. I'm not a killer, and I don't want Antonio to kill because of me. But strangely, I didn't find any reason to object. Alexandra had made it very clear on where we stand. It's her or me, and I'm not going to let her rip me away from Antonio. That bitch can go and rot in a cell. She's playing a dangerous game, I answered after a moment of silence. I'm not going to back down and allow her to win. I can't lose you, Antonio said quickly. The desperation in his voice took me off guard but I smiled kindly at him and placed a hand on his stubbly cheek. The devotion is, I don't think I can find a word to describe it. You won't. From this moment on, we will stay together, no matter what, I whispered. Antonio kissed my lips as a response. After Jonathan's death, I wasn't sure who to trust anymore. Did Alexandra have more spies? Did she already have a plan on how to take her revenge? The questions made me exhausted. Sleep, my queen. You need it, Antonio said sweetly and grabbed my hand that was caressing his cheek. He kissed my palm before placing my hand down at my side again. I smiled and squeezed his hand, closing my eyes shortly after. The exhaustion overwhelmed me as a sigh escaped my lips. I felt content in Antonio's arms even if pictures of Jonathan and Caleb flashed before my eyes. After only a moment, I was fast asleep. Antonio smiled and kissed my forehead, staring down at my sleeping form. I love you, my Elena, he whispered softly in my ear, and kissed my forehead one more time. Chapter 19 Truth It would be a waste to just kill you. I'm going to have some fun with you. Elena, I love you so much, but I can't turn away from Alexandra. You move, I slit your throat, understand? I want you to shoot her, Jonathan. Prove your loyalty to me. I love you, Elena. Forgive me. I gasped and opened my eyes. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest, and I felt sweat slowly run down my back. The only thing I dreamed of were memories of how Caleb tried to rape me and the death of Jonathan. Not even in my sleep am I safe from what happened, but Caleb and Jonathan weren't the only ones on my mind. Alexandra also haunted me in my dreams. The mixed feelings of anger and fear made me unsure of what to think of her. It would be stupid to just hate her. I need to fear her as well. She has already accomplished much. I sighed and buried my head in my hands, not caring to look around and see where I was. Since I had a thick cover around me, I figured I was back at the mansion. Antonio must have carried me here after I fell asleep in the car. God, I felt so exhausted. All the things that had happened so fast were spinning around in my head, making me dizzy. Also, my body was completely drained. But even if I felt horrible, I needed to get up, for Antonio and Sophia. And when I swung my legs over to the edge of the bed, I noticed that I was still wearing the red dress, still torn and dirty. If Caleb hadn't touched it, I would have loved the dress. But now I only saw the images of him cutting it open. I shuddered and peeled it off as quickly as I could. Then I walked over to the closet to find something comfortable. Not even picking out clothes could ease my mind, and I found it pathetic. If I can't handle a kidnapping and almost being assaulted, how will I manage being queen? Sophia had told me before the ball of all the difficult tasks she had been through, and tasks I would have to face as well. Difficult dilemmas and questionable things were inevitable. Can I handle that? 
or will I break down like this every time? I became queen because of Jonathan. Antonio knows that. And now he's dead. What a fucking waste. I sighed out loud and closed my eyes, trying to pull myself together. This day will be horrible. I just know it. We still have Caleb to deal with, and I have to tell Antonio how Caleb tried to hurt me. If I hadn't defended myself, he would have done it. No doubt about it. He's fucking crazy. Suddenly the door to my room opened carefully. I turned around and saw Antonio peek in. Seeing him calmed me down immensely, and I sprinted towards him. When he saw me, he opened his arms and allowed me to bury my face in the crook of his neck. My Elena, he whispered and held me tight. I smiled and sweetly kissed his neck. We haven't been able to be intimate ever since Jonathan was kidnapped. I missed being with him. I'm so glad you're here. I sighed and leaned back, but still with my arms locked around his neck. Antonio smiled and gave me a short kiss. I made a promise. I'm not leaving you alone ever again, he said and caressed my cheek. I bet I still look like a mess. My makeup is still on and my hair is still in tangles. That just proves Antonio definitely wants more than my body. Ever? I whispered, suddenly feeling very emotional. Ever. He repeated and pulled me closer, making me chuckle. It felt so right to be in his arms. It made me forget about all the things going on. It made me forget about Caleb and Jonathan. I had feared that I would only think of Caleb when Antonio touched me, but instead he made me forget, and that was priceless. But I still had to tell him about Caleb and what he did. Antonio will not be happy. If he doesn't beat him up, Sophia surely will. I, uh, I need to tell you something, but let me clean up first, I said, sounding more serious. Antonio furrowed his brows, but nodded, letting me go with a kiss on my cheek. I smiled and walked over to the bathroom, locking the door behind me. The first thing I did was to wash my face, scrubbing away all the smudged-out makeup. I looked like a panda, and while I was washing my face and trying to get out all the tangles in my hair, I thought of how I would tell Antonio about Caleb. Not that I care what happens to him. I just don't know how that will affect Antonio. He will be furious, no doubt about that. But the things he could do, it made me shudder. But I pushed away the uncomfortable feelings and ignored any compassion I still had for Caleb. That fucker tried to rape me. He deserves what's coming to him, like Alexandra. Antonio was patiently waiting by the bed when I walked out of the bathroom. Here goes. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest again when I took one of his hands, looking straight into his pale eyes. Antonio saw the shift of emotions on my face and furrowed his brows again in worry. Elena, what happened? Antonio asked and stepped closer, grabbing both of my hands. He was so perfect and gentle. In these moments, it's hard to imagine that he's the ruthless king. I took a deep, shaky breath to calm myself down. You saw how ripped my dress was, I asked, and squeezed his hands. Antonio nodded slowly, not understanding what I was trying to say. If you worry about ripping the dress, Antonio said and smiled, but I shook my head to interrupt him. I'm not worried about that. It wasn't me. It was Caleb. He tried to... He said that he would kill me if I didn't. I choked out, hearing how shaky my voice was. I also felt tears run down my cheeks. The moment his name left my lips, images flashed before my eyes again. The smirk on his face, the feeling of the cold knife against my skin, his eyes staring at me. Antonio froze in front of me. The grip he had on my hands tightened so much that I almost gasped. The worry in his eyes vanished, almost like extinguishing a candle, and a blank nothingness replaced it. I didn't need to say the word. He understood anyway. 
I fought back before he did anything, but he ripped the dress with a knife, I whispered, staring at Antonio. What surprised me was the lack of emotion in his eyes and body language. I thought he would be angry, not emotionless. Without saying a word, Antonio let go of one of my hands, still clutching the other, and pulled me towards the door. Antonio, I gasped. What was he doing? Where are we going? Antonio didn't say anything when he opened the door, closing it behind us and pulling me down some stairs. I stumbled after him. Where are we going? Antonio, I said again, but not getting any kind of response. Antonio just walked with me through the mansion, down another stair, and led us to a basement. It reminded me of a dungeon in some old castle. It was cold, dark, and very unpleasant. Is Caleb down here? I didn't manage to ask Antonio about Caleb before he dragged me towards a closed door. Two guards stood outside, armed with guns, and guarded the door. Is he taking me to Caleb? No, I don't want to see him. But before I could object, Antonio opened the door and walked right in. Caleb was sitting down on a chair, his hands tied behind the backrest. He still wore the same suit but it was dirty and torn. But I could see that they hadn't hurt him. Not yet, anyways. The moment Caleb looked up and into my eyes, he knew exactly why we were here. And since Antonio was with him, looking like an emotionless statue, he was certain. I'm very sorry for... Caleb started, but Antonio interrupted him. When Caleb opened his mouth to speak, Antonio dropped my hand and darted over to Caleb and punched him right on the jaw. His head flew to the side and I saw blood running down his chin. The sudden attack made me gasp and place my hands over my mouth as I watched in utter surprise. The emotionless Antonio had turned into a furious man, his body tensing with every rapid breath that left his throat. He was so angry that I could see him seething. Antonio landed another punch on Caleb's jaw, then another, and another. He was punching so fast that I lost count. It was so strange to see Caleb's neck twist and turn in weird angles, and the blood flowing from his mouth. He didn't even manage to express his pain between Antonio's punches. A part of me felt satisfied when I saw Antonio beating him. I knew he deserved it, but another part of me was horrified and that part of me won. Antonio, stop! I exclaimed and ran up to him, grabbing his shoulders. The moment he felt my touch, he stopped, breathing heavily. Caleb groaned in pain. It was horrifying to look at him now, his face bloody and his nose broken. You dare put your hands on her! Antonio growled. I could feel how tense he was. I should kill you right here for touching her, he hissed and stepped back when I dragged him backwards. Antonio's white shirt had bloodstains on it, like his knuckles, but his hands were as red as the dress Caleb ripped. I wasn't sure if Caleb's jaw was broken, but it sure looked like it. It was twisted in some strange angle, and he couldn't say anything, only stare at us with mortified eyes. There will be no mercy for you. You are a dead man, Antonio breathed. I squeezed his shoulders, making him turn his head and look at me. The horror was evident on my face. No one touches my queen, he said, looking deeply into my eyes. I still couldn't react to what just happened. I was too shocked. Antonio stared at me, not regretting what he just had done to Caleb. And to be honest, I felt a bit content with seeing him bloody. Caleb's dark eyes moved from Antonio over to me. I did my best to look away from his broken facade and concentrate on Antonio. Without a word, Antonio grabbed one of my hands and walked me over to the door. We left Caleb in the cell, not saying a word to the guards about caring for his wounds. Was it right to just leave him there? He did betray Antonio 
kidnapped me, almost assaulted me, and who knows what more he could have done. This is justice, right? I'm sorry you had to see that. I just want you to know that I won't let anyone hurt you again, Antonio said as we walked up the stairs. After seeing him beat Caleb, I understood why they called him ruthless and how he held his position as king. Because even if he asked for forgiveness, I knew that he didn't regret it one bit. The only thing he was sorry for was allowing me to see it. Then why take me with him? So that I see what he does for me firsthand? No, I understand, Antonio. I do. After what he did? I said and bit my lower lip. Caleb deserves it. He truly does. At least that was what I tried to tell myself. But it also made me question if I truly could be the queen. Is this life right for me? Or was Jonathan right to try and keep me away? Or was Jonathan right to try and keep me away? My love for Antonio was pulling me, but the fear for living like this was pushing me in the opposite direction. But I know there's no going back. I'm the queen. Perhaps it's time to act like one. He won't escape. I will see to it personally. But Alexandra is still on the run, Antonio said and stopped walking, turning around to look down at me. I stepped closer to him and smiled gently, reaching up to caress his cheek. Then we will catch her too, I said quietly. Antonio was taken back from my confident words. It will take time. Alexandra is a master at hiding. Antonio sighed and leaned into my touch. Then we have more time to be together, I said. I was actually a tad happy about Antonio telling me it would take time to find Alexandra again. I have missed spending time with him, and only him, without troubles or people trying to kill us. Antonio chuckled and pulled me closer, encircling my waist with his strong arms. More time to be together, he repeated in a very low and sexy voice. This time it was my turn to chuckle and Antonio smirked before leaning down to capture my lips in a passionate kiss. Chapter 20. Content I felt something caress my cheek. At first I thought it was my mind playing a trick on me. But when it continued, I groaned and opened my eyes, only to look up into Antonio's pale eyes. His lips curved up into a smile, and he chuckled. Still sleepy, my queen? He asked and leaned down to kiss my forehead. I laughed and nodded. It was true. I still felt exhausted after my kidnapping. I still had nightmares that made me resent sleeping. But at times the tiredness caught up with me, and I unknowingly fell asleep almost everywhere. This time I fell asleep on a couch out on the large balcony while Sophia was supposed to make me a drink. I also hadn't told Antonio about my nightmares and my lack of sleep. He knew that I was tired, but considering what I'd been through, he thought of it as normal. Why I didn't tell him about the nightmares was because I didn't want to worry him. He was already working with finding Alexandra, and that search frustrated him at times. Luckily, he had me and Sophia to distract him. Only two days had passed since Antonio brought me home. Sophia had been overjoyed to see me and had refused to leave me alone. Now she followed me almost everywhere, and I was quite sure she noticed that my tiredness was because I couldn't sleep. But enough of that, Antonio is here after all. This couch is very comfortable, I countered and smirked at him. Antonio smiled and grabbed my hands, helping me up on my feet. A sigh of relief left my lips when I stepped into his embrace. I still couldn't believe how perfect he was. His beard was starting to grow out again, and I found myself missing his stubble. You need to shave, I teased and kissed his cheek. He rolled his eyes and encircled my waist with his strong arms. During our two days of rest, I realized how much happier Antonio had become. When I asked Sophia about it, she said it was all because of me. I really liked that reason, 
Antonio deserved to be happy, and so much more. I don't know, it's grown on me, he said, intentionally adding the pun. This time it was my time to roll my eyes. He has such bad humor. Keep telling jokes like that, and I will refuse to sleep in the same bed as you. I teased and started to play with the buttons on his shirt. Me and Antonio started to share bed directly after the kidnapping. I didn't feel safe to be alone, especially since Caleb still was in the same house as us. Antonio still hadn't decided when he was going to dispose of him. At the moment, Caleb still had vital information on Alexandra. But I did enjoy sharing a bed with him. Every night Antonio would hold me, and wake me up with a kiss and a smile. I even caught him watching me sleep one time. I felt like a goddess in his eyes. I better watch myself then, but I didn't wake you up from your beauty sleep just to tell you hilarious jokes. What do you say about spending the evening together? Just you, me, and the ocean, Antonio said, his eyes almost humming with content. Well, since our last dinner didn't go so well, I'd say we need to amend that. We haven't had proper time to just breathe and talk. Alexandra is still taking up a lot of his time, but less than before. At least now I could wake up with him. I almost giggled like a little girl before biting my lower lip and nodding. I would love to, I admitted and smiled, feeling very content with his question. Antonio chuckled and captured my lips in a sweet kiss. At least it started out sweet. But the moment I tasted his lips, I wanted him near me. I grabbed the collar of his shirt and pulled him closer, making sure my lips were pressed hard against his as they moved in sync. Antonio moaned and obliged my request of him being close to me. He was quickly overwhelmed with lust. I could feel it in the way he moved, and he grabbed my thighs, lifting me up. I squealed against his lips and placed my legs around his waist, otherwise I would have fallen to the floor. Memories of our dinner together and how he placed me on the table flashed before my eyes, only making me more aroused. Antonio kept kissing me fiercely, harshly caressing my thighs, and walked away from the couch. Since I couldn't see where exactly he was carrying me, I was first struck with a bit of panic when I felt the stone fence that surrounded the balcony against my bare legs. But I quickly calmed down when I realized that he had done the same thing at our first dinner. Again, the memory made me aroused. I pulled him closer with my legs, bending my knees and allowing him to step in between. Antonio bit my lower lip and moved his hands from my thighs and up to my waist. His hands started to massage my skin while breathing heavily against my open lips. I moved one of my hands up and placed it on his cheek, dragging my nails over his bearded cheek. A flash of hunger traveled through his eyes, and they darkened in lust. Without even thinking how openly we were having a heating makeout session, he started to tug at my shirt up. The only time he has seen me without his shirt was the night when I got drunk and tried to seduce him. But I'd say that I'm a better seducer while I'm sober. My womanhood was pulsating in a pleasant rhythm, and I moaned, showing him how much I enjoyed his burning touch. I have to stop showing up like this. Someone suddenly said behind us. I widened my eyes and saw Sophia standing in the opening to the balcony. A deep crimson quickly colored my cheeks and neck. Well, enjoy yourselves while you're young, Sophia said awkwardly and placed two drinks on the small table in front of the couch. Then she walked back into the house. Well, that killed the mood. Antonio groaned and buried his head in my neck, sighing loudly. I chuckled and kissed his cheek. That was very awkward. Two times Sophia has killed the mood. I would be angry if it wasn't her. We just have to continue this tonight, I whispered seductively in his ear. A charming smile curved his lips, and he leaned back to look at me, still with his hands on my waist. Our position was very intimate, and I'm pretty sure not only Sophia can see us from here. I mean, his mansion is guarded like a fucking castle. 
I'll make sure of it, he said and kissed my lips, but not getting too passionate. It was already hard to jump down from the fence and let go of his warm body. Antonio grabbed my hand and handed me one of the drinks Sophia had placed on the table. Just by looking at the short glasses, I judged that it was probably some alcoholic drink. Great, Sophia wants to get me drunk again. I smiled at the memory of our fun night. Still holding my hand, Antonio dragged me down on the couch with him, immediately placing an arm around my shoulder and pulled me close. I enjoyed the closeness and snuggled into his chest, sighing with content. I felt so relaxed by just sitting with his arms around me, staring out on the ocean. Since Antonio's mansion wasn't in the center of Rome, but on the coast, we had the sea as an amazing view. This was probably one of the most romantic things I've done for a long time. I wanted to ask you about Jonathan, about what we should do with his body. Antonio suddenly asked. His question made my stomach clench when I thought about it. Jonathan's betrayal was still raw, and the image of his dead body haunted me at night when I wanted to sleep. But even if I felt hatred towards him, I didn't want to just let his body rot. For the sake of his family, I can be respectful. Jonathan barely spoke of his family to me. But I found out he had a sister that he loved very much. But like me, he didn't have the best relationship with his parents. We should bury him. I don't care where, I answered. Antonio's plans about Jonathan's body might have made me puke. I didn't know what he planned, but I knew he hated traitors. I will handle it. How are you holding up? I'm worried about you, Antonio said and looked down at me. I wanted to open my mouth and spill everything I felt. I wanted to tell him about the nightmares and how he was the only thing keeping me together. But I didn't. I'm better. Still a bit shocked, I guess. But it will pass. I know it will. I said and smiled gently, reaching up to give him a long kiss. Antonio smiled in the kiss and kept my face close to his when he leaned back. He opened his eyes and stared down at me. Yet again, I felt like a goddess in his eyes. I hope I can ease your mind tonight, Antonio said and teased me with a charming smile. I'm sure you will, I teased back. A small sigh left his lips as we stared into each other's eyes. I can say that we are meant to be. I know we are. Speaking of tonight, I need to make some preparations. I'll see you later, he said and gave me a deep kiss. I smiled and nodded. Don't take too long, my king, I said and allowed him to step out of my grasp. Antonio smiled lovingly at me before leaving me alone on the balcony. I sighed and stared out at the ocean again. I considered myself lucky to be with him and unlucky to lose a friend. But Jonathan is but a memory now, and with time, I will get over him. With time, the nightmares will stop, because if I'm going to be queen, I need to be prepared to face death in every way. And now that Jonathan, who was the only thing forcing me to think of my life in America, is dead, I can let go of everything and start over. This romantic dinner will be an exciting start. He's very happy with you, Sophia suddenly said. I turned my head and looked up at her, leaning against the couch. I'm very happy with him as well, I admitted with a fluttering heart. If you ignore the betrayal and plot to kill me, I'd say me and Antonio have had one hell of an exciting adventure. I never imagined myself being romantically involved with the king of the Mafia. You two remind me of when I and Antonio's father fell in love. It still gives me butterflies, Sophia said and smiled at the memory, sitting down next to me. I have never heard how they fell in love, but I know it must be a romantic and exciting tale. I hope you don't mind me and Antonio, you know, being intimate like that, I said and blushed. When she walked out onto the balcony, I was embarrassed. I still am. A mother shouldn't need to see that. But Sophia only chuckled. Not at all. Like I said, 
enjoy yourselves while you're young, she said in a light-hearted tone. Since we're talking about enjoying ourselves, can you help me pick out a dress? Antonio invited me to dinner, I asked and bit my lower lip, looking at her in excitement. Of course, dear, I know just the thing, Sophia said and grabbed my hand, helping me up and dragging me inside the house again. I laughed and followed her upstairs. While Sophia was throwing dresses in my face, I couldn't help but to think of how happy I was here. Sophia is like the mother I never had. And Antonio? Where would I begin? I'm completely and utterly in love with him, and I will show him tonight. Chapter 21 Loving Him The sun had started to set when I walked down the stairs that led directly to the beach. The stairs had been carved out in the mountain. I can't imagine how long that took, but my thoughts were not on architecture. It was on Antonio. I could already see the beautiful scenery he had fixed just for me. The romantic vibes gave me goosebumps. I was really excited for this evening. Sophia almost yelled at me because I couldn't sit still while she did my makeup. Sophia was a master at fashion and makeup. The dress she picked out made me super confident as I slowly walked towards the table. It hugged my body in the right places. Antonio won't be able to resist me. Speaking of Antonio, I saw him pouring champagne in two tall glasses. He wore a pair of dark chino pants and a white dress shirt with the first button open. What a tempter. We were all alone on the long and white beach. Two mountains on each side cut off the beach from the rest of civilization, and Antonio's mansion was the only house in sight. I hope I'm not too early, I chuckled as I got closer. Antonio placed the bottle on the table before turning around to face me. His pale eyes quickly took my whole form in, and he bit his lower lip. You're just in time. He purred and reached out a hand. His voice sent shivers down my spine. The already strong sexual tension was pulsating against my skin. And when our hands touched, I couldn't help but to smile. You look stunning, my queen. I won't be able to keep my eyes off you, he teased. I blushed deeply and smiled. The well-known hunger in his eyes kept on devouring me, no matter how many times I saw it. The utter and complete hunger for me was so overwhelming. But I loved it. I loved to see how he felt for me and I knew that I felt the exact same thing. Luckily, I don't want you to. I almost whispered and stepped closer. Antonio's smile faded a bit as he looked deeply into my eyes. The invisible but incredible connection between us was almost like an electric cable sparkling with energy, connecting us both. It sounded so silly and poetic, but I felt a connection that I had never felt before. We had both gone through hell, and it still wasn't over, but this moment, with just him and me, I cherished. Keep talking like that, and my hands won't be able to stay away from you either, Antonio said and grinned, pulling out a chair to allow me to sit down. I chuckled at his comments and took a seat. Such a gentleman, I laughed as he took a seat right across from me. Antonio wiggled his eyebrows at me, making me laugh even more, and picked up the tall glass full of champagne. To a wonderful evening, he said. I picked up my glass as well, and together we toasted before digging into the delicious food in front of us. This time we didn't have any appetizers. Instead, it was a full-on meal. A green salad, a thick steak along with roots shaped like fries, and red wine sauce. I bet it tastes just as delicious as it looked. I didn't waste any time and dug in. Just like I expected, it was fantastic, and I couldn't complain about the scenery either. The sun was almost gone behind the horizon, and it gave Antonio a burning halo behind him, the sun also casting shadows across his perfect face. The bright and orange sun brought out his pale eyes in some way and I found myself forgetting all about the food and just stared at him. 
I couldn't believe what was right in front of me. I couldn't believe that this man, who calmly ate his food, meant so much to me. Just sitting here with him made me think about how lucky I really was. Sure, we have gone through many horrible things, but it has only brought us together, not pulled us apart. With every passing second with him, I felt myself falling more deeply in love with him. It was indescribable. I had never felt this way for anyone before. I wasn't sure what to do with myself. Antonio didn't notice my stare. And I didn't notice just how long I stared at him. But I just couldn't stop looking at him. My heart fluttered in my chest, and a warm sensation spread through my body. I knew that I loved him. I knew that I would do anything for him. I knew that I wanted to be with him, no matter what the world threw at us. I love you, I said. The words left my mouth before I could stop them, and Antonio snapped his head up and stared at me. My mouth was slightly open as we stared at each other. The surprise was evident in his eyes. He really hadn't expected me to say that. Say it again. He breathed, not believing that I said those three words that he had longed to hear for so long. I, I love you, I repeated, this time with a stronger voice. Suddenly a grin spread across his full lips. The joy shone like a burning sun behind him. His eyes sparkled like it too. Again, he whispered. I love you. I said for a third time. The happiness in him was contagious, and I found myself grinning like he did. Just to say those three words, three very true words, I felt a weight lift from my shoulder. Had I been worried that he didn't feel the same way? Was I worried that he would reject me? I wasn't sure why I felt so relieved to finally tell him. Perhaps because I had known for a long time that I loved him. But knowing and showing it are two completely different things, and I have just shown it. Elena Hell, there isn't one person in this world that I want more than you. I am so insanely in love with you, Antonio said after a short moment of silence. His words made my heart flutter in my chest and my stomach to contract. A shaky breath left my lips. And now that I have you, I plan on keeping you, he continued with confidence. I chuckled and felt so light. It felt like I could fly. I didn't even realize that I was crying until I tasted a salty tear on my lip. It was tears of happiness, of course. After everything that has happened, I still couldn't imagine my life without him. I know that being with him meant I would have to do questionable things. But I don't give a fuck about that. I want him. And I will never stop wanting him. I'm all yours, my king. You just have to come and take me, I said. Just a second after the words left my lips, Antonio was out of his chair. The happiness in his eyes turned into lust. He quickly walked around the table, grabbed my arms and pulled me up into his chest. His breathing was rapid because of the lust I saw in his eyes. I also felt my heart slowly speed up. It made my legs tremble when I knew what was going to come. This time, there will be no one to disturb us. Antonio captured my lips and pulled me so close that I felt like I couldn't breathe without him. His lips sent thousands of lightning bolts through my body. It made my skin buzz with excitement. I moved my arms up across his arms and around his neck, where I tried to pull him even closer. I didn't want to spend a second without him. Antonio had become my life support. I wanted him and no one else. And I wanted him now. While our lips danced in a heated rhythm, Antonio's hands started to roam my buzzing body. His hands left a trail of fire as he started to massage my waist in a hard grip. It hurt a bit, but I ignored the pain and moaned into his lips. The silent moan was enough to break the control he had. His hands grabbed my ass roughly, 
and lifted me up like I weighed nothing. Antonio must have some fixation with lifting me off the ground. I gasped into his lips and encircled his waist with my bare legs. His strong hands immediately found my bare skin, and the contact made me gasp again, but this time of lust. I was already pulsating further down. His touch and burning kisses had made me incredibly horny. Never in my life have I ever wanted anyone like I wanted Antonio at this moment. Say it again. Tell me you love me. Antonio breathed against my lips. For a second I forgot about his request when he started to walk. I wasn't sure where he would take me, but I realized he must be carrying me towards the house. There was no other place with a bed. Knowing that I would finally have him made me smile against his lips and kiss them. But Antonio leaned back. Please, say it again. He pleaded and stared into my eyes. He had just reached the stairs. I love you. I love you so much, Antonio. I whispered and bit my lower lip. My eyes traveled between his pale eyes and full lips. His lips were slightly swollen after our heated makeout session, but it only made them more kissable. My body and soul was hungry for him. I wanted him so badly. I have waited so long to hear you say that. He breathed and smiled. He was still carrying me without faltering, up the stairs to the mansion. It was very dark, and at some point I feared he would trip. But he never dropped me, and even if he did, I doubt I would have fallen since I was holding him like a child that clung to her favorite teddy bear. Then I'll say it again. I love you, Antonio Gennaro, my king. I said and captured his bottom lips between my teeth, teasing him. He growled and kissed me fiercely again. His mouth was devouring mine. I started to grind against him, which made him gasp and stop for a second. That pleasure that flashed in his eyes made me very aroused, so I did it again. Antonio bit his lower lip and closed his eyes, probably trying to think straight. But I didn't want him to think straight. I wanted to continue to see his face twist in pleasure because of me. I started to slowly grind against him, and he started to slowly pant in pleasure. You make me so crazy. He managed to breathe out. Then he managed to stop my grinding, to my big disappointment, and walked the last steps. He dropped me carefully to the ground, grabbed my hand, and dragged me inside. I giggled like a little girl, and eagerly followed him. With every step I took, the faster my womanhood pulsated. My mind started to imagine all the things he and I would do together. But I was sure that I was going to drown him in pleasure. This night I will not waste. Tonight I will open myself up to him completely. Antonio opened the door and we walked into our bedroom. He closed the door behind us, and immediately he was on me again. I moaned and grabbed his shirt to have him closer to me. The room was dark, but I still saw enough of him to make me go absolutely crazy. Just looking at him made me ache with lust. Come here, I whispered and started to unbutton his shirt. He smiled against my lips and reached down to remove the belt around his waist. I shuddered at the thought of finally seeing him naked. We walked backwards. And my, and my legs hit the edge of the bed, and together we fell on the bed. Antonio's hands immediately found my body and started to caress my exposed skin. His hands touched me in places that made me gasp and moan. His lips found my neck, and he kissed and carefully bit my sensitive skin. I had to stop myself from shouting out in pleasure. My hands continued to unbutton his shirt, and when I finally pulled it off, a wave of arousing energy traveled down to my womanhood. My trembling hands caressed his well-built chest. I moaned when I felt his skin under my palms. The sensation of having him almost naked made me slightly dizzy. Antonio pulled down the straps of my dress, exposing my shoulders, and licked his way down to my collarbone. I wanted him to pull my dress even lower. I wanted to take it off. Fuck. 
how badly I wanted to be naked with him. I licked my lower lip and grabbed his neck, dragging him up and kissing his lips. Antonio moaned, a sound that made me shiver. My queen, I'm going to worship you tonight. Antonio whispered in my ear. I silently exploded beneath him, feeling every fiber begging for him to touch me and take me. His promise of worshipping me sounded very tempting. And when he pulled my dress even further down, exposing my breasts, I knew he would do more than just fulfill his promise. Chapter 22 Making Love My breath hitched in my throat when I felt Antonio's lips carefully ghost over one of my nipples. They were already rock hard, eager for stimulation. The excitement traveled down to my womanhood and made me clench my thighs to enhance the orgasmic energy. It had been so long since I last touched or was touched by someone else. And it felt so right just knowing it was Antonio. Without warning, Antonio captured my left nipple in between his lips, carefully biting down. The sudden attack made me gasp and throw my head back. I was so sensitive to his touch. My whole body was buzzing and my womanhood pulsating. One of Antonio's hands traveled down to my bare legs and he grabbed my thigh and bent it up to embrace his waist. With his other hand, he lifted up my lower back, making me bare my neck and chest to him. A low growl left Antonio's lips and his tongue swirled around my nipple, making me moan out loud. Let me hear you, he whispered against my skin. The encouragement made me open my mouth and allow every sound to echo in our bedroom. It was so strange that he turned me into a moaning mess by just stimulating my nipples and nothing more. With the other guys, I never found it so entertaining. But with Antonio, his touch alone made me so crazy. And when his lips left my nipple... He leaned up and captured my lips in a passionate kiss that made me dizzy. I let my hands reach down and caress his perfect chest. His warm skin felt like satin. Antonio's wonderful lips hastily left mine, and instead he latched them onto the sensitive skin on my neck. A gasp left my lips, and I moaned directly after. His magical lips kissed and carefully bit my skin, probably leaving a mark. The lust overwhelmed me, and one of my hands traveled down to cup his member. It was rock hard because of me. A surprised moan left Antonio's lips, and he leaned back to look at me with half-open eyes. Even in the dark, they gleamed like pale diamonds. See what you do to me, he whispered breathlessly. What do I do to him? Can he imagine what he does to me? I was already soaked in my panties. I was so eager to have him inside me. Please, I want you, I whispered back. The lust flared up like a fire in his eyes. I won't be able to keep my hands off you after this night, he said with a lusting smile. Then don't, I said and bit my lower lip. Antonio's answer was to lean back and pull the dress over my head. Now I only had panties on. I was almost naked in front of his pale eyes, and I loved the thrill it sent down my spine. Antonio eyed me with lust and growled like a predator. His arousing gaze made me incredibly horny. You're wearing too much, I breathed and reached down to unbutton his pants. My hands were trembling with anticipation. I have wanted this for so long. I know Antonio has as well. My eager hands took a little while to unbutton his pants, but Antonio enjoyed me undressing him, because then he could keep looking at me biting my lower lip. That gesture turned him on very much. Once his pants were unbuttoned, Antonio quickly leaned back and left the bed to stand on the floor. I raised an eyebrow and lifted myself up on my elbows to see what he was doing. My body felt disappointed when he left me bare in the bed, with a pulsating womanhood. With his soft hands, he pulled down his pants and kicked them off, leaving him in only underwear. And for the first time, I saw him in nothing but his underwear. 
His skin had a certain glow in the dark, and it looked so incredibly soft and my fingers started to tingle. I wanted to touch him, to fill his skin against mine. A gasp left my lips when he slowly pulled down his underwear, showing a full erect member. I must say, he was big, bigger than anyone I've been with. But the sight of him naked sent my heart into a beating frenzy. Never in life had I been so aroused as I was in this moment. My legs were trembling like my hands because of the dirty images in my head. I simply couldn't wait for him to fuck me hard. See what you do to me? He breathed and put his hands down on the bed, gazing at me like the predator he was. I couldn't say anything. My voice just vanished. A smile played on his lips, and his hands slowly followed the satin sheets and met my bare feet. The contact sent a shiver throughout my whole body, and a moan left my lips. His touch was so like electricity. Slowly, slower than I wanted, his hands traveled from my feet and followed the curves of my calves. My eyes were wide and my lower lips started to hurt from how hard I was biting down on it. Antonio's naked form, coming closer and closer to me, almost sent me over the edge right away. When his big hands reached my knees, he grabbed my legs and separated them. A rush of excitement made the pulsating in my womanhood pulsate even faster. I'd say that you're wearing too much, he said and sat up and on his heels. He then leaned forward and grabbed the seam of my black lace panties. Having his hands so close to my aching center made me moan. Antonio only smiled and dragged my panties down my leg, the fabric caressing my skin. Once they were off, he spread my legs wide open and gazed at my womanhood. Lust filled his eyes. I didn't feel uncomfortable or self-conscious as he stared at me. I just felt extremely aroused. So ready for me, he growled in his throat. And with no warning, he grabbed my thighs and attacked my womanhood with his lips. I felt myself explode from the pleasure. His tongue swirled around my clit making my thighs twitch. The incredible stimulation turned me into a moaning mess. I couldn't keep my mouth shut as his tongue worked skillfully on my clit. My moans filled the silent room. This was so much more pleasure than him kissing my nipples. My mind was running crazy, and yet I could only think about what he was doing between my legs. One of my hands tangled itself into his hair, pushing his face closer to my womanhood. I craved the pleasure he gave me. It was so, so good. There were no words on how I felt. With each swirl of his tongue, I felt myself coming closer and closer to my orgasm. My body started to twitch and build up a hot energy, ready to be released and send me into a few seconds of extreme relief. I'm so close, I whispered, sounding completely out of breath. When those words left my lips, Antonio immediately leaned back. A frustrated yell left my lips and I stared at him with venomous eyes, but Antonio only licked his lips, smiling as he looked at me. If you're going to come, I want to be inside you, he said simply. I was frustrated by not getting the release I wanted, but his words made me aroused all over again. Then fuck me, my king. I said seductively. Antonio widens his eyes, lust filling them. I playfully bit my lower lip. Antonio quickly left the bed and walked over to his nightstand, opening a drawer and picking up a condom packet. He then opened it and put the condom on while walking back to me. I couldn't wait. I truly couldn't wait. Once again, Antonio was over me. But this time, he didn't take it slow. He leaned down and kissed me fiercely, distracting me from the movement of his hips. And while he did that, I suddenly felt his tip penetrate me. A gasp left my lips and I leaned back to look at him. At first, I thought he was going to tease me. But when he saw my face, he didn't waste any more time and thrust it into me, completely filling me. My body wasn't ready. 
Not that it hurt. It just wasn't ready for the pleasure overwhelming me. Antonio stretched me so magically and filled me so fully that my mind almost broke down. The feeling was like no other. Antonio captured my lips again and started to thrust, the rhythm and feeling making it hard for me to shut up and kiss him. Elena, he moaned against my lips. My name sounded so exotic. I loved hearing him say it with his Italian accent. My hands went from my sides to around his shoulders, and I pulled him closer to me. There were so many things running around in my head, but they all circulated around Antonio and what was happening between us. We both moaned and clung to each other, and I felt with every wonderful thrust how my orgasm came closer and closer. Would he stop this time? I wasn't sure, but I knew that I craved having him take me over the edge. Don't stop, I breathed. Antonio obliged my request and kept making me moan. So close, so close. And then I exploded. A warm feeling washed over me, sending me into a frenzy of moans. The muscles in my womanhood contracted in a pleasing rhythm. Tiredness followed suit, and I felt completely happy. But Antonio wasn't done. Suddenly he pulled out of me, flipped me over to my stomach, and pulled me up on my fours, and then he buried himself deeply again. I was still coming down from my high place, and the unexpected penetration made me scream out. This time Antonio was more ruthless. He pounded into me so hard that it hurt, but I loved the feeling of him hitting spots that made me want to orgasm again. I've never come twice during an intercourse, but Antonio was surely going to make me come again with his fantastic thrusts. A hand traveled into my hair and pulled my head back. His fingers were painfully holding my hair, but I realized I loved the pain mixed with pleasure. It made it all so much more exciting. And now that he wasn't kissing me and drowning my moans, I almost screamed as he pounded into me. I was sure someone could hear us, but I didn't care. Who do you belong to? He suddenly said. You! I answered quickly. Say it again, he breathed. You, my king! I screamed out. Antonio was really dominant in bed, just like he was all the time, but that only turned me on so much. I loved how he took control and fucked me recklessly. All the other guys were nothing compared to Antonio in every aspect. Come here, he said and grabbed my arm, pulling me up against his chest. Our bodies collided. I felt wonderful with him pressed against my back, his member still deep inside of me. Antonio's hands grabbed my waist and pushed me down while his hips thrusted up. This was a new position for me, but I loved it. His member curved in a way that made him hit my G-spot with every thrust. The stimulation almost made me go crazy. Antonio breathed into my air and then he pressed his lips against my neck. The stubble on his cheeks tickled my skin in a very pleasant way. My neck was so sensitive, and he knew it. Oh, Elena, my queen! Antonio breathed into my air. I moaned in response and turned my head to look at him. His eyes were hooded and gleaming with lust for me. Kiss me, I begged. Antonio happily obliged and kissed me. The kiss was deep but sloppy. Not that I cared. I loved to kiss his tasteful lips while his member brought me closer and closer to the edge. And with one final thrust, I had to stop our kiss to scream out in pleasure. Antonio came shortly after and bit down on my neck, moaning in my ear. A tiredness overcame us both, and I had to lean forward on my hands to stop myself from falling. Antonio sighed and pulled out of me, taken off the condom. His hands quickly found my form, and with his help, we laid down next to each other. Antonio pulled me close so that I was laying on his chest, tired and satisfied. I was aching in a very pleasuring way. That was amazing, I whispered and looked up at him. 
Antonio smiled and kissed my forehead. You're amazing. You are amazing, he said, making me chuckle and look down again. I felt so content when I laid in his arms, but soon I felt my eyes growing heavy. I love you, Antonio mumbled into my hair. I closed my eyes and smiled, his love making me warm and fuzzy inside. I love you too, my king, I sighed, letting the tiredness take me into a deep sleep. Chapter 23 Alexandra Antonio's POV I heard her slow and calm breaths that confirmed my suspicion that she had fallen asleep. Her petite head rested safely on my chest, and I was content, just holding her in my arms. I loved her. I really did. We haven't known each other for that long, but everything that has happened has only brought us closer together. Now I couldn't picture my life without her. What would happen after Alexandra had been dealt with? My guards told me Caleb was finally breaking and telling us important facts about the whole plot. Apparently, he and Alexandra had been planning this for years. I'm glad it failed. And Elena, entering my life was completely unexpected for them. I feel so guilty for putting her through all this. But she stayed strongly by my side. I couldn't imagine a better queen. She's perfect for the role even if making the hard decisions will be difficult for her. I sighed and enjoyed the wonderful aftertaste of my orgasm. It was still pulling slightly at my muscles. Elena had felt so incredible, tight and so right. Alexandra was nothing compared to her. The way her body quivered under my hands, panting breaths and moans. I loved her. I loved every part of her. I would do anything for her. The strong emotions I felt for her overwhelmed me in the beginning, especially when she got shot and was kidnapped. Just thinking about losing her. No, I shouldn't be thinking that now that I have her asleep in my arms. I found her quite adorable when she sleeps. She has a habit of talking. During that one night when she got drunk with my mother, she talked very much. Most of it was gibberish, but some things caught me off guard. Like when she said she had a strange affections for unicorns. Elena could be so silly at times, but I loved that about her. She brought out a side of me I never thought possible. Not after Alexandra. How did Elena enchant me in such a way? Nevertheless, I enjoyed being enchanted by her. Suddenly, a soft knock interrupted my deep thoughts. What now? I groaned in frustration and looked down at my Elena, deeply asleep. In her vivid dreams, she squinted her eyes and bit her lip. Fuck, she was already arousing me again. But I can make my love to her how many times I want now, and I tend to do just that. The thought of making love to her made me smile as I carefully slipped out of her weak embrace. Before opening the bedroom door, I pulled on some casual pants and a t-shirt. Whoever is disturbing me must have a very good reason for it. When I opened the door and saw Reynold, one of my most trusted bodyguards, I knew it was important. Yes, I said, trying not to sound too irritated. Reynold shifted uncomfortably on his two big feet. Miss Alexandra is here, sir, Reynold said in a low tone. He spoke in such a hushed voice that he must have known Elena was with me. Were we that loud? But it wasn't Elena's high mounds that disturbed me. It was Alexandra and her being here. I didn't think she'd come back after she kidnapped Elena, my beautiful Elena. Show her to the balcony, I ordered in a stiff voice. Reynold nodded and left me alone in the doorway. I was pissed off and calm at the same time. I was angry because she dared show her face in my house, 
but I felt calm about it since I now didn't need to find her myself. I don't intend to let her get away, not after what she did. I sighed and looked at Elena, gloomy that I had to leave her. I would gladly spend the night just watching her. She's truly a miracle. My miracle. Alexandra will never rip her away from me. The door closed behind me and I started to find my way to the balcony. Alexandra is brave, stupid, but brave for showing her face here. If I weren't in the right mood, I would have ordered her dead. Luckily for her, Elena has made me extremely satisfied tonight. Therefore, I'm feeling a tad generous. Giving her the chance to talk is more than enough. Alexandra and Reynold were already on the balcony when I walked out onto it. I nodded to Reynold, his cue to leave, and he did so quickly. Alexandra was standing close to the balcony edge, wearing a tight dress with her hair down. Before Elena, I would have felt something for her. Lust, perhaps, but now I felt nothing. I only wanted to throw her off the balcony. Antonio, my love she said in a soft voice and gave me a big smile. I scuffed. If she thinks she can play those cards, I have misjudged her intelligence. Don't call me that. I don't love you anymore, Alexandra. I love Elena, I said, being straightforward. The response threw her off guard, and the smile faded from her lips. Good. Now she won't play the whole I love you facade. I know she had other intentions than loving me. So I've seen. You made her queen, Alexandra said, trying to keep a steady voice. Technically, Elena made herself queen because of Jonathan, something that still ate at me, especially since Jonathan turned out to be a traitor. I would never forgive myself for letting my guard down around him. It was an expensive mistake. What do you want, Alexandra? I told you not to come here anymore. I warned you, I said harshly. I thought she got the idea that she isn't welcome here anymore. I did endure her presence shortly before the ball. While I was still searching for the traitor, Alexandra said she wanted to make amends, but I saw right through her. The only thing Alexandra wants is the throne, which is mine and only mine. You haven't told her, have you, about my visits while she was still recovering and living in this mansion, Alexandra said and tilted her head, amused by the idea of Elena in the dark. My eyes shot lightning at her. Elena is none of her damn business. Well, maybe you should. Wouldn't want her to find out by herself, she said, grinning at me. I so wanted to give her a harsh push over the balcony edge she was leaning on. I knew exactly what her hidden message was. If I don't tell Elena, she will. What do you want? I repeated, ignoring her former sentence. The smile played on her lips. I just don't understand. Why her? I would have done anything for you, she said, this time with a more stiff smile. Ah. Her facade was breaking. I knew she would break eventually. I know just how jealous she can be. Anything for me? Don't talk nonsense, I scuffed. Anger flared up in my eyes. Nonsense? I loved you more than anyone, she exclaimed, stepping closer to me. Loved me? You killed my father. Is that love? I asked her in a low voice. My question made her so surprised that she nearly fell. She thinks I don't know about her betrayal, but I do. How? She breathed, beaten at her own sick game. When I heard the news, I knew it was you. Your lust for becoming queen is sickening, I said, staring at her, watching for her reaction. Alexandra bit her lips in frustration and her eyes looked at everything but my eyes. He came between us. He didn't approve of our relationship, she said, trying to avoid the blame. Her attempt made me want to laugh at her. And that makes it right? 
You killed my father for power, nothing more. I almost screamed at her. The anger and sorrow I have felt after my father's death has been bottled up. But now when I was looking at his killer, it all came out again. How could I not be angry at her? She took something I loved. And now she has tried to take something else I love. But I won't let her. I will never let her manipulate her way to the throne again. I will never make that mistake again. No, I loved you. I really did. I still do. Please, Antonio. She gasped and started to cry. Some years ago, I would have felt pity for her. Perhaps I even would have comforted her. But I know her tricks now. I know her games and methods of manipulating me. Don't start with me. I scuffed and crossed my arms across my chest. Alexandra bit her lip in frustration again, and the tears stopped flowing. See? I knew it was all a trick. And just like switching a power switch, a smile curved her lips, and she dried the tears away. Oh, Antonio, I see you have grown more resistant over the years, smarter, and all that. But there's one thing you still are, she said, and leaned forward on her heels looking at me like the lunatic she was. The insanity and lust for power burning in her eyes made me worried. I still didn't know exactly what she could do, or what she had planned. Caleb hasn't cracked completely yet, and since she wasn't trying to rescue him, she must have formed a new plan. Is Caleb useless? And that is easily distracted. I mean, Elena is all alone. Perhaps someone slipped in and slit her throat, she said, almost whispered, and stared at me with murder in her eyes. My eyes widened and I immediately turned around, looking up to the window at our shared bedroom. It was still dark, but that didn't stop the panic in my chest. I forgot about Alexandra behind me. I forgot about killing her and having my revenge. There was only one thing in my mind. Elena. The image of her laying on the bed, blood oozing out from her throat, made my heart clench in my chest. No, I whispered before bolting towards the balcony door, completely forgetting about Alexandra. I didn't care if she escaped. All I cared about was Elena. Why did I leave her alone? Renault, don't let Alexandra get away, I screamed at him, not checking if he heard. My mind was focused on Elena and only her. With every step I took, the agony grew in my chest. What if Alexandra had spoken the truth? What if I opened the door and found her dead in my bed, still naked after our night together? Tears burned in my eyes when I skipped up the stairs, not caring to bring any security with me. If anyone is in the room besides Elena, I will rip them apart with my bare hands. The closer I got to the door, the more desperate I became. The distance from the balcony and our bedroom isn't long, but it felt like an eternity when my hands found the doorknob to our bedroom. I ripped the door open and prepared myself for finding my beloved Elena drenched in her own blood. And there she was, laying on her stomach, faced away, and not moving at all. So many agonizing feelings overwhelmed me at once. I realized that I was too late, she didn't move on the bed. My whole world shattered around me. I felt empty inside, like someone had ripped away all of my organs and happy emotions. Tears flowed down my cheeks and my knees started to shake. I couldn't stand all the guilt punching at my stomach and the mind-breaking pain that came with it. No, it couldn't be. Not her. Not her. Elena! I cried out in sorrow and fell to my knees not daring to look at her dead body. I had felled her. I let her die. The agony was already eating me alive. Just when I had her, I lost her. Why? Why? Antonio? A soft voice suddenly said. Her voice, sounding like an angel, made me look up, and there she was. Her eyes were still hooded after sleeping, but she had turned around and was laying on her back, leaning on her elbows, 
as she looked confused at me. Relief washed over me like a tsunami when I saw her blink in confusion. Alexandra had lied. It was all a trick. And for the first time in my life, I was so glad it was one of her nasty tricks. I laughed and cried, but this time the tears were of relief. I thought I had lost her. I thought that Alexandra had won and taken her from me. Oh, Elena, I sobbed and rose to my feet, then ran towards the bed, throwing myself on top of her. She squealed in surprise when my whole body pinned her to the bed. Antonio, what are you doing? She breathed. I ignored her and leaned forward, placing kisses all over her beautiful face. Elena was so confused, but my kisses made her giggle a bit, and my heart melted when I felt her react beneath me. Her perfect body sent warmth through the sheets, and I loved it. I kissed her lips and grabbed her hips to pull her closer to me. She answered the kiss, but I felt the hesitation behind it. I know she must be super confused, but I didn't care about that at the moment and just relished in knowing she was safe and holding her close. My beautiful, perfect, and loving Elena was safe. Chapter 24 Hurt When Antonio threw himself on me and started to kiss me all over my face, I couldn't help but to giggle. But I was confused as well. No amount of kisses could change that. I woke up and found the bed empty, but I didn't think too much about it since Antonio had left in the middle of the night before. I just went back to sleep, knowing he would come back. But when he shouted my name, in complete agony, I woke up and found him kneeling on the floor. I had no idea what made him so broken. And when I said his name, he lit up like the sun and started to cry. Had something happened while I was away? Antonio couldn't have left the mansion since he was wearing a very casual outfit. Then what could frighten him so much? Honey, what? I said between his wet kisses, but he captured my lips in a desperate kiss and silenced me. But I quickly pushed him back. Is he trying to distract me or something? He needs to tell me what the hell is going on. I have never seen Antonio cry before. His pale eyes met mine, and the tears that wetted down his cheeks made me worry. What happened? Alexandra, he whispered, not saying anything more. Alexandra, has he found her? My eyes widened and I stared up at him, at a complete loss. If he has found her, then we can finish this and start living our lives together. But if he found her, why is he crying? Did she do something? What are you talking about? Have you found her? And why are you crying? I asked not able to hold back my questions. Antonio must tell me. We said not to keep any secrets. We're in this together, and Alexandra is something that concerns me as well. She tried to kill me, and it made me kill Jonathan. Thinking about Jonathan still sent an ice-cold dagger through my heart. She was here. I thought she... He said, but stopped, drawing in a long breath and closing his eyes. Wait a second. Alexandra was here, at the mansion? My jaw dropped as I stared at him. Why the hell was she here? How did she even get in? I can't go a meter without seeing a bodyguard around every corner. There is really no privacy, except for our bedroom. Did she sneak in? That's very unlikely. Why not send someone instead? How did she get in? I asked, clearly panicked about the situation. If Alexandra can penetrate our defense, who else can? What will stop her from sending an army of mercenaries and kill us? That's exactly what she wants, to kill us both and take the throne. But when Antonio opened his eyes and looked down at me, I saw guilt. Guilt? Why is he looking guilty? Oh no, what happened? Did he do something? but him doing something that risked my safety is unlikely as well. Antonio has proven several times over and over how careful he is with me. I can't even go outside without a bodyguard. 
not that I blame him. The last time he left me unprotected, I was kidnapped and nearly raped. I mentally shuddered at that memory. I still can't look at Caleb. I let her in. He said slowly, struggling with saying the words. Ice. I felt ice seeping through me, pumping through my veins and turning my comfortable warm body into a mountain of ice. He let her in? No, that can't. Why would he? After everything that she's done, he wouldn't just let her in. He knows just how dangerous she is. But I saw the truth in Antonio's eyes, and my jaw dropped. The ice turned into Antarctica, and then into a volcano of rage. You did what? I screamed. Antonio flinched at my sudden anger and slowly leaned back. And if he hadn't, I might have hit him in the face with my forehead. The anger and betrayal rushing through me made me shake like I was standing in the snow. All I wanted to do was to get away from him. For the first time, I was really, really angry at him. I was even angrier than when he sent for Jonathan, but in reality, it was all a setup. My mind couldn't fully believe what he was saying. Alexandra killed his father for power, turned Jonathan, my best friend, against me, kidnapped me, left me alone with Caleb, who almost raped me, threatened to kill me, forced Jonathan to try and kill me, and the only thing she wants is the throne. And he lets her in? Into our house? Into a house I considered my home? No, only a madman would do that. What if she acted as a distraction, and in reality sent someone up to kill me? I know she wants nothing more than to kill me. It would break Antonio. Perhaps that's why he was so upset. Did she trick him? What the hell could he expect from someone like her? I threw myself off the bed, not caring that I was fully naked, and walked straight over to my wardrobe. It was a giant walk-in closet filled with hundreds of clothing items. Antonio had bought them all for me. The closet was any girl's dream. But at that moment, I didn't care for all the expensive brands of clothing hanging in front of me. Instead, I quickly pulled on a pair of white lace panties, not caring what they looked like, and put on the first dress I could reach. It was a white casual dress, perfect for the still warm weather outside. Then I grabbed a pair of black heels and put them on while walking out of the closet. Antonio was standing in front of the bed, staring at me, with eyes wide of terror and guilt. Perhaps he was starting to realize just what he had done. Perhaps now he was understanding just what Alexandra is capable of. I understood from the moment I met her what she could do. Has he not? She aimed a gun at me. She forced Jonathan to try and kill me. If those soldiers hadn't interrupted us in that small room in the warehouse... I would be dead by now. But Jonathan is the one who's dead, not me. And it's all because of her. I felt so betrayed. How could he let her in? What did they do? Talk? And if they did, what about? What could they possibly discuss? Are they doing something behind my back? Plotting something? How am I supposed to trust anything he says? This isn't just about me, Jonathan, and Alexandra anymore. It's about everything he has built and about the people he cares about. If Alexandra takes the throne, Sophia will be killed, and surely my mother as well. Elena, I'm so sorry. I... Antonio said, but no sensible words came out. I was so angry at him, so, so angry. The anger mixed with the feeling of betrayal and made me furious. How many times? I growled and stared at him with narrowed eyes, both of them burning with anger. As I was pulling on the black hills, Antonio stayed silent, not knowing what to say. If he's hesitant, I'm sure I won't like the answer. But he cannot have met her any time before, right? Not even before we found out she was out for my blood. Five. He answered quietly. All the joy and relief from before completely washed away. The answer hit me like a wrecking ball. 
I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting him to say that. He has met his murderous ex behind my back five times. I couldn't believe it. Why? Tell me why, I almost screamed. My fists were clenched and trembled. I felt so incredibly betrayed. I thought I could trust him. How could he keep this from me? I suspected her and wanted to figure her out. But then she just continued to come back. Antonio mumbled. That is such a terrible excuse. She just continued to come back? Why didn't you put a spy on her then? Why didn't you tell her to stop coming around? Do you know what this sounds like? I snared. What if he still has feelings for her? No, that's impossible. She killed his father. How can he possibly love her after that betrayal? Antonio didn't say anything and kept staring at me. He was finally understanding exactly what he had done, and he had no explanation for his actions. She killed your father, Antonio. How couldn't that alone make you hate her? I whispered, my voice lower, but not any softer than before. Antonio's pale eyes became sad, and his mouth opened and closed, then opened again. Is he going to say anything? Has he nothing as defense? I thought we wouldn't keep secrets from each other. I thought I could trust you. I want to build something with you. And then you let our worst enemy into our home? I whispered again, telling him exactly what was on my mind. Perhaps he still has feelings for her. I have no idea how strongly he loved her before his father's death. Maybe their love was so strong that he still cannot let her go, even after everything she's done. And if he accepts her presence in our home, what does it mean to him? And if he accepts her presence in our home, what does it mean to him? I thought you loved me, I said quietly, and this time it was sadness that overwhelmed me. The sorrow made my throat hurt when I tried to keep my tears from falling. But it was very difficult. Antonio's eyes widened suddenly. I love you, Elena. Please don't believe anything else. I want to create a life with you. I love you more than anything. He exclaimed and took a step closer to me. I know it's stupid to doubt his love for me, for I know he loves me very much. But could he also love her in some weird and dark way? I don't know. I can't read his mind or understand why he let her come here. I believe you, I do. But this, meeting her behind my back for five times? She tried to kill me, Antonio. She pointed a gun at my face and threatened to end my life. She turned my best friend against me, the only person in my whole life who knew everything about me and forced me to kill him. She allowed Caleb to be alone with me, and he almost raped me. And then you let her in our house? The one who killed your father? I exclaimed back. I was angry again, and it mixed with my sorrow. I wanted to sink through the ground and ignore everything around me. I wanted this day to start over, and then I wouldn't have to let him leave the bed. I would have gone looking for him. I would have done anything to avoid this moment. This betrayal, this heartache, it's destroying me. I left my life behind for him. I'm aware that Antonio didn't fully understand what her visits meant, or that she was out for the throne, but that still doesn't make it right. Antonio knows Alexandra better than me. He knew her before she killed his father. Hell, he loved her but I've only seen this murderous and insane side of her. Maybe that makes my perspective quite narrow. But it still doesn't make it right. Sophia even hated Alexandra before the kidnapping and death of Jonathan. Antonio stared at me again, and I saw new tears fall. Was he as hurt as me? Impossible. The heart-wrenching feeling surging through me made me want to close my eyes and forget everything. His silence frustrated me. I expected him to at least have a valid explanation. But he had nothing. The man I loved betrayed me. I shook my head and headed for the bedroom door, 
leaving the room and Antonio behind. But I wasn't alone for long. Antonio ran after me. Elena, please, I understand. I really do. I was an idiot, a complete idiot, Antonio said desperately behind me. I ignored his words and turned to the first bodyguard I saw. They were up all day and night guarding us. You, I said harshly, not caring to hide my anger. The bodyguard looked down at me, his eyes becoming uncertain when he saw my anger and Antonio's heartbroken expression. Yes, my queen. He answered quickly, not sure who to look at. Antonio stayed silent behind me, but I felt his eyes on my back. Pack a big bag for me immediately, I said just as harshly as before. I could hear Antonio draw a quick breath behind me. Since I had the same authority as Antonio, the bodyguard had to obey my every wish. Right away, my queen he said and slightly bowed before heading to the bedroom. Are you leaving? Antonio breathed behind me, out of breath like he had run several miles. I ignored him again and headed down the stairs, down to the giant entry hall. Elena, he exclaimed and ran after me. You, get me a car at this very moment and prepare the jet, I said to another bodyguard who guarded the entry door. Just like the last bodyguard, he was surprised and became uncertain when he saw my evident anger. They had only seen me happy and with a beaming smile on my lips. This was a completely new side of me. Elena, talk to me. I know that I screwed up. But what are you doing? Antonio hissed and suddenly grabbed my arm. His grip was harsh and it hurt, but I ignored the pain and turned towards him. The bodyguard by the entry door leaves us alone to fix everything I ordered him to fix. If you want Alexandra here so badly, I can leave you two alone. I hissed and ripped my arm out of his grip. Antonio was completely shocked and stared helplessly at me. No, no, don't do this. I promise I'll fix this. Don't leave, Elena, please. He said and dragged his hands through his dark hair. I could see how frustrated he was, and heartbroken as well. It hurt to see him so hurt, but it was nothing compared to what I felt. I love you. I would do anything for you. Tell me what I can do and I'll do it, he almost whispered. He started to panic, realizing that I was going to leave him. Anything? I asked in a hushed voice. Hope lit like a candle in his eyes by my word, and he nodded eagerly. Go back in fucking time and don't see her. I hissed, and all hope in his eyes drained. No words can make me stay, not after this. My queen, we are ready, a third bodyguard said and opened the front door for me. He wasn't as unsure as the other guards, but he was confused. I don't blame him. It's not often you see Antonio so destroyed. I turned my heels and walked with strict steps towards the front door. Don't leave. You can't leave, Antonio exclaimed behind me. I stopped suddenly at the doorstep and slowly, very slowly, turned my head and watched him. I love him so fucking much, but apparently he values Alexandra and their fucked up relationship more. Watch me, I answered shortly. All air left Antonio's lungs, and he fell to his knees on the cold floor. I ignored his collapse and turned my head forward again, the bodyguard closing the door behind me. Chapter 25 Leaving His hands were roaming over my skin. He was breathing heavily in my air. His lips were whispering loving words in my ear. His body was pressing me down on the bed. Elena Hill, there isn't one person in this world that I want more than you. I am so insanely in love with you. My queen? A soft voice woke me up from my vivid dream. It was more of a memory than a dream, and the memory made it clench in my stomach. 
Why did I remember the wonderful things about him, and not the things I just lived through? That horrible and betraying thing he just did to me, meeting Alexandra behind my back. Was it because the good things were more important than the bad ones? I know that's how you build a relationship, but could I look away from this? Whatever I decided was not important now. The important thing is that I'm leaving. I'm leaving him behind. But for how long was another question for me to answer later. The one who had awoken me from my dream was the bodyguard who had driven me to the airport. He had turned in his seat and was now looking at me with eyes as soft as his voice. Why the sudden softness? He wasn't like that before. None of them were. But then I felt a wetness on my cheeks, and I realized that I had been crying in my sleep. Fuck. I quickly dried my cheeks, knowing very well that I hadn't removed my makeup and was probably looking like a panda. But the bodyguard took no notice of my appearance at all, something I wordlessly thanked him for. Perhaps I can wash away my makeup on the plane. I remember it to be very luxurious, almost like a small apartment. The plane is ready to leave. Just say the word, my queen, said the bodyguard. Suddenly I hesitated at the thought of leaving. Was it the right move? Could I be safer without him? Could I stand to look at him? I had given him chances of explaining himself before I left, and yet he couldn't. What else could I do but leave? Will you come with me? I asked, my voice a bit hoarse after sleeping. My voice also sounded feeble like I hadn't said a word in several years. But the bodyguard took no notice of that, either. If that is what you wish, my queen, he explained softly. Wow, he's really loyal. I nodded at him, and he gave me a short nod back. I would feel a lot safer with a bodyguard with me. I'm sure Alexandra won't stop hunting me just because I'm not in Italy anymore. Her goons, or more Jonathan's goons, have attacked me in America before. And there's nothing stopping her from doing it again. But as I thought of Alexandra and the threat I could be facing by leaving Antonio, I realized that I simply didn't care. I was too heartbroken, too sad, and too betrayed to even think about myself. What I wanted was to leave. It was almost an impulse. I just wanted to get away. I want to go now, I said and opened the black car door. The bodyguard quickly left his seat behind the wheel and held the door for me. I still wasn't used to being treated in this way. At the mansion, the bodyguards had just guarded me. No other person had seen to my needs or treated me like a royalty. I admitted, feeling very guilty, that I quite liked to be treated like this, perhaps because of how poorly my mother treated me. Holy hell, why am I thinking about my mother of all things? She has nothing to do with this. I shook my mother out of my head and walked next to the bodyguard, leading me to the prepared place. The engines were spinning softly, and the door to the plane stood open, forming a narrow staircase. A formally dressed woman was waiting for us at the entrance, smiling kindly at me. She was very young and very pretty as well but I ignored her good looks and my tired one and stared at a wall as the door closed behind me. My queen, we are ready to leave whenever you wish. Please tell us the destination, the pretty stewardess said, still with the kind smile on her lips. I knew directly where I wanted to go. America, New York, and I don't mind if we stop at some point, I said tiredly. The stewardess nodded and smiled, leaving us with quick steps. But just as she left me and the bodyguard, another pretty stewardess joined us instead. If you need anything, just say the word. We are here to serve you, my queen, the new stewardess said, with an equally kind smile on her lips. Why are they all so pretty, no matter? What I need is a long, very long shower and a big bed to sink into. The time was only 2 a.m., and my sleep had been interrupted by Antonio, 
my eyes felt very heavy all of a sudden. Is there a bathroom and a bed? I asked and started to play with the hem of my dress. Of course, my queen. Follow me, the stewardess said kindly and gestured towards the back of the plane. Do you want me to stand guard outside, my queen? asked the bodyguard quickly just as I took my first step. Oh, right, I forgot about that. My mind wasn't set on bodyguards or a pretty stewardess. It was set on the pulsating knot in my stomach that made my throat clench. It was a knot of sadness. No, no, just do whatever you want until we arrive, I said quietly, wanting nothing more than to take his steamy shower. Yes, my queen, the bodyguard said and bowed shortly. The stewardess cleared her throat and gestured to the back of the plane again. I followed her in silence. I was really doing it. I was leaving Antonio behind. But was it forever? It was a question that constantly crept into my mind whenever I tried to think. Did he believe that I had left forever? Was my intention to leave forever, never lay my eyes on him again? Was me leaving a sign that I resigned as queen? No, it couldn't. They still treated me as their queen. I wanted to think about what had happened tonight, but then I also didn't want to think about it. To think would be to feel, and the knot was already unbearable in my stomach. It clouded my happiness like a dark rain cloud. I didn't want to feel. I wanted to sleep. I wanted to forget. I wanted the knot to go away. I had to bite my lower lip to stop the tears from pouring down from my eyes. I couldn't cry in front of the stewardess. It would be awkward and embarrassing. Here you are, my queen. If you need anything else, just call, she said and opened a dark wooden door with a big golden handle. Thank you, I almost whispered and entered the room, directly closing it behind me. I could hear the stewardess walk away her high heels clicking against the floor. And I was alone in the surprisingly large room. Right in front of me was a big double bed that was placed against the wall, only leaving one side free. Directly to my right was another dark wooden door, the bathroom, no doubt. The room was very luxurious and empty, so, so empty. And I felt just as empty. I had felt the same when I killed Jonathan. But back then I had Antonio to comfort me. Now I had no one to hold me and care for me, telling me everything would be all right again. I was completely and utterly alone. I hadn't felt so alone in almost two years. It was a miserable feeling. And it was all because of Alexandra, the bitch I hated with a burning passion. She ruined everything. First she took Jonathan. And now Antonio is gone as well. Why did he want to meet her? What reason could he possibly have? I didn't understand. I was so lost and confused. The tears were pouring uncontrollably down my cheeks. But I didn't sob or make a sound. All I did was stare at the room, wallowing in the emptiness and silence that seemed to carefully vibrate in my ears. The longing after a shower and falling asleep had vanished. I didn't know what I wanted to do now, except leave Italy behind. But what then? Could I even return to something? Jonathan was the manager of the restaurant I worked in. What would happen without him? Had it closed down? Was someone else running it? And what of my apartment? I hadn't paid rent in over a month. The landowner must have closed it down or rented it out to someone else. I realized that I didn't have a life in New York anymore. It was back in Rome with Antonio, in that giant mansion, with too many rooms to count. First I left my seemingly normal life in America, and now I was leaving my not-so-normal life with Antonio, returning to my old one. But perhaps there was nothing to return to. There was only one person I have left to turn to, a person I have resented my entire life. I don't want to see her face ever again. But what else could I do? 
I sighed heavily and slowly rose to my feet. We still hadn't taken off, so there's still time for me to change destination. I opened the door again and thought I had to walk to the pilot, but the blonde stewardess appeared out of nowhere, still with a kind smile on her face. Holy shit, is she going to wait outside my room the whole trip? I can't imagine how exhausting it must be. Yes, my queen, she said and fixed her skirt that was slightly askew. I've changed my mind about New York. Take me to Montana, Missoula instead, I said shortly. I will inform the pilot, my queen. Is there anything else? She asked kindly. Her very kind behavior reminded me of a caring mother, and that thought creeped me out, since we must have been about the same age. No, that's all. Um, good night, I said awkwardly. Well, what else could I say? Goodbye? See you later? That's even more awkward than saying good night. At least it is night. The stewardess was taken back for a second, but quickly gathered herself and smiled again. Good night, my queen, she said softly, reminding me even more of a mother who talked to a child carefully and softly as to not hurt it. It would have annoyed me if I hadn't been a wreck. I closed the door again and continued to stare at the room. Then it's really happening. I haven't seen her in two years. What will she say when she sees me? Most likely something rude. She's never particularly liked me. And I don't like her very much either. My mother is a very complex person who belongs in an insane asylum. I wouldn't go to her unless it was an emergency and the leaving Antonio behind is most certainly an emergency. But going to my mother is putting her in danger, because I'm sure Alexandra will follow me. But I have a bodyguard with me. We'll be safe from that crazy bitch. I will not tell my mother the truth about Antonio or Alexandra, or anything related to them. I would just have to make up a story. She buys almost anything when it comes from me, but I suspect it's because she just wants me to shut up. I don't think she fancies it when I talk. My mother is a conservative old woman who shouldn't have made the decision to have a child. Not only did my father leave before my birth, she made up her mind to blame me. Although she's never said it directly to my face, she's given me hints for many, many years. I know she blames me, but frankly, I don't give a damn. I will deal with her when I arrive. I sighed again and closed my eyes. Their mother. I'm coming home. Chapter 26 Past Antonio's POV It was a nightmare. It must have been. She couldn't have left. She just couldn't. At any moment I would wake up and look into her beautiful eyes that promised me a future with her. But no matter how much I wanted it to be just a dream, there was no waking up. She had really left. That door had just closed behind her. Elena was gone. A sharp pain gripped my stomach, and that feeling compared to no other. Emptiness, sadness, loneliness, everything washed over me at once. And then anger came. At Alexandra, but especially at me. What was I thinking? Talking to her taking her into my home, going behind Elena's back. But I wanted to find out her intentions. Surely Elena couldn't blame me for that, but she could blame me for not saying anything to her and for allowing her in after Alexandra kidnapped and tried to kill her. That part was a big mistake. I should have ordered my guards to kill her on the spot. How could Alexandra know I would spare her this one time? How? Did she know me that well? My head was pounding and being split apart at the same time. A part of me blamed myself, but another part of me thought Elena had rushed to conclusions. But then why didn't I speak when she gave me a chance to? My voice had just vanished when I saw the furious look on her face but I wouldn't just let her walk away like that. What man would I be to let her go that easily? 
Elena is mine, and I don't care what I have to do. I will get her back. Perhaps it will take my whole life to make it right, but I will gladly give it away to her. Shakily, I came to my feet, feeling the emptiness press my organs together. My king, said a bodyguard who had seen it all. I ignored him and lifted my gaze, staring at the door right in front of me. I don't care where she's gone. I will follow her. I don't care if she will hate me. I will follow her. Elena is too perfect to let go. Kill Caleb and dispose of his body, I said coldly, turning my head and looking directly into the bodyguard's eyes with a color I didn't care to notice. Immediately, my king, any request how? He asked and bowed shortly. After what he did to Elena, I would be glad to kill Caleb myself, but I have more important matters to attend to, Elena. Slowly and painfully, make him beg for it, I said and turned around to head towards my office. The bodyguard said nothing more and headed down to the basement. It will be good to be rid of Caleb. I always wondered when I finally would dispose of him. I believe he has said everything he knows, and now he has no more use. Letting Caleb live would be like throwing a bone to Alexandra. Right now she needs all the support she needs, because when I announced that Alexandra has a $10 million bounty on her head and is an enemy, there will be no place she can hide for long. I didn't do this earlier because I thought I could handle her. Apparently I cannot. The office was dark and empty. I stared at the darkness for a minute, letting my mind spin around my thoughts like a tornado. My objective was simple. But how to get here? Elena will be little problem. I can simply ask my pilots where the plane headed, and then I shall follow. But what then? What can I say to her? Killing Alexandra will certainly be an advantage, but I'm going to prioritize Elena, not Alexandra. Finding Alexandra will also be easy. I'm sure she's following Elena like I am. I didn't know how long I stood and just stared. Perhaps minutes, perhaps hours. I wasn't sure. I was thinking about her, and my mind didn't let me think about anything else. I have to get her back. I picked up my phone from the desk and called a number only I knew. Seconds later, a man picked up. Yes, my king, he asked, sounding a bit tired. A great advantage with being the king is that I have assets everywhere. My private Italian plane has left without me. If that's the case, where is it heading? I asked shortly, not bothering to greet him. We have no personal contact, and I don't even know his name. A second, sir. Here, it's headed for Missoula in Montana, America, answered the man. Montana? Why would she possibly fly to Montana? She lives in New York, not in Missoula. Unless... Her mother, of course. Elena knows of the danger of heading to her home. Alexandra must know where she lives by now. She's a smart queen, my Elena. Get my second plane ready for the same destination immediately, I ordered and started to walk out of the office. Right away, my king, said the man, and I hung up. Don't worry, Elena. I'm coming for you. Elena's POV It was strange to look at my home. Well, my real home. This is where I grew up. This is the place I left and never wanted to see again. But desperate times call for desperate measures. I sighed and closed my eyes. Was this really a good idea? Who am I kidding? This is probably the worst idea ever. Returning home? Just a waste of time. But this is the one place Alexandra doesn't know of. Not yet, anyways. The city Missoula wasn't big or small. It was something in between, 
and that was the one thing I liked about this place. Everything else, horrible and wretched, just like my dear mother. I wonder what she'll say when we meet. Probably something cold and snarky. She's always been like that with me. I was so much happier without her. I sighed to myself again and left the car. The bodyguard, whose name is Jake, stayed in the car just like I ordered him to. He's the only guard with me at the moment, but more would come in with a plane to protect me. They are well aware of Alexandra and her endless hunt for me. No matter where I'll go, that will follow me. Well, when she's dead, she won't be able to follow me anywhere. During my flight to Missoula, I thought about Alexandra and how much I have changed since I met Antonio. I would never wish death upon someone, never. But that all changed when I shot Jonathan. Not that I wanted Jonathan dead. I wanted Alexandra dead. I really, really wanted her dead. Sophia warned me about this before the ball. She said I would change my perspective on things. If only she could be here to give me advice or to comfort me. I do wonder whose side she would pick, mine or Antonio's. I mentally shook my head and tilted my head up to look at my old home. It looked exactly like it did two years ago. Same white walls, same pillars, black door and red roses at the porch. It was like walking right into an old memory. The last time I looked at this house, I was leaving. That was one of the best days of my life. My mother's small mansion was one of many fancy houses that somehow didn't really belong in Missoula. Perhaps it was the luxury. Perhaps it was the style. I really don't know. But I always felt odd living in this big house while my friends had much smaller and more normal houses. And instead of feeling proud of the big home I had, I felt just as odd as the house. Never mind that. I'm not here to gawk. I sighed for a third time and walked up to the big black door. It was almost like walking towards the gates of hell. I do wonder if my mother has changed since I left. I find it highly unlikely. But you never know. But I shouldn't get my hopes up. It's more likely that she's the same old judgmental hag. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest when I slowly raised a closed hand. I can still change my mind. I can still turn around and go back. I can still return to Antonio, no matter how heartbroken I am, and leave my mother alone. But even if I somewhat regretted my decision to come here, I knocked hard on the door. My mother will hear the knock. It echoes profoundly in the house like some old creepy castle. And just like I suspected, I heard quick footsteps heading towards the door. Now there's no turning back. I felt dizzy and disgusted to stand here. I didn't want to stand here. But there's no other place to turn to. Not after Antonio betrayed me. Not after he met her behind my back. Just seconds after the door handle turned, and the door swung open, and there she stood, my mother. So many emotions rushed over at once when I looked into her nut-brown eyes. Anger, rage, frustration, disappointment, sadness, regret, agony. My old life, and how miserable it had been, washed over me just as quickly as the emotions did. I remembered the yelling, the humiliation, the loneliness, I remembered it all, and looking at her was like stepping into another life I wanted to forget. We didn't say anything as we stared at each other. Her eyes had widened when she saw me, but other than that, her face remained emotionless, just like my face did. What was she feeling? What was she thinking? She hated me just as much as I hated her. Well, I still hate her. How could I not? Then, after an eternity of silence, she tilted her head up like a snob and shifted in her pumps. Elena, she said shortly. Her voice sent shiver of fear down my spine. Just hearing her voice made me think of those times I cried because of her. 
because of how she used to accuse me and blame me for everything that went wrong. The verbal abuse was utterly horrible, and her voice gave me memories I wanted to shove down a deep dark hole and forget. After everything I've been through with Antonio, this was one of the hardest things to do, to face my mother. Mother, I said just as shortly, and I kept my voice cold. She swallowed and, without a word, stepped to the side to let me in. I hesitated for a moment. I could run, just turn on the spot, and leave the wretched place. But I didn't. With a deep sigh, I stepped into my old home. And just like my mother, it looked exactly the same. The same wallpapers, same paintings, same vases, same red-colored roses. Nothing had changed. Another moment of silence followed when she closed the door behind me. I wasn't sure what to do next. What words would I use to start a conversation with her? Hello? How are you? How's the last two years been? You look beautiful, she said to break the tense silence between us. I would have believed that sincerity in her voice if I hadn't grown up with her and known the hidden emotions by just hearing her talk. She's not happy to see me. Frankly, I'm not happy to see her either. And I don't want her calling me beautiful. She doesn't have the right to call me anything. You too, I said back, trying to sound polite. I kept my true feelings buried deep, just as I had buried the memories of this place, and kept my gaze steady on her. How's the city? Everything's just like you wanted? She asked and faked a kind smile. How I hated this wicked witch. Does she really believe I cannot see through her facade? Her falseness was carved into my brain when I was but a little girl, hungry for adventure and knowledge. I felt an urge to tell her everything, to tell her I was the queen over a mafia, that I've killed someone I cared for, that a psychopathic bitch wanted to kill me, that I was in love with a man who broke my heart. Maybe that would make her care. Maybe that would make her think of me as something else other than a burden. Maybe that would make me worthy of her love. The unexpected need for her love surprised me, but I pushed it away and reminded myself of all the horrendous things she did to me. Why would I want her love? Yes, I have my own place and sing at a restaurant, I told her. At least that's what I used to do. I'm not sure what I do nowadays. Live in luxury? Live in constant danger? My mother smiled again, and the left corner of her mouth twitched slightly. That's good. You always love to sing, she said, and forced a strained chuckle out of her throat. I've heard worse things leave her lips than a fake chuckle. But she's right. I love to sing. I already loved it from a young age. But what she doesn't mention is the fact that I sang to keep myself from crying whenever she screamed at me. I sang to travel to another place, a place where I was worth something, a place without her. Yeah, I said after a second. I didn't know what else to say to her. Pouring out my feelings is not the best thing to do right now. If I do, I'm sure she'll throw me out. Mel? Who are you talking to? Someone suddenly called, and I heard another set of footsteps. I recognized that voice, but surely it couldn't be. After two years? But there's only one person who calls my mother Mel, instead of Melanie, except for me. Around a corner he came, looking mostly the same but older, more mature and definitely more muscular. When I saw him, and he saw me, he froze on the spot and stared at me like my mother had done, with wide eyes, but his jaw also dropped. I had walked straight into an almost forgotten life where I didn't just face my mother, I faced him, the man I had loved, the man I had given everything to, 
the man I left. And by just looking into his deep blue eyes, I knew he still wasn't over me. Or the fact that I left him the way I did. He thought I would stay forever with him. But I left. And now I'm back. Fucking wonderful. Chapter 27 Shocking Truth Run. I wanted to run. I wanted to turn around and storm out the house. But my feet were glued to the ground. Seeing my mother was enough, but him as well? And what the fuck is he doing here? I left two years ago. They cannot still be friends. My mother adored him when we were together. She hoped we would get married, have kids, and live out our lives here. But I crushed her dreams when I left, and his as well. But I don't regret leaving. I will never regret leaving. Julian the name left my lips in a long breath before I could stop it. Julian flinched and took a step forward, his eyes wide of surprise and happiness. Surely he must have moved on since I left. But if he has, why is he in my mother's house? Julian is tending my garden, my mother said shortly and raised her head like a snob, like she needed to explain herself to me. But I couldn't take in what she just said. Julian is taking care of her garden. I remember him never wanting to do gardening. He hated it. Is she lying to me? It's a strong possibility. Suddenly I felt very bizarre. After everything I've been through, I'm standing in my mother's hallways and she's explaining why my ex-boyfriend is in her house. It seems so tame compared to everything I've done with Antonio. And I didn't like it. I didn't like this one bit. It wasn't only bizarre, it was uncomfortable and painful. Coming here was a mistake, wasn't it? Why didn't I realize it sooner? What could I gain from coming here? Why was I so set on coming here? Why am I so fucking stupid when I'm upset? What are you doing here? Julian asked, like my mother hadn't just mentioned why he was here in my old house. His eyes were hopeful, like he thought I had come back for him. I most certainly did not come back for him. I never wanted to see him again. Just nothing special, I answered meekly, looking down at the ground. I usually do that when I'm lying, and both my mother and Julian knew it. But surprisingly, neither of them pressed me. I guess mother doesn't want to scream at me when Julian's around. She never showed her true colors in front of him. When I was still living here, and still in love with Julian, he was my escape from her. And I guess my feelings made me blind to the real him. But not anymore. I could see right through them now. Well, we are both surprised to see you, Elena. My mother said shortly and cleared her throat. None of us were sure how to proceed. I must admit, I didn't think this meeting would come to this. I expected to be yelled at and thrown out, not greeted with somewhat kind words. What would I say to them? Maybe I should just keep bullshitting myself through this. I know, but I, um, need a place to stay, I mumbled and rolled my shoulders. Asking her to stay here was really hurting. I didn't want to ask her for anything, but frankly... I had no choice. My mother tensed immediately and raised her chin even higher, eyeing me like I was an intruder. Didn't you say you had your own place? She asked, trying to sound kind and calm. It failed miserably. I know she doesn't want me here. I don't want to be here either. But I have no other place to go. Even how fucking stupid it was to come here. Yes, but... I started. You can stay with me, Julian blurted out, interrupting me. My mother and I both stared at him. That must be the worst proposal I have ever heard. Me staying with him? If I do, he won't be able to keep his hands off me. I remembered how he forced me to have sex with him. It's still a sore and shameful memory. I was weak back then, open to manipulation and neglect. I don't think that's a good idea, I answered coldly. My negative response made Julian's lips tremble, 
and I saw a flash of anger in his eyes. Ah, I see. He still thinks he has some kind of claim on me, doesn't he? What an idiot he is. I bet Antonio would be furious if he found out I was sleeping in the same house as my ex. As a matter of fact, he will be furious with Julian anyways. I know how protective Antonio is over me, and I know he will come for me sooner or later. I just left because he hurt me, and I needed to calm down. I think it's a great idea. You two need to catch up, my mother said happily. I really wanted to give her a big bitch slap. Is she also still rooting for me and Julian? I can't believe her. The frustration started to build in my stomach. This is exactly why I left. Except for the verbal abuse, my mother always took Julian's side, no matter the subject. Oh, how they adored each other. If I hadn't been with Julian, it would have seemed like they were together. I never really understood what mother saw in Julian. I don't even understand what I saw in him. Maybe we can have dinner first. Then we decide, Julian suggested. I clenched my fists and sighed deeply, trying to control the anger bubbling in my stomach. This is one of those moments when you just want to scream. I have no interest in catching up with my ex. I have no interest in having dinner and sleeping at his place. What I want is some peace and quiet. No, I said shortly, my voice harsh. My mother's jaw dropped. Never in my life had I disagreed with something she or Julian suggested. I had been the submissive girl who did what she was told. Maybe that's why Julian loved me so much. I was such a sweet girl who did whatever he demanded. Well, not anymore. I'm a fucking queen. I don't want to have dinner with you, Julian. And I have no interest in sleeping at your place. And I will stay here with my mother until I see fit. Is that understood? I said, my voice turning dominant. Both Julian and mother stared at me. This time they saw me as a completely different person from the one they remembered. I don't give a shit what they think of me. I'm staying here, and that's that. Eleanor, you are very... My mother started. Good, then it's decided. Thank you for tending the garden, Julian. But you can leave now. Goodbye. I interrupted and gave Julian a long, hard stare. My ex swallowed and, without a word, left the house. I never thought that would work. Julian has never done anything I've told him to do. Eleanor! My mother squeaked in complete disbelief. I huffed and crossed my arms, giving her a long glare. Don't you stand there and act like nothing happened, mother. You think I've forgotten how you treated me? I hissed. I hissed like an angry snake. She recoiled for a second, then straightening her black skirt and giving me a glare, a glare she always gave me, before shouting at me. I expected this from her. Two years and she still hasn't changed. Not that I'm surprised. You have no right to come into my home and order Julian around, she countered, completely ignoring my last sentence. I have every right. You both treated me like shit, and when I want to talk to you alone, I will talk to you alone, I sneered. A flare of anger flashed before my mother's eyes. When that happened, I would usually apologize or run away, because I knew something horrible would leave her mouth. But I'm ready for her. I'm a new woman. This is my house. Mine. Do not show up after two years and expect, she started in a high-pitched voice, and expect you to have changed? To hope for a mother who actually loved me and don't blame me for George leaving you? I almost screamed, taking a step closer to her. I've kept my mouth shut for so long, kept my emotions hidden away. I'm done with that. So fucking done. Don't you dare mention that name, she hissed at me. I laughed, a laugh without humor or happiness. Why? Because he realized what a horrible woman you are and tried to save himself? I shouted, this time not caring about lowering my voice. I was completely livid. I had enough of her abuse. 
I had enough of her treating me like nothing, blaming me because my father, George, left her before I was born. Because, if you hadn't been conceived, he would never have left, she screamed back. I can't believe her. Is she actually blaming me for being born? I was so angry that my fingers were itching. What she's blaming me for makes no sense at all. How is it my fault that I was born? It's her responsibility to have safe sex. Then why didn't you abort me? I shouted. That question has always been in the back of my head. If she hated me so much and didn't want to have me, why did she even allow me to come to this world? Why not abort me and continue her precious life with George? The question silenced her completely. Her mouth turned into two thin strips on her pale face, her nut-brown eyes looking at me with anger and surprise. Perhaps we were wondering the same thing. Perhaps she is also questioning this decision to birth me. I don't believe in abortions, she said quietly after a moment of silence. I saw right through her lie. It's not that simple. It never is with her. I rolled my eyes and uncrossed my arms, letting the anger flow through me like adrenaline. Why does she keep lying to me? I believe we have passed pleasantness and lies. I have a right to know who my father was and why she decided to keep me. After all, those reasons are why she treated me the way she did. I have never truly understood why she hated me so much. Sure, I knew it was because George left her. But there must be something more to it. An abortion would have solved everything. And I know my mother is more than willing to do things she doesn't like, if it helps her in the end. Stop lying to me, mother. We both know that's not the real reason. I sighed and unclenched my fists. I was still angry, very angry. But I was tired as well. Meeting both Julian and my mother is really exhausting, and I never thought it would become a screaming match. You don't deserve to know, she muttered. I do deserve to know. You treated me so horrible that you chased me away from my home, I countered. She knows it's true. She knows I have a right to know, but perhaps she's too ashamed of it to tell me. Silence filled the tense air again. My mother didn't look at me. She was staring at the ground, but I felt her starting to break. Your father was a very special man, she started, almost whispering. I rolled my eyes again. What does that even mean? I snorted. I need a better explanation than that. He was special? There's a lot of people who are special. Your father was involved in things that I couldn't be a part of. And when I became pregnant, he couldn't stay with me. But I couldn't abort you. I just couldn't, she whispered. Her words hit me like a fist. I almost stumbled back. Her voice was so weak and hurt, more frail than I've ever heard it before. And the truth in it, I was surprised. I thought she would lie or change the subject like she always did whenever I asked about my father. Who was he? I asked in a low voice. A deep sigh left my mother's lips, and she closed her eyes. Eleanor, I don't think, she started. Mom, who was he? I hissed, anger flaring up in me again. She can't recoil now. This is more than she has ever told me about my father. I must know who he was. Maybe then I will understand. Stop it, Eleanor, she started again. No, I will not let this slide. You neglected me for years because of him. I deserve to know the truth, I screamed at her. She opened her eyes and stared into mine, and I saw she was as angry as I. Abano, George Abano she hissed. I felt the air leave my lungs in less than a second. A banno? No, that can't be. That can't be true. This must be more lies. There's no way in hell that my father was an abano. There just isn't. 
but the look my mother gave me was full of truth. Abano as in Alexandra Abano? Alexandra is my sister? Chapter 28 Air I... I have a sister? I whispered, more to myself than to my mother, but she heard it anyway. Both of her eyebrows rose so high they almost touched her hair. She did not expect me to know about that. But I know of Alexandra well. Of my... sister. How do you... She breathed and stared at me with big eyes. This is impossible. Alexandra is my sister. The woman who wants to kill me is my sister? Does she know? Or is she as clueless as I am? Not that I believe me being her sister will stop her. I believe nothing will stop her at this point. Alexandra is very set on getting the throne she killed for. But that murderous maniac is my sister. That's why I'm here. She's after me, I said shortly, not sure where to start explaining the situation I'm in. Melanie, my mother, gasped and placed a manicured hand over her mouth. This time, her eyes were wide of terror. So she knows how crazy Alexandra is. Perhaps she has done something in the past. George told me about her, said she was bloodthirsty and together with the son of a rival family, Antonio Gennaro, she said very slowly. And now I'm together with Antonio Gennaro. How will she react when she finds out? To her, the Abeno family were the good guys, while the Gennaro family were the bad guys. How do I explain to my mother that I have the opposite opinion? This is all so fucked up. I'm the daughter of a mafia leader, sister with my worst enemy, and dating the son of the rival family. This is why Melanie never said anything about George. I understand it now. But it doesn't excuse the way she treated me. Nothing will. I will never forget the horrible childhood I had. But it also explains why George left. What would his family say if they knew about the relationship between Melanie and George? People would start asking questions if Melanie had a child outside marriage, and I bet it would be a thousand times more difficult to hide a woman and a child. That's why he left. That's why my father left. Mom, I have so many things to tell you. I may know more than you think about the Mafia and Abeno family. I know a great deal, I said, and pulled a hand through my hair. So many things were running around in my head. Questions, confusion, fear. They were all there, and so many more things to worry about. What will Antonio say when he hears about this? This is no thing I can keep quiet about. He deserves to know. Suddenly, him seeing Alexandra behind my back seemed so empty. It seemed so stupid to run away the way I did. Everything's a fucking mess. And this does not help me at all. I never wanted that life for you, she started. Stop. Just stop. I don't want your excuses. I want us to talk. For real this time. I interrupted and sighed. Melanie shut her mouth immediately and looked at me. It was like seeing my mother in a new light. I never believed she also had ties to the Mafia and to the rival family at that. Will she hate me even more when she finds out I'm the queen? The Gennaro family has had the power for years. The Obanos was only a rival family wanting the throne. Melanie might have a different view on the Gennaros of me. I'm part of that life now, and I never thought my mother would be as well, and I never in a thousand years could imagine Alexandra as my sister. But even if we are, does that change anything? Does it change my claim to the Queen title? Does it change my relationships with the Mafia? Will it change Antonio? Perhaps that's what I feared the most. What would Antonio say? I know how he hates Alexandra. What will he think when he finds out I'm her sister? Well, half-sister. At least that's what I think. Come, my mother whispered and walked towards the open living room. 
The big glass door lit up the room and threw shadows at the same time. But I didn't pay attention to my surroundings. It looked the same anyhow. Me and Melanie sat down opposite each other. This is perhaps the most civil conversation we have had in years, except for the screaming earlier. That's normal. We always screamed at each other when I lived here. Melanie sighed and played with the hem of her black dress. I could see she was uncomfortable talking about this. But I don't give a shit if she feels uncomfortable. I have a right to know everything. And I mean everything. Not some shaped truth that contains lie after lie. I deserve more than a polished excuse. Your father and I met many years ago. We fell in love at first sight. And I found out shortly after that he was part of an infamous mafia in Italy. Back then, the mafia had no control over America, unlike today. Anyways, I accepted him and his dangerous floor, and we met in secret for many years. Your father didn't want to drag me into that dangerous life after his first wife was murdered. She started. It sounded like a typical love story, something out of a fucking book. I guess mine and Antonio's story is the same, something out of a book. But I also felt relieved to know that I wasn't Alexandra's sister. Not fully, just half-sister. I really don't want to have the same blood as she does. But I can't change it. We were happy for many years. But events started to pull us apart. Another mafia family, the Gennaros, rose quickly in power and threatened the Abeno's seat on the throne, which they eventually stole from George. They took the throne and branded the Abeno's as enemies, and during this whole power struggle, I became pregnant. I was so happy when I found out. I thought George would be too. But he wasn't, she said, her voice only a whisper at the end. I saw the pain in her eyes and heard it in her voice. She really loved my father, and the story she told me was completely different than I thought it would be, but I realized that I actually don't know much at all about the Mafia, its history, its system, or anything at all. I have been so blind and ignored what was around me. He said having a child would be dangerous. The Gennaros would find out if he had another child, and then they would find me. So he gave me a choice, keep you or not. And if I decided to keep you, he would leave me. He would still see to that I was safe, of course. But our relationship, she said and stopped, not getting the words out. The hurt was evident on her face and in the way she sat, not looking at me. But I don't get it. I do realize that she chose to keep me. But why treat me so poorly? Why blame me? Why treat me like I was nothing? She's meant to be a loving mother, and not a hateful one. A part of me was sorry for her, but a bigger part of me wasn't. My childhood will always scar me no matter what age I am. There's nothing she can say to fix it. There's nothing she can say to make me forgive her. She made my life a living hell. Does she believe explaining everything will make me forgive her? I kept you, and he left. I was never myself after that. I loved your father very much, and I wasn't the same without him. And I had no one else to blame. Except you, she whispered the final words, tears slowly running down her cheeks. My eyes were wide of surprise. This wasn't what I was expecting, not at all. I didn't expect her to be so gentle. I expected her to blame me in some way, but she didn't. Perhaps she has finally realized what a bitch she is. I truly hope so. Is Dad still alive? I asked, eager for the answer. With Antonio, I never cared about the Abeno family, but now I care very much. My father may still be alive, and perhaps he is regretting the decision to leave. Maybe he will love me. Melanie nodded and breathed in deeply, her breath shaky. Where does this leave me? I mean, if I'm half a Baino, 
I said, my voice low and empty of emotion. I wasn't sure how to feel, so I stayed numb until the conversation was over. It doesn't mean anything. Not unless Alexandra dies, then you'll be the next leader over the Abena family. George is too old to rule, she explained. What? I'm an heir? But I'm only half. But what about siblings? Cousins? I exclaimed. I know very well that Alexandra is going to die. Antonia will make sure of it. And I want her dead too. Her older brother died a few years back. His death changed her, made her vicious and dangerous. First they lost the throne, and then she lost her brother. And a half-sibling is considered more valuable than a cousin, my mother said, almost snorting out the last bit, like it was obvious. Ah, there my mother is, always with a snarky attitude. But I didn't care about her attitude. There's more pressing matters right now, like this whole air thing. I can't be the heir. I'm queen already. And what does heir even mean in the mafia world? Mom, what does it mean to be an heir? I asked timidly, trying to keep myself as calm as possible. It means you will be the head of the family. You will take care of everything. The family's political moves, their economy, and their place within the mafia. Being an heir is extremely difficult and very trying, Melanie explained in a flat voice. It was obvious that she hated discussing the Mafia, whether it was because she finally had to tell me the truth or that it was painful to remember, I couldn't say. And this whole air thing just messed up my brain. I can't be the air. I have no experience with ruling anything. The whole Alexandra wants to kill me thing made Antonio protective over me, and I didn't have to do anything important. I was just there. I have zero percent understanding of the Mafia, and now I'm an heir? But being the queen must be more important than being an heir, right? I lowered my gaze and knew I had to tell my mother about what was going on. She's going to lose her mind. Mom, me and Antonio Gennaro are together. I said, after a short moment of silence. A surprised gasp left my mother's lips when I looked up to meet her gaze. Her eyes were once again wide of surprise. She really hadn't expected that. What do you... Is that why Alexandra is after you? She exclaimed and rose from the couch. I could tell that she was upset, like really upset. The way her body moved told me everything. It's not like that. She just wants the throne, and she thinks killing me will do the trick. I explained and shrugged my shoulders. Why? What have you gotten yourself into? She snared angrily. There my angry mother is, her true and very real colors. I rolled my eyes and also rose from the couch. I understood that she's upset. But she has no right to scold me on this matter. She lost that ability the first time she made me feel like a worthless human being. What I decided to do with my life is none of her business. Me and Antonio met one night, and we decided to go out. I was shot in the shoulder that night. And for safety reasons, Antonio took me to Italy, his headquarters, where I was healed, and Antonio searched for a traitor in his inner circle. It turned out a good friend of his was working with Alexandra, and he kidnapped me. I was threatened, almost raped, and I killed my best friend, who turned out to be a spy for Alexandra. Oh, and I'm queen as well, I said slowly, and kept my face expressionless. Melanie stared at me like I was a stranger, and I am a stranger to her. She doesn't know me and I don't know her either. Therefore, she has no right to judge the things I have done, even if I myself regret some, like killing Jonathan. It was still hard to think about it. The images still haunted me when I slept. Get out, Melanie said suddenly. Her short and sharp answer made me blink several times, 
I knew she was going to be angry. But this? She surprised me. After everything she just told me, she's just going to cast me out? I thought we for once could create a truce between us. But it seems she wants nothing of the sort. I left the love of my life to keep you away from the Mafia. But it seems your Abano blood just pulled you right back in. I don't want anything to do with you. Leave and never come back. She hissed and narrowed her eyes. I raised an eyebrow and swallowed. Why am I hurt? Why am I surprised? There's no possibility to hope for a loving mother. She doesn't have it in her. As you wish, I said sharply, hiding the hurt I felt banging against my ribs. And without another word, I left the living room and headed for the door. I'm not exactly sad to leave this place. My mother didn't follow me to the door or say any more words to me. I just opened the door and closed it behind me, truly leaving my old life behind this time. The last time I left, she didn't tell me not to come back. She was just angry. But when my mother says something, she means it. And she just told me to stay away forever, and that I will gladly do so. The black SUV was still parked along the street. Good. I want to leave this place as quickly as possible. Coming here was a mistake. Leaving Antonio was a fucking mistake. But I found things here that are crucial. Now, I just have to tell Antonio about my blood. Great. Chapter 29 Back in His Arms Eleanor, wait! Someone suddenly shouted. I turned my head and saw Julian walking towards me on the sidewalk. I was close to the SUV, and my bodyguard had just stepped out of the car. When he saw Julian closing up on me, he immediately stepped in between us and looked down at Julian. Julian wasn't sure what to say when he saw the tall man look down at him. It was very satisfying to see him cower, and I had to force myself to not smile. Seeing him humiliated is priceless, but Julian is no danger. Not when I have my bodyguard, and I should hear what he has to say. We are never seeing each other after all. There will be no dinner or sleepover at his house. It's okay, I want to speak with him, I said, and gave Jake, my bodyguard, a calm glance. He nodded shortly and took his step aside, but he still kept an eye on Julian. My ex was hesitant to talk with Jake there, but I don't really care. If he has something to say, he'll say it. Have you something to say? Melanie just told me never to come back, and I'm planning on doing just that, I said, and tilted my head slightly. Julian swallowed at the news, and his face twisted into one of discomfort. He wasn't expecting that. Can we talk in private? He asked quietly clearly not comfortable with Jake watching him. At first I was going to say no, but then I reconsidered and nodded. I wasn't sure what made me change my mind. I won't go far, I said to Jake, who nodded and leaned against the SUV, following me and Julian with his eyes, as we walked along the sidewalk to a more private corner. Jake could still see me, and I could still see him, but the details on his face were blurry. Julian exhaled deeply and looked at me. His blue eyes were worried and sad. It was a reaction I wasn't expecting from him. I guess this is a day for surprises. Don't go, please, he mumbled to break the tense silence between us. I sighed and rolled my shoulders. If he thinks he can make me stay here, he's very wrong. There's nothing here that's holding me back. The only thing that had some importance was my mother, not him, never him. He may not have shouted verbal abuse, but he manipulated me in so many ways. He tricked me into becoming a submissive girl who did as she was told. I never said no and always yes. I didn't even say no when I didn't want to have sex with him. That frail girl is long gone. I've learned a lot about myself since I met Antonio. 
I've done things I never thought possible. And Julian shouldn't fuck with me. You can't make me stay, Julian. We're over. I don't love you anymore, I said, and started to play with the hem of my dress. Julian still made me nervous. I wasn't sure why, but there was something about his presence that made my stomach clench. Perhaps it was the memories that made me feel this way. My ex was silent as he stared at me. His brows were furrowed, and he really looked sad and heartbroken. But I'm not falling for his manipulation anymore. You can love me again. Just give me some time, he said slowly. I really wanted to punch him. His words are so frustrating. Why can't he understand that I don't love him anymore? No, I won't. I love someone else, I said. And it felt so good to say it. The look on Julian's face made me smile. My words hit him like several bullets to the chest. Ah, oh, poor Julian. He never thought anyone would deny him anything, least of all me. But he can suck it, because I'm through with him. I love Antonio, and Julian will definitely not change my feelings. Antonio is a thousand times better than Julian. He always will be. Who? He breathed. None of your business. You're not part of my life, Julian, I said and narrowed my eyes at him. Julian breathed out and couldn't look me in the eyes, but I knew that he was angry. He can be as angry as he likes. If he touches me, Jake will protect me, and I won't hesitate to defend myself. Living in New York is dangerous, so I took a self-defense class my first week. Luckily, I haven't had to use it. But that can change. Julian has a heated temper. I can see he's struggling to keep himself calm. Eleanor, you can become part of my life again. Nothing was the same when you left, he said. His breath's short. Why can't he get it through his thick skull that I don't want to be part of his life? Julian, I don't want anything to do with you. Why can't you understand that? I said trying to keep my voice steady, but my anger was rising with every passing second. I don't need this right now. I don't need another argument. My mother is more than enough. This whole Alexandra is my sister thing has taken its toll on me, and the whole air thing just makes everything so much more complicated. I mean, if Alexandra dies, will I have to abdicate and become the head of the Abeno family? Maybe me and Antonio can't be together because of it. But I'm not leaving Antonio. I refuse. I would do anything to stay with him. But I'm very happy to leave Julian once and for all. Because I love you, Elena. I really do. Julian admitted and looked into my blue eyes. His were sad while mine were hard. If this was more manipulation or truth, I couldn't say. It's hard to tell the difference with him. Julian has a very twisted view on love. But I don't love you. And it must be a two-way street for a relationship to work. So leave me alone, I said, and decided that I've had enough. Julian will obviously never understand that I never want to be with him again. There's no need wasting my breath explaining it to him. Nothing will penetrate that thick skull of his. I shook my head and started walking back to the SUV. Jake was still watching us. But just as I was to pass Julian, his hand grabbed my arm, and the grip was hard. I gasped in surprise when he forced me to stay still. I turned my head and looked back at him. He was staring at me intently. The sudden change in his sad attitude sent a shiver of fear running down my spine. But it faded quickly. He has no idea what he's getting into. One wrong move, and Jake will leave him blooded and bruised. You can't leave, he hissed through clenched teeth. I narrowed my eyes and stared at him. I was slowly starting to fume with anger. Suddenly, another SUV turned around the corner behind Julian. The car was driving at a high speed, but stopped so suddenly that I thought it hit someone. But there was no one but me and Julian, and Jake many meters back. 
Julian didn't notice the car, because his eyes were set on me, but my focus was now on the SUV, because it looked exactly like mine. That can only mean two things. Antonio, or Alexandra, I really hope for the first option. Julian, how many times? I started, but my thread of words were interrupted by a pair of lips, a pair of lips that belonged to Julian. His hands quickly found my waist, and he pulled me against him. I gasped against his lips and widened my eyes while his were closed. Revolting, anger, and humiliation rushed through me at a speed of lightning. While his hands had traveled around my waist, mine traveled up to his chest, where I pushed with all my might. Julian's lips left mine, and I immediately backed away from him. Tears of anger burned in my eyes that were set on his face. I had never felt so humiliated in all my life. How dare he, after everything he's done to me, after everything I've been through, including my mother, this was the last straw. The door to the SUV flung open and out came Antonio. It had only been around a day since I left him on his knees in the mansion. But one day was enough. When I saw his perfect face, now twisted in anger, relief and love washed over me. He came for me, even after what I put him through. He's still here. If that doesn't prove his love for me, I don't know what will. I wanted to throw myself into his arms and never let go. I wanted to breathe in the scent of his cologne and finally feel safe. But Antonio had other plans. He just witnessed Julian kiss me. Shit. I will kill you for touching her. Antonio growled and pulled out a gun, but not aiming it at Julian whose jaw dropped. The anger was burning in Antonio's eyes. The possessive and violent side of him has taken over. Antonio, wait! I gasped and threw myself between them. Yes, I hate Julian. I hate every fiber of his being, and I will never let him hurt me again. But killing him is going too far. I don't want any more blood on my hands, not after Jonathan. I won't be able to look at myself if I let Antonio kill him. This isn't the right thing to do. Antonio's pale eyes looked into my blue ones, and I saw a hint of relief in them, but he wasn't too angry to calm down at my whim. He's not worth it, please. We have more pressing matters to attend to, I said quickly, trying to reason with him. But it's true. Julian isn't worth a bullet, no matter how cheap that bullet is. I don't want to waste any more energy on my ex. He doesn't deserve anything that has to do with me. If I weren't here, I'm sure Julian would be dead right now. Antonio's anger is not to be reckoned with. I saw what he did to Caleb after I told him what happened at the warehouse. You come before anything, and if this scum thinks he can just get away with anything because you care, Antonio started and narrowed his eyes. I'm not sparing him because I care, Antonio. I don't care about him. But I don't want this, I explained slowly. Antonio clenched his jaw and tightened the grip on his gun. I could see that he wanted to pull the trigger and kill Julian. But I don't want that. I want to get out of this place. Leave it behind me forever. Can we just leave, please? I pleaded and felt a lonely tear fall down my cheek. I just want him to hold me. I don't want a body to bury. The anger slowly left Antonio's eyes when he saw the look of pain on my face. The things I will have to tell him. Anything for you. Come here, he said softly and reached for me. I happily stepped into his arms and pressed myself against him. It was like stepping into heaven itself. How I have missed his touch. I love him so much that it scares me. Let's leave, Antonio said, and kept a strong arm around my waist as we walked to the black SUV. Three bodyguards had exited the car when Antonio did, but now they opened the door and let us in, ignoring Julian completely. I could also see Jake getting in his car further down the street, 
It was finally time to leave my home behind. For good this time. I didn't even look at Julian, or my old house. I know Julian is staring at me through the glass, wondering what the hell just happened, and what I have gotten myself involved in. Not that I'm going to explain it to him, I'm never going to see him again. For the first time, I truly had nothing tying me to my old life. Jonathan is dead, my mother never wants to see me, and Julian is just dead weight. There's really nothing stopping me from committing fully to Antonio. Is this the start of my new life with him? Elena, Antonio said softly, ripping me out of my thoughts. His arm was still around my waist, and I turned my head to look into his beautiful eyes, which were as soft as his voice. I didn't see any anger in them anymore. So he's not angry with me? Because I'm angry with myself. What I did was stupid. What if Alexandra had got into me first? What if it was Alexandra who had stepped out of that car? Then me and Julian would be dead. I'm not going to take such a risk ever again. I'm sorry, I whispered, and let the tears fall down my cheeks. All the things that happened today were catching up with me, and they left me with a gaping hole in my chest. I was so scared to tell Antonio about my Obeno blood. What would he say? What would it mean? Don't. Just let me hold you. He whispered back and dragged me to him, forcing me to lean against him. His arms snaked around me and his soft lips found my temple. Perhaps we can have a calm moment before the storm, but I'm afraid we might not have the luxury anymore. Antonio, I have so many things to tell you, I said and looked up at him. His brows furrowed when he saw my tired and sad face. I'm not going to like it, am I? He asked quietly. Not more than I do, I answered just as quietly. A deep sigh left his lips, and he closed his eyes. I took that short moment of silence to reach up and kiss his perfectly shaped lips. He reacted immediately and pulled me towards him, grabbing my bare legs and placing me astride over him. The sudden and unexpected response from him sent a beam of lust through my body. This is probably the most inappropriate time to long for him, but I couldn't stop my body from starting to heat up when I felt his lips kiss mine. We were perfect for each other. Surely my blood can't change that. Chapter 30 Confession I wanted to give in and let him touch me, let him kiss me and take me to that blissful place only he could take me to. I wanted to have relief and be with him, but I decided against it, because me and Alexandra being half-sisters cannot wait. It changes, well, everything. I also wasn't very comfortable with having sex in a car. Antonio, wait! I breathed when his lips kissed my sensitive neck. He stopped immediately and looked up at me, his eyes hungry for me. That look made me melt. It was so sexy and so seductive. But when I thought of Alexandra, it made me tense again. I want her out of my head before doing anything with Antonio. It would just feel wrong. I need to tell you something about me. And... My father, I whispered carefully with my hands on his cheek. My blood won't make him hate me, right? If he does, it would be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I didn't even know about it. How can he blame me for something that I wasn't aware of? Although he has suffered greatly because of the Abenos, his father's death, Alexandra wanting the throne, me being hurt because of them, but I bet there's more that I'm not aware of. After all, I don't know shit about the Mafia. Not enough, anyways. Antonio raised an eyebrow and relaxed his grip around my waist. Your father? Isn't he dead? There was no father on your birth certificate, he said and looked flabbergasted. I know that, but... I started 
but shut my mouth when I realized what he just said. My birth certificate? How does he know about that? I opened my mouth to say something, but I wasn't sure what to say. Has he been spying on me? Antonio also widened his eyes when he realized what he just said. Was that something he didn't want me to know? Well, he better tell me now. How do you know about my birth certificate? I haven't mentioned anything about my family to you, I asked and leaned back, removing my hands from his cheek and crossing my arms. I looked bossy now, like an angry bee wanting to find out the truth. What reason could he have to snoop around in my life? Antonio cleared his throat and put on his best puppy face, and boy did it look adorable. I, um, pulled out all your records after the night we first met. I wanted to find out if you had any ties to the Mafia. And that included looking at your birth certificate. Don't hate me, please, he said softly and started to massage my hips. To my big surprise, I didn't feel even a little angry about it. In fact, I completely understood why he did it. Being the king is dangerous, very dangerous, and I could have been in league with Alexandra like Jonathan was. I guess Antonio didn't bother to check Jonathan because I trusted him. Just another reason why his death is my fault. Honestly, I don't mind. I understand why you did it, I answered calmly and pecked him on his pouting lips. Antonio leaned forward to try and capture my lips but I pushed him back into the seat. He needs to know about me and Alexandra. Antonio must have seen something sad or hurt in my eyes, because the adorable puppy look vanished, and instead he looked worried and confused. What did your mother say about your father? Antonio asked carefully. There's no idea to sugarcoat it or try to soften the blow. Even if I'm afraid of what he'll say, I have to tell him. It was a long conversation, but my mother, she... Antonio, promise you'll still love me? I asked and furrowed my brows into a sad look. Of course, Elena. I love you no matter what, he said confidently and pulled me closer. I sighed and nodded to myself. I'm not sure why I need his promise. There's nothing I can do to change my blood anyways. My father is George Abeno, which makes Alexandra my half-sister, I said quickly. If I had stopped to think about the situation, I probably wouldn't have said anything so early. That's what happens when I think. I let it fade into the background and into the back of my head. Although something like this won't just fade away. Antonio tensed. I felt how the grip around my waist turned from caring to harsh, and his muscles became stiff under my body. His pale, beautiful eyes stared at me like I was an alien, like he saw me in a new light. A rush of fear ran through my body when I saw that look. Could I have been wrong? Could I have been wrong about his feelings for me? Maybe this will change our relationship for the worse. You're an abeno? he asked in a whisper, still too shocked to have a giant reaction. I felt Rory start to eat at me. Yes, but me and Alexandra have different mothers, I answered quietly. A sigh left Antonio's lips, and he closed his eyes, like he was going to sleep. But instead of saying anything more, I just let him take his time to process the news. Believe me, it wasn't easy for me either. I mean, Alexandra as my half-sister? That's one of the worst things that has happened to me. But us sharing blood doesn't change the fact that I want her dead. After everything she has put me and Antonio through, death is the only thing she deserves. What worries me the most is the whole air thing, but I'm sure Antonio will comment on that. Talking about Antonio... He finally opened his eyes after a short moment of silence. His eyes were soft, and they gleamed. Even in this state, worried and confused, 
they still took my breath away. Just one look, and it was almost like all my troubles fade away. I didn't see that coming, and I'm sure you didn't either. But it doesn't change the fact that I love you. I will always love you, he said, and gave me a weak smile. A long sigh of relief left my lips, and I leaned forward to press my mouth against his neck. The worry washed away completely. Honestly, I thought he would react stronger, more violently, or at least scream something harsh at me. But instead, he was kind and careful. It's a side I bring out, I suppose. I love you too, I whispered, and inhaled his sweet scent. Wow, a thousand rocks fell from my heart. Did your mother tell you about something called an heir? He asked and gently pushed me back to look at my face. I nodded yes. She did. She told me that if we kill Alexandra, I'll become the heir of the Abeno family. I answered and looked deeply into his eyes. That's true. But you're queen already, which gives you the opportunity to choose, Antonio said and started to massage my hips again. The movements sent a pleasant shiver down my spine. And I hadn't expected that kind of answer. I thought it would be more devastating, like, no, you have to leave me and become heir. And I'm not wrong to think such negative thoughts. With all the shit we've been through, and all the shit we're going through, I expected to just have more shit to deal with. It's almost like life itself wants to test our relationship. Well, fuck that, because I'm not leaving him. Not ever. So I can choose if I want to be queen or heir? I asked, sounding more happy than I've been in a whole day. This is really a relief. I really don't want to be heir. I want to be with Antonio, no one else. Yeah, and I hope you choose me, he said and gave me a charming smile. I chuckled and kissed him on the cheek. The heavy air had shifted and became light and easy to deal with. The mood had changed completely. Antonio isn't leaving me because of my blood, and I don't have to leave him because of it either. Except for my mother exiling me, and Julian kissing me, this has been a pretty good fucking day. Of course I will. I bet Alexandra won't be too happy if she finds out, I said. Antonio chuckled and shook his head. She will not but I'm not planning on giving her any time to find out. We're going to end this once and for all, Antonio said, being more serious at the end of the sentence. I know what he means by ending it once and for all. We are going to kill Alexandra. It's about damn time if you ask me. I'm not done with her terrorizing us. We just have to find her first. Do you know where she is? I asked and bit my lower lip anxious to be in the loop again. I believe she's in America. It was pure luck that I reached you first, Antonio informed me and gave my hips a squeeze. I agree completely. What if it had been Alexandra? I would be dead, without a doubt. But the question is, are we leaving for Italy and letting her follow us back? Or are we going to fight her hair? I'm not sure which one is the best. I just want to sleep before we do anything. Fighting Alexandra is usually exhausting, and I'm already drained. Are we going home? I asked. When I say home, I mean the mansion in Rome, because that's my home now. Well, wherever I'm with Antonio is home. But I really love that mansion. I hope we go back there soon. That's my plan. I'd rather fight Alexandra on known ground, and where I have more resources at my disposal, Antonio answered. That sounds fair, and I'm not complaining at all. Going home means sleep, and I really want to sleep right now. I like that idea, I sighed, and buried my face in his neck, exhaling deeply and closing my eyes. I can fall asleep like this. Antonio is so comfortable and warm. I felt his chest vibrate as he chuckled, placing a big hand on my head 
and kissing my forehead. I bet he can see how tired I am. Sleep, he whispered gently and placed a second kiss on my forehead. And just like his words contained sleeping pills, my mind wandered into my own dream world, where I dreamed of a yelling mother and an angry Alexandra chasing me with a gun. Since my dreams were no comfort, I woke up violently, almost hitting Antonio on the nose. Luckily he managed to press his back against the backrest and avoid the back of my head. It was dark outside now, but we were still driving. Strange, it wasn't this long to the last airstrip I landed on. Bad dream, Antonio said softly, and removed some hair that had fallen in front of my blue eyes. Yeah, it was both a strange and bad dream. Not that it was too frightening, but it scared me that not even my dreams gave me any comfort. Yeah, I answered, and slid off his lap. My body had left creases in his suit, and I was sweating. I leaned against the cool window and placed my legs in his lap, sighing with content when I felt the cool window make contact with my sweaty neck. Antonio happily let my legs rest in his lap and started to slowly stroke my bare skin. I giggled and bit my lower lip, opening my eyes, and met his pale eyes. They gleamed mysteriously in the dark like a pair of precious diamonds. The ride home will be more comfortable, I'm sure, he said like he was planning something. I playfully raised an eyebrow. Something on your mind? I asked and sat up straight, still my feet in his lap. Antonio gave me a look that screamed yes, but what he was planning I could only guess. But I hope his plan is us with no clothes. I've missed him, missed his touch. The aftermath of our last lovemaking was a bad memory, and hopefully we can change that by having a normal night with a following normal morning. You, well, to be more specific, you with no clothes. Antonio answered playfully and stroked one of his hands higher up my leg, tickling the curve of my knee. I felt the arousal pour through me like water pouring through a drain. Just with a few words and an irresistible look, he had me weak in my knees and begging for more. Our last time was fantastic. No one has ever made me feel so, so desired. I like that idea, I whispered and looked directly into his eyes. A sly grin curved his full lips. Before he could answer or do anything to me, the car stopped. We had arrived at a lonely airstrip with a single plane ready to start, time to head home, and we have many hours to spend. I'm going to make you scream my name. He purred and opened the door behind him, helping me out of the car and up the stairs to the plane. A stewardess welcomed us, but neither of us paid her any attention. We were set on the big door leading to our bedroom. My knees were shaking with excitement. Antonio walked behind me like a predator, and when the door closed behind us, a pair of soft and warm lips found my neck. I moaned and leaned into him, letting him take me to that place where only he could take me. Chapter 31 Dominant Antonio's hand slowly caressed my hips sending shivers down my spine. After a rough day, it felt wonderful to feel him press against my back. Last time, he took me to heaven, and I know he'll do it again. I think you're wearing too much, he whispered in my ear, and stroked the two white straps off my shoulder. I bit my lower lip and smiled, leaning into him when his warm hands made contact with my skin. I can say the same to you, my king, I purred and turned my head to look at him. I placed one of my hands on his cheek and looked deeply into his eyes. Antonio smiled and unexpectedly captured my lips in a passionate kiss that made my knees weak. He even had to tighten the grip on my hips to stop me from falling. 
How can love be so powerful? And the love mixed itself with the growing lust I felt build up deep inside of me. It was like a need that I had been starved for far too long. I can't get enough of this man, this dangerous and utterly perfect man, the man I don't ever want to let go. Antonio's lips were dominant and sweet at the same time. It made the lust bubble up in my lower stomach and lit my excitement like a bonfire. I turned around in his arms and placed my arms around his neck pulling him down and pressing myself against him. I wanted to be close to him, to never step away and let the air separate us. There were so many things I longed for, his touch, his kisses, the feeling of his skin against mine. It was mind-bending. I wanted to have him inside of me right away. I didn't care if he fucked me with my clothes on. I just needed him to fill me up the way only he could. So it was me, and not Antonio, that pulled my dress down, letting it fall to the floor. A sharp breath left Antonio's lips when he heard the light thud. When he opened his eyes and gazed down at me, I saw the blazing hunger in them. Oh, darling, he moaned, and suddenly grabbed my naked thighs, lifting me up, only to carry me towards the large bed that stood ready for us. Antonio's perfect lips anxiously explored my own, like it was the first time he tasted them. How he managed to find the way to the bed with closed eyes will remain a mystery. Not that I care about that either. The only thing I care about at the moment is to undress him. The last time we had sex, it felt like it was all about me. He did, after all, worship me like I was his goddess but he dominated me as well. Wow, I still remember the thrill that gave me. But I want something different this time, perhaps a bit more dominance from me. I do wonder if Antonio can ever be submissive in bed. There's only one way to find out. Antonio placed me on the bed, but instead of letting him lay over me and continue his pleasurable exploration, I managed to get my legs loose and press them against his muscular chest, pushing him back from me and into a standing position. Antonio's eyebrows rose when he looked down at me, only wearing a pair of white lace panties. He was so close to touching and drowning me in pleasure, but I had stopped him, and that surprised him. Wasn't this what I wanted? But the confusion was all a part of the game I had constructed in my head. I can't wait to play it. Don't move, I whispered, and smiled mysteriously. Now instead of looking confused, Antonio smiled and nodded. I let my feet fall to the bed. Hopefully this will make him go crazy. I removed my panties very slowly, hooking my thumbs along the panty line and dragging them down to bear myself to him. Antonio bit his lips and eyed me hungrily when I kicked the lace off my ankles. He made a motion to reach out after me, but once again I pressed my feet against his torso to stop him. I'm not done yet. This is only the start. Be a good boy and don't move, I purred. Antonio's eyes widened a bit when I spoke to him in that way. I bet no one has ever commanded him in bed. But without a word, he obliged with a slight nod and parted lips. I bet he's curious to see where this goes. I removed my foot and climbed higher up in the bed, letting my head fall onto the pillow. Then I parted my legs and let a hand slide across my stomach and down to my pulsating womanhood. Antonio must have realized what I was going to do because his eyes were wider than before. When I let my index finger come in contact with my swollen clit, it sent violent lightning strikes up my spine. It was so violent that I felt my thighs twitch. I had no idea how aroused I was until I felt the wetness against my own finger. Elena! Antonio gasped and grabbed the bed pole. Those pale eyes were set on me and burned against my skin, urging me to continue. 
and continue I did. My index finger found a slow circular rhythm around my clit, and I touched myself while Antonio watched me eagerly. He licked his lips and stared at me like I was an angel that could disappear any moment. The hunger quickly turned into a blazing fire, and I saw his grip on the bed pole harden, just like a certain member in his pants. To tease him even more, I started to massage my breasts, and that made him growl deeply in his throat. You're so fucking beautiful, he gasped, and eyed me up and down as I brought myself closer and closer to climax. Just with a few strokes, I was almost already there, but I felt so extremely aroused when he was watching me with his pale eyes. I loved the way he reacted. I loved everything about him. And I loved to see him struggle just a meter away from me. I could see that he wanted to throw himself over me. But this was a part of my little game. Elena, you're making me go crazy. Please let me touch you. Antonio breathed heavily. I smiled, but carefully shook my head. Don't move, I simply said and started to draw faster and smaller circles around my clit. The contact made me moan and close my eyes. I could hear Antonio breathe, heavy and lustful breaths. What excited me was that I made him like that. It was because of me, no one else, me. I was so close now, just a few more strokes and... And I came... The orgasm washed over me in rhythmic waves. I felt the muscles contract in my womanhood and in my lower stomach. It was a wondrous feeling. It made me arc my back like a drawn bow and moan loudly. When I opened my glittering eyes and looked up at Antonio, his face was still wild with lust. And even if an orgasm normally marks the end to a sex act, I felt myself becoming aroused once again, and this time I wanted more than just clit stimulation. Take off your clothes, I whispered carefully. Antonio obliged within a second and ripped off his white shirt. I couldn't help but chuckle quietly when I saw his eagerness, and then he quickly unbuttoned his pants and stepped out of the pile on the floor. The only things separating us now was distance and a pair of white boxes. I was already naked and ready for him. The need for him was already building up like a fire within me. It's amazing how he can drive me wild like he does. But I guess that's what love does to you. Without removing his boxes, Antonio crawled on his fours to hover over me with wide and hungry eyes. I couldn't help myself and reached up to caress his cheek. The stubble tickled my cold palm. You have no idea how much I want you right now, he whispered and smiled. Oh, I have a clue because I need him too. Then take me, my king, I said and bit my lower lip, putting on my best seductive face. It must have worked, for a storm whirled up in Antonio's eyes and he captured my lips in a harsh and passionate kiss. But like always, a kiss leads to a breathless makeout session. It literally took my breath away. But before I could grab him and pull him down over me, he slowly leaned back and reached for the small nightstand next to the bed. Do you always ask the crew to place condoms in the nightstands? I chuckled. Antonio smiled a wry smile, but didn't answer. Instead, I helped him take off his boxes. Once they were gone, he rolled on the condom and looked deeply into my eyes. If he had entered me right there, I would probably have exploded in another orgasm. That's how much I wanted to fill him inside of me. But before anything like that happened, I remembered my game I had made up before. And that game isn't completely finished just yet. I took Antonio by surprise when I grabbed his shoulder and turned us around. Instead of me being under him, the roles were now reversed, and I straddled him 
with my palms pressed against his chest. I liked feeling his strong chest underneath my hands. Aren't you a dominant one? Antonio smiled and let his hands slowly find their way to my waist. You may be the king, but I'm the queen, honey, I said and lifted myself up, slowly letting his head penetrate me. A loud moan escaped his lips, and he closed his eyes. The head was only a small piece of his full member, but I was still feeling completely satisfied when I slowly let more of him inside of me, the feeling of slowly being filled, being spread. It was wonderful, not to mention Antonio had a big member, but that only meant he just filled me even better. Just like that. He moaned and pushed up his hips to fully enter me. I threw my head back and almost screamed. The pulsating in my womanhood and stomach was pleasantly eased by his big and hard member inside of me, but instead it started to build up another sort of pressure, the orgasmic pressure. Having him inside of me was nothing like when I touched myself. What am I saying? Nothing compared to this. We both started to move together, finding a rhythm that made me moan like a wild animal. Antonio gasped under me and gripped my waist so hard it would leave red marks. But I didn't care. I wanted him to mark me. Look at me, Antonio breathed. I obliged immediately and looked him deeply in the eyes. The eye contact made it all so much more intimate, and I moaned in appreciation and urged him into a faster pace, and when he did, I had leaned down to kiss him. Now it was only him that moved. He held me tight and slammed into me. Don't stop, I moaned and kissed him. Antonio moaned into my mouth. I can't hold back much longer, he said back. Then don't, I answered and kissed him again, and just a second later, I felt how his member twitched inside of me, and feeling and knowing that he just came drove me over the edge again. We moaned into each other's mouths and rode out our orgasms. The tiredness that quickly overwhelmed me made me fall onto his chest and take heavy breaths. Antonio slipped out of me, making me moan and removing the used condom. I like it when you're dominant, he chuckled and kissed my forehead before pulling the covers over us. I had closed my eyes, but smiled at this remark. Of course, you like everything about me, I joked and kissed his warm chest. With Antonio embracing me and the thick cover covering us, it started to get warm, but I liked it. The plane had lifted long ago, and it was colder up in the air than at the ground. Wow, I didn't even notice when we took off. That's what I call great sex. Feeling confident, are we? He asked in a light tone. I turned my head and looked up at him, the man of my dreams. Sex does that to you, I chuckled and smiled. Antonio slowly caressed my cheek and gazed at me with so much love. What did I ever do to deserve a man like him? I love you more than anything, he said and sounded more serious. And I love you even more, I countered and crawled up to give him a deep, long kiss. Antonio happily obliged and kissed me eagerly. If I hadn't been so exhausted, I would have let him fuck me again. But I pulled away and pecked him on the cheek before cuddling into him placing my nose against his neck and inhaling deeply. I do love the way he smells. A comfortable silence fell between us, and in that silence my mind started to work again. I couldn't comprehend how much I loved him. It was just a feeling that made everything make sense, that made everything fall into place and complete you fully. One can easily say that me and Antonio are perfect for each other, and that thought made me smile into his neck. We are perfect for each other. Marry me. 
Those two words broke the silence between us, and I swear I felt my heart leap out my chest. Chapter 32 Hide and Seek The right side of my head was bleeding profoundly. The thick red consistency half blinded me as well when it reached my eyes, making my eyelashes glue together. As if that wasn't enough, it felt like my head had exploded into a million pieces and I didn't even dare to breathe as I pressed myself against the tall wardrobe. My body was aching in places it never had ached before, and that made it extremely difficult to stand on my own two feet. To make matters even worse, my left ankle was probably sprained. Luckily, I wasn't the only one suffering. I could hear her curse and mumble as she moved through the room. Really smart move, sister. But you need to hit harder, she taunted, trying to make me angry and draw me out. But I'm not going to fall for her cheap tricks. I know that chair hurts more than she cares to admit. Besides, I'm really glad I gave her a big smack to the face with that chair. I stayed quiet and pressed my lips into a thin strip. Where is Antonio when you need him? I have an apartment in central Rome. No one, except for my closest allies, know about it. She won't find you there. I promise. Right now, Antonio is off somewhere trying to look for my half-sister. But she's right here with me. What a fucking genius he is. Her stumbling footsteps came closer. My heart stopped in my chest. If she found me here, I would have no chance of defending myself. The gun a bodyguard left me is on the kitchen counter, and that's at least two rooms away in Alexandra's direction. So to sum it up, it's a death sentence to even think about getting that gun. And to make me feel even more like shit, my crazy half-sister is the one holding a gun right now. I was lucky to react as quickly as I did when she broke into the apartment. If I hadn't, I would probably be dead right now. But hey, I'll probably be dead soon anyways. Why does my life always take a turn for the worse when I'm having the best times? Eight hours earlier. My sleepy and tired eyes widened to the size of golf balls. Did he just propose? I shot up into a sitting position like a bullet and stared down at him. He still looked calm and sleepy, unlike me and my head that were now running wild. Are you... What? I squeaked. Antonio chuckled. You heard me. I asked you to marry me. He said and placed a lock of my hair behind my ear, caressing my cheek in the process. His touch was soft and full of love, just like his pale eyes, but I felt everything except calmness. Marriage. Him and me like actual marriage with a white dress, big cake, and hundreds of people, vows, all that. Antonio, I... I stuttered, but couldn't get anything understandable out of my mouth. Do you love me? He asked and sat up to meet my wide gaze. Why is he asking me that? He knows I do. Of course I do, but... I started. You love me. I love you. We love each other. Marriage. He said shortly and smiled, this time more amused than before. Is this funny to him? I certainly do not find this funny. Marriage is serious stuff. But... I started again. But what... Give me one good reason why we shouldn't get married, he said quickly. I opened my mouth to express a very valid reason as to not rush into this, but I realized rather quickly that I didn't find one good reason. I love him. I really do. And didn't I just think about how perfect we are for each other? There's no one I love more than him. So why not get married? Yeah. Why the fuck not? You got me trapped in a corner here, I whispered affectionately, 
Antonio shuddered when I let one of my hands caress his bare chest. Is that a yes? He asked quickly, with his eyes darting from my eyes down to my lips. I'll marry you, Antonio Gennaro, I whispered and bit my lower lip. A grin curved his smooth lips when he leaned down and gave me a long and passionate kiss. But that's all that happened. A long and absolutely wonderful kiss that gave me both butterflies in my stomach and shivers up my spine. Present I stopped breathing when I heard her entering the bedroom. I was still safely out of her reach and gaze when hiding here. But if she takes one wrong turn, she'll see me clear as day. Where are you hiding? You can't escape me forever. I'll just find you again, and again, and again, she snared, well, more like screamed. Good. If she screams, then she doesn't know I'm in this room. That's one positive thing. But I'm not sure how long I can hide here. Alexandra walked around the bed which scared the shit out of me because I could see her now, well, the profile of her, but if she so much as glances to her left, she will see me pressed against the wardrobe. But somehow, maybe it was an intervention from the gods, she didn't even look my way. Instead, she set her eyes on the door leading into the big walk-in closet. The door was ajar, only slightly, after this afternoon when I didn't bother closing it. Did that small gesture just save my life? It seemed so, because she carefully headed towards the dark closet. I know you're in there, sister, she taunted. My heart fluttered with hope when my bitch of a sister ripped open the door and almost tripped inside, in hope of seeing me. I took that opportunity and ran, ran like a crazy person, towards the open door Alexandra came through. Alexandra reacted quickly when she realized I had tricked her, and rushed out of the closet and fired the gun without really aiming. The bullets flew past me, hit places I had passed, until I was out of the room. I took a left and almost broke my knees when I collided with the kitchen owl. The black gun laid, untouched, on the owl, and I picked it up without hesitation. This can only end in one way. One of us is going to die and that isn't going to be me. Six hours earlier. When I changed into another dress, I felt very optimistic about the day ahead. The man walking by my side was my fiancé, just not my king or lover. He was my fiancé. I was going to marry him. Why had I hesitated back in bed? Right now, marrying Antonio seemed the most logical thing to do. There's no one else I want to spend the rest of my life with. But now I have to find a dress. I'm sure Sophia can help me with that. Antonio hadn't spoken of her since I left the mansion to visit my mother. But I bet she was worried about me. She's like the mother I never had. I bet she will want to plan the whole wedding as well. I'll gladly let her do that. Planning a wedding is definitely not my thing. Just thinking about me in a white dress, walking towards the aisle where Antonio waited in a black tuxedo, ready to take my hand and say, I do, made me nervous. Shit, I have to write my own vow as well. What was I going to say? Even if our first date led to me getting shot. No, that's just weird. And I can't say how scared I was when he asked for me at the restaurant. I guess we didn't have the most romantic first meeting or date. What's on your mind? I can see the cogs turning in your head, Antonio whispered and kissed my neck, making me shiver. The strong arm around my waist led me towards the black SUV waiting for us. We had just landed in Italy, and soon we were going home. Just the wedding? I'm not sure what to write in my vow, I admitted with a nervous chuckle. Antonio sighed and hugged my waist harder. Don't worry about that now. Everything will work out, he comforted me. Well, that just means I have to worry about it later. But what the hell? 
why not stop worrying for a second? We have more pressing matters than a wedding. What about your vow? I asked. I'm really curious what he'll say about me. What was his view on our first meeting, our first date? I really wish I could read his mind sometimes. Antonio laughed and opened the door for me, like a gentleman. I was planning on telling everyone what a nice ass you have, he said and smacked me on the butt just as I bent over to sit down. My cheeks turned into two tomatoes and I gasped, knowing very well that his bodyguards and the driver had heard what he said. Antonio! I gasped when I quickly sat down. He only laughed and threw me a wink before closing the door to the car. Present. Now that I was armed as well, we were hunting each other. I haven't heard her running after me, but I hadn't heard her leave the bedroom. Was she still there? Would I react quickly enough if we suddenly came face to face? My heart was pumping vigorously in my chest again, spreading the adrenaline like wildfire in my veins. It made my senses become more sharp, my body more tolerable, and my mind more focused. But it also made me terrified to my core. I was once again going to stare death in the face. Would I survive this time? Maybe it's too much to have escaped two times. But third time's the charm, right? And with both terror and strangely confidence, I peeked into the living room, trying to catch a glimpse of Alexandra but I didn't see any sign of her. Fuck, where's she at now? I could take another chance and head for the exit. That's the smartest thing to do. I'm not made for this kind of thing. But if I flee, Alexandra will get away again, and me and Antonio can't start our lives together. Do I want that? Or should I be brave and end this once and for all? The confidence that had grown inside of me ever since I met Antonio swayed me to the last option and I decided to stay. Stay inside of this apartment and shoot Alexandra if I lay my eyes on her. I kill Jonathan. I can kill her. I just need to draw her out. Why so quiet all of a sudden? Cat's got your bitching tongue, sister? I called saying the word sister with as much disgust as I could. But I really feel disgusted knowing she's my sister. I didn't get a response like I expected, but I'm not giving up yet. Alexandra has one hell of a temper. I took Antonio, the queen seat, and soon I'll take your heir title as well. There will be nothing for you. I jeered, turning the game around making up new rules to act in my favor. Alexandra will not stay hidden for long. She doesn't have the patience when someone insults her. But don't worry. I'll make sure to give George your regards when I marry your ex, I shouted. That was the last straw. I heard an angry outburst, but it wasn't in the living room like I thought. It came from the hall that leads directly to the kitchen. Realizing my mistake, exposing my entire body for a flanked attack, I threw myself behind the kitchen owl just as bullets flew above my head. Four hours earlier. What do you mean we're not going to the mansion? I asked and raised an eyebrow. Antonio had just gotten a call from some bodyguard or someone, and his happy face had quickly changed into a grimace. Something has happened something bad. And that bad thing had just made him tell me we couldn't go back to the mansion. It's Alexandra. It must be. How the hell did she arrive in Italy before us? Or maybe she didn't leave at all. Has she been planning an ambush the whole time we were away? A man was just caught trying to sabotage the circuits giving power to the house. Alexandra is definitely planning something and I'm not taking you anywhere near her. Antonio answered and took my hand, looking deeply into my eyes. His beautiful pale eyes were filled with worry. Worry for me. Then what are we going to do? I asked quickly. I have an apartment in central Rome. No one except for my closest allies know about it. 
she won't find you there, I promised. He answered and caressed one of my cheeks. Take me there? What is he talking about? What about you? I said, sounding worried. I don't want him in danger. If he goes after Alexandra, he may never come back. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to kill her. But I need you to stay in the apartment, no matter what, okay? He explained like I was a child. My first thread of thoughts. It wasn't fair that I would be left behind. It's too dangerous, too stupid. Antonio saw how my brows furrowed and my mouth opened, but instead of letting me speak, he kissed me. Don't argue with me, Elena, please, he begged softly against my lips. I whimpered silently. I couldn't stand the thought of saying goodbye to him. I couldn't stand the idea of a bodyguard informing me Antonio had died in the assault. But what other choice do we have? Come back to me. I whispered and closed my eyes, inhaling his wonderful smell. I will. I promise. He said and kissed me again. My eyes acted like a camera and memorized every small detail on his face when he leaned back. I wanted to have a perfect picture of him in my mind. I wanted to remember everything about him, because if he didn't return to me, I would have nothing but memories. The car suddenly came to a halt, and the door behind Antonio was opened by a bodyguard. I wanted to grab hold of Antonio and refuse to let him leave. I didn't care if I had to act like a child to keep him here, but the queen inside of me let go of his hand and watched him step out of the car. And when the door closed behind him, I let the tears fall down my cheeks. Chapter 33 Violence My hands were shaking as the bullets passed over my head. Don't you dare speak of my father, you wretched whore! She screamed angrily, even if my plan hadn't gone exactly like I wanted it to. This was a great opportunity to at least get a clear shot at her. Our father, I screamed back, pouring salt in the open wound. Alexandra loafed that we were sisters. I could hear it in her voice. And I loaf it even more than she does, so I understand her rage. A frustrated shout left her lips, and more bullets flew by. But when they suddenly stopped, I realized that she was reloading. This was my chance. Alexandra must have been so blinded with rage that she didn't pay attention to how many bullets she was firing. I quickly shot up behind the counter and aimed the gun directly at the door where I believed her to be. But I was met with an empty door frame. The bitch had run away like the coward she is. Well, I'm not going to let her escape me this time. I need to finish this. I quickly walked over to the living room and peeked in and I managed to lean back just in time before more bullets flew my way. Alexandra had retreated into the living room, probably hoping to flank me again, but I'm not that stupid. You don't deserve him as your father, she screamed and fired another bullet. I think I just found her sore spot to press on. George Abeno, our father, a father I grew up without. I'll rip the air title right out of your hands. Bitch, I answered. In her fit of uncontrollable rage, which I saw as a great advantage, I decided to make a bold move, a move that could get me killed. But it was a chance I had to take. While my sister was firing like a maniac, I threw myself towards the couch, just a meter away, and took cover behind the soft furniture. I still hadn't fired a single shot at her. I'm going to save my bullets. Unlike her, I don't have more ammunition. Shit, this is really like an action movie. Go ahead and try it! She countered and fired yet another bullet towards me. But instead of cowering behind the now destroyed furniture, I leaned around the end of the couch and aimed at her. Since I have zero practice with a gun, I didn't waste precious time aiming at her head or anything. I just pointed my gun at her and fired. The force hurt my shoulders as my arms flew back. 
but the pain was worth it when I heard Alexandra scream and saw blood suddenly spurt out on the floor. Two hours earlier. When the driver escorted me into a fancy but old-looking apartment building, I tried to keep a straight face, but it was really hard since thousands of emotions were raging like a storm inside of me. What would happen? Would Alexandra finally die? Would it be Antonio who died instead? I couldn't bear the thought of losing him to Alexandra. Without Antonio, I would be lost, completely and utterly lost in the mafia world that I know so little about. After this day, and if it goes the way I hope, me and Antonio can finally have some peace and quiet. Plan our wedding, start our life together, the idea of a life with him has seemed so far-fetched, but now, it's a possibility. Follow me, my queen, the bodyguard said and gestured towards the big entrance door. I exited the car and quickly walked to the door. I don't feel safe being in the open. Antonio did assure me Alexandra would never find me here, but you can never be too careful. If Alexandra is something, it's persistent. The bodyguard caught up with me and opened the door. I smiled, trying to look calm, and entered the building. It was really old. The walls were in faded colors and reminded me of a cathedral. But Rome is an old city. Through here, my queen, he said, and led me to an elevator that took us to the top floor. Top floor. Of course, Antonio has the apartment on the top floor. They are always the most luxurious. I will stand guard outside. If there's anything, just call, my queen, he said and smiled kindly at me, opening the front door for me. The hallways were short and only led to one door, the door the bodyguard had just opened for me. Thank you, I said and closed the door behind me. The apartment had a high roof, like a really high roof, and modern furniture. It looked a bit weird considering the building was so old. But I really didn't care if the apartment looked old. All I cared about was holding Antonio in my arms again. This day is going to be a long one. Hopefully the bodyguard outside can keep me posted. All I can do now is wait and hope. Present. The thigh. The bullet I fired hit Alexandra in the right thigh. She screamed in agony as her legs gave up under her. When her body hit the floor, the gun flew out of her hand and out of reach. A groan of pain left her lips, and she pressed a hand against her bleeding leg. I immediately ran towards her with my gun aimed at her. I don't trust that that gunshot to the leg will completely hinder her. I'm not going to take any chances when it comes to my sister. Alexandra looked up at me with furious eyes. Her brown hair was a mess after the fall, and the dress she was wearing slowly turned from white to red as did the floor under her. Did I hit an artery? If I did, she'll bleed out pretty quickly. Didn't think you had it in you, Alexandra said, her voice shaking like her arms. I know what getting shot feels like. The pain is indescribable. I shot Jonathan, someone I loved. I can shoot you, I breathed. I was almost completely drained after our gunfight. Alexandra huffed, her eyes flickered. Damn, I must have hit an artery. The blood was spurting out like a small fountain. An artery does that. That's the one thing I remember from reading biology in high school. Then shoot me, she hissed. Suddenly I was faced with a decision. I could shoot her and end her life, also ending her suffering, or I could let her bleed out like the animal she is. I could let her suffer, just like I have suffered. I could take my revenge. But what would be more cruel? Ending a life and losing a part of me that was still untainted with violence? Or letting a person suffer to finally get revenge? I didn't have much time to ponder it, because Alexandria was dying fast, painfully, but fast. I see. Let me bleed out, she said her voice weaker, but still full of contempt. What should I do? Whatever choice I make, I will change.
But do I want to change? Do I need to change? Will I need to adapt to the life I have ahead of me? 40 minutes earlier. It was quiet. Like, too quiet. The bodyguard hadn't moved. At least that's what I think. I haven't heard any movements outside the door. Well, I haven't listened so closely, but that's what I think. Maybe I should look outside just to be safe. Besides, I want an update. The time that had ticked by was the slowest ever. It had only been more than an hour, but it felt like a whole eternity. The only thing I could do was wait. Sit on a couch, worry, and wait. I didn't find any interest in watching TV or reading any of the several books standing in the dark bookshelf. I just didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do, well, what I wanted to happen, was Antonio to open the door and fall into my arms. Why does he always risk his life? And why the fuck does it always end up with me being in danger? It's really bizarre. Faith is a bitch, I guess. Just like Alexandra. No, I don't even want to think about her right now. But how could I not? She could be the reason the love of my life dies. I shook my head, trying not to think about that outcome. I need to distract myself. Talking to the bodyguard seems like the best idea right now. I rose from the black couch and headed towards the front door. I really liked the apartment, even if I found it a bit odd. It had a certain charm to it. Maybe me and Antonio can come back here whenever we want to be alone. But I love the mansion even more. Who doesn't want to live in a mansion? It was dead quiet outside the door. But I ignored it and opened it. The bodyguard turned around and gave me a quick smile. Yes, my queen? He asked politely. Well, at least he will cooperate with me. Do you have any updates on the king? I asked biting my lip with eagerness. Hopefully he will have some information for me. I'm sorry, my queen. They are on radio silence. We are in the dark, he informed with a sad smile. I sighed and closed my eyes, feeling completely defeated for a short moment. I had really hoped to get something out of him, but it seems I will have to stay in the dark on this one. I see. Thank you, I said quietly. My queen, just to be safe, the bodyguard said, breaking the silence between us and handing me a black handgun. I didn't even react strongly to the gesture. I just nodded, accepted the gun, and closed the door. Well, fuck. How am I ever going to get through this? I don't have any means of finding out anything. It's so frustrating. The frustration made me clench my fists and stump like a child to the kitchen placing the gun on the kitchen island. This is so unfair, but I can't blame the bodyguard guarding me. It's not his fault. And I can't blame Antonio either. It's safer to be on radio silence, and I want him to be safe, as safe as he possibly can. I sighed to myself and walked back to the living room, laying down on the couch. It's not like I'm going to fall asleep. I'm not even tired. Sleeping is impossible. I don't want to miss a thing, but it felt nice to relax for a moment, to just forget about the stressful day that had started so wonderfully. Antonio had proposed to me. He wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. I smiled at that thought and opened my eyes, looking down at my naked left hand. Soon, hopefully super soon, a ring will adore my ring finger. I felt like a little girl again when I thought about it. Who doesn't have dreams of a big wedding dress and a sparkling ring? And of course, a handsome man promising to spend their life with you. Suddenly, I heard something. Like a muffled voice. No, a muffled scream. What the fuck? I sat up on the couch and stared at the empty door frame leading to the hall. Did something happen? Because that did not sound normal at all. Maybe he's hurt. But if he's hurt, or dead, then someone's here. Wait, maybe I'm just overthinking. Maybe I imagined it. No, that's stupid. I did hear something. 
and this is not the time to simply ignore things. What if Alexandra found the apartment? A small yelp left my lips when the door was forcefully opened. Well, broken down would be a more fitting description. Leave her to me, I heard a woman say. A woman with the name Alexandra. How the hell did she get here? Antonio said no one knew of this place. Holy shit, I need to think quickly. I have nothing to defend myself. Wait, yes, I do. The gun. I bolted up from the bed and ran to the kitchen like a crazy person. And when I entered the kitchen, my eyes set on the gun. I saw movements in the corner of my eye. I turned and saw my sister stare at me with a gun in her hand, but not raised. A sickening grin that made her eyes gleam curved her lips. Hello, dear sister, Alexandra said. Whoa, how does she know about that? Antonio didn't even know about it. Surprised? Don't be. When I found out who your mother was, I did some research. And when George found out I was looking into her, he told me everything. About Melanie? About you? Everything, she said, sounding very proud of herself. Well, shit. Fuck. Damn. But don't worry. I don't have a problem with killing my half-sister, she exclaimed more viciously and aimed the gun at me. I didn't know why I did it or why the idea ran through my mind, but my hands grabbed the tall chair by the kitchen counter, and I swung it right at her. A sickening sound erupted when the wood gave her the hardest face slap ever. Wood and flesh collided, and it was so satisfying. But it was only satisfying for a second, because the gun in her hand fired, and suddenly the side of my face was on fire. Alexandra screamed and fell back on her ass. I took the opportunity and ran, ran through the living room and bolted into the bedroom. The red blood blinded me, but the fear and adrenaline kept me going, made me run to safety, but the bedroom didn't offer much protection. The one place that entered my mind was the wardrobe. It would perfectly hide my body if she entered the room, and I didn't waste any more time and pressed my body against the hardwood. Present. Is this me? Or is this a new me? Is this the person I have to become? A person of violence? A person with no innocence left? Yes, yes, that's exactly who I need to be. I raised the gun and shot Alexandra in the head. Chapter 34 Proposal I felt a strong tingle in my fingers when I lowered the gun in my hands. The quaking sound of the bullet rang in my ears, a constant reminder of what I just had done. I just shot Alexandra. Her head had fallen limp to the ground, and the hand pressing against her bleeding leg slammed against the wooden floor, letting the blood run free. And now a stream of red blood ran over her face as well. Her green eyes were still open, but instead of burning with fury, they looked lifeless and emotionless. Alexandra was dead. It was over. No more looking over my shoulder. No more faring her. No more worrying about the future. I had just ended the immediate threat to me and Antonio. And I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I had just killed someone in cold blood. It was different with Jonathan. I tried to talk him out of it. I killed him in self-defense. But Alexandra? I had a choice to let her bleed out or get her help. It was a war of moral fighting in my head. Was it right? Was it wrong? Was it necessary? But I can't really blame myself either. Alexandra would have come back for me. She would have never left me and Antonio alone. I'm just securing our future. That's my role as queen. But what now? The bodyguard outside is dead. I have no phone or any other means to contact Antonio or his men. All I can do is wait. Wait with Alexandra's body in front of me. What the hell? This shit is messed up. 
but the shit is over now, at least. I sighed and turned around, heading towards the couch I sat on before. The most sane thing I could do now was to wait, so I sat down, placed the gun on the coffee table, and leaned back, letting my mind take me somewhere else. The shit that went down today ended in my favor. But it was hell. A part of me couldn't stop staring at Alexandra's body. I was afraid she'd jump up on her feet and shoot me. It was a ridiculous idea, but my brain couldn't comprehend that it actually was over. Alexandra was really dead. It was really, really over. Antonio and I could start to build a life together. We could start creating a family. It was time for me to become a true queen, to be a part of the mafia and fully embrace that life. My journey starting from singing A Million Reasons by Lady Gaga in a restaurant to killing my half-sister had been a wild and crazy journey. But it's my wild and crazy journey. Well, Antonio has of course been a part of it too. Suddenly the door burst open again. I had been so lost in my own thoughts that I hadn't paid attention to anything but myself, and now I have company. I quickly rose from the couch and grabbed my gun in the process. I can never be too sure. What if it's Alexandra's goons have come to find her? I did hear her speaking to someone, or someones, while entering the apartment. Elena? Elena! I heard Antonio shout, his voice full of worry. Relief crawled up my spine, and I exhaled deeply. I'm finally safe. It's about damn time I'm safe. In here, I answered. Antonio, dressed in a fancy pants, rounded the corner into the living room. He almost stepped on Alexandra's body while doing so. His pale eyes went from me down to Alexandra's body and up to me again. I probably looked like shit. Blood had dripped down the side of my face, down my chin, and I felt the salty taste on my lips, and it had also started to redden the bare skin between my breasts. And let's not talk about my hair. I bet it's a mess. She'll never find me, hmm? I said and smiled a sad smile. Antonio ignored my words, stepped over Alexandra's body, and threw his arms around me, holding me tight. I embraced him and held him as close as I could, closing my eyes and inhaling his scent that I loved so much. Now I felt safe. Him holding me, the man I loved so incredibly much, made me feel as safe as I possibly could. I also felt relieved. I was going to get out of here alive and with Antonio in my arms. I didn't want to let him go. I wanted him to always hold me like this, to always make me feel this safe. And when I thought about the things we had been through, together, I felt the tears fall down my bloody cheeks. I am so sorry. She tricked us. I thought I could keep you safe. Antonio mumbled into my ear, sounding very scared and hurt. I can understand how worried he must have been, and what pain he must have felt when he realized Alexandra had tricked him. If the roles had been reversed, I would have fallen to pieces in worry. But I don't want him to blame himself. It's in the past. Alexandra is in the past now. Hush, just hold me, my love, I whispered. And hold me he did. Antonio didn't let me go even when our long embrace turned into minutes. He waited until I let go. And after about five minutes, I exhaled and slowly leaned back looking up at his face. Those two pale eyes caught my blue ones, and they were so soft and full of love that I almost melted like ice cream in the sun. Let me see, Antonio said softly, and carefully stroked the hair away from the wound on my temple. I hissed when his thumb touched the sore flesh. Alexandra was going to shoot me, but I smashed a chair in her face and the bullet grazed my temple, I said. I couldn't help but to smile when I thought about it. Hitting her with that chair was so satisfying. And when Antonio smiled as well and slowly shook his head, I knew he felt the same. You're such a badass, my darling. I love it. He 
He chuckled and placed his big hand against my cheek. What can I say? I have someone to influence me, I said and winked at him. He sounds like a bad influence, Antonio said and let his arms fall down to my waist where he embraced me again. He is, but I love him, I said quietly, not wanting the bodyguards who were taking care of Alexandra's body to hear our conversation. It had been embarrassing enough when Antonio smacked me on the ass right in front of them. He loves you too, more than you can ever know. He mumbled and captured my lips in a well-needed kiss. Our lips danced together in a slow rhythm and said everything we wanted to say to each other. How worried we had been, how afraid but how happy we are now. It was a quite bizarre situation we found ourselves in. Me and Antonio were having a heated make-out session in front of my dead sister, and in the apartment I had almost met my end. It was strange, but I didn't care and kept kissing him like he was my oxygen. What am I saying? He is my oxygen. You have no idea how much I love you. Antonio whispered against my lips when we leaned back to catch our breath. I smiled at his words. I know, because I love you more. I joked and playfully bit his lower lip. Even if I just had killed my half-sister, killed someone in cold blood, holding Antonio in my arms and knowing we were safe, made it all worth it and Alexandra had it coming for sure. Still a gesture, I see. Come on, let's get out of here. Sophia is waiting for us at the mansion. She has been so worried, Antonio said and took my hand. Together we exited the apartment, walking through the kitchen to avoid the pool of blood left by Alexandra's body. The bodyguards were ready for us when we exited the old building. I saw no sign of Alexandra's body. I'm just hoping we don't have to ride in a car with a body in the trunk. But I didn't care to ask or look when we sat down in the car. And this time I felt so free in a way. I wouldn't have to look over my shoulder anymore. It felt unreal. Antonio placed an arm around my shoulders and I leaned against him. You are so brave today. Antonio mumbled into my ear. I looked up at him still leaning on his shoulder, and gave him a tired smile. Hell yeah, I've been brave. It's not every day you come face to face with your greatest enemy. What can I say? You're rubbing off on me, I said. It's true. Without Antonio, I would have never gone through this crazy change. But I like it. This new me, I can handle. I hope I have at least done some good to you. He chuckled and kissed me on the nose, which made me giggle. Oh, you have done many good things to me, I said and gave him a meaningful look. Antonio's smile grew wider when he realized what I was talking about. That's also true. Antonio knows how to please a woman. His touch alone drives me crazy. Glad to know I keep my queen satisfied. He teased and gave my shoulder a tight squeeze. I loved the light air between us. It wasn't heavy with troubles, because the trouble had been taken care of. Feels strange, doesn't it? Not having to worry about Alexandra? I said when we both had become more serious. It feels wonderful. I can finally have you completely to myself. Antonio sighed in relief and gave me a short but loving kiss. I wanted to jump up and down by his true words. We can finally be completely by ourselves, not having to worry about anything. As long as you don't have any more insane ex-girlfriends, you can have me every second of the day. I joked. I don't know why I felt the need to joke around all of a sudden. It just had this internal happiness that made me feel like a child on Christmas. Huh. Funny when the death of your half-sister brings you joy. I promise. Antonio laughed and captured my lips in a longer and passionate kiss. We snuggled like some lovesick couple all the way to the mansion. When he held me, the pain on the side of my face faded away. But it returned quickly when we arrived home, and when Sophia skipped down the marble stairs leading to the giant entrance door, 
but I ignored that pain as I leaped into her open arms. It's been ages since I last saw her, at least it feels like it, and when she held me like a mother, I cried. After meeting my own mother and being rejected, I couldn't feel any happier with Sophia by my side. A bodyguard briefed me. I was so worried. Sophia breathed into my ear on the good side of my face. She had completely ignored all the blood and hugged me like we had been separated for years. It's over. I killed her, I said. I'm sure Sophia already knows that but I still had the need to say it out loud. Somehow, that made everything more real. You're so brave, honey. I'm sorry it had to come to that, she said softly into my ear. I'm not sorry I killed her. Not really. Well, maybe a bit. I hated Alexandra with every fiber of my being, but I have never killed anyone in cold blood before. Me too, I whispered calming down as Sophia held me. And when I leaned back and smiled, it was a genuine smile. Sophia gave my arms a big squeeze before taking a step back. Elena, Antonio said behind me. I turned around to face him, but instead of looking up, I was looking down. Antonio was on the ground. Well, to be more specific, he was down on one knee, and a small something sparkled between his fingers. Is he... is that... I was planning on doing this after I took care of Alexandra, but you took it in your own hands. But I still want to do this. Elena Hell, the love of my life, will you marry me? Antonio said and stared into my blue eyes. The ring he had held wasn't one of those small rings with a small diamond. Nope, that diamond was huge. When did he buy that? But none of that matters. What matters is that Antonio Gennaro, the love of my life, is proposing. A real proposal. Of course I will, you dummy! I laughed. Antonio grinned, the biggest grin he had ever smiled, and stood up on his two feet. The kiss we then shared gave me such butterflies that I thought I was going to lift from the ground. The ring... That was even more beautiful up close. Felt heavy on my ring finger, but it was a good kind of heavy. Let's get married, Antonio whispered in my ear and placed a loving kiss on my cheek. Chapter 35 Wedding I wasn't told what happened to Alexandra's body, but I realized rather quickly that I didn't care. That chapter of my life was over. What I thought about when I stood in front of the full body mirror was the white dress I wore. How Sophia managed to get her hands on it so quickly is a mystery, but she found the perfect dress for me. Sophia is a goddess when it comes to fashion and planning a wedding. Just the day after Antonio proposed, properly with a ring, she started to plan everything. From the tablecloths to the guest list, and of course the dress. But the days that had passed were the best ones of my life. Now that Alexandra was dead, and the threat died with her, me and Antonio spent as much time as possible together. And I was also thrown into the role of queen. Sophia, while handling a wedding, taught me everything she had learned from being queen herself. I started to learn about politics, how things were handled, and what power I had, and I almost fainted when I realized what kind of kingdom I was now ruling over. It would take months, if not years, for me to fully adapt, but it was worth every second, because Antonio was right by my side the whole time, and he would be there for the rest of my life. Whenever I thought about me and Antonio spending our lives together, it gave me butterflies in my stomach. It almost felt unreal that this perfect man was mine, and only mine. Antonio shared my feelings, and those feelings turned into passion, and that passion turned many of our nights into nights of lustful sex. Everything was perfect. Everything. I even tried to reach out to my father, George Abeno, 
but was quickly disappointed when he didn't want anything to do with me. I can't say that I blamed him. I did kill his daughter. But for a moment, I had hoped to finally have a father, to know what love from a parent felt like. Luckily, Sophia filled that role perfectly. She knew I was hurting, but she took care of me like a mother should. Thinking about the happiness that suddenly filled my chest almost made me cry as I stared at myself in the mirror. Everything was done. My hair, my makeup, and my dress. The only thing left was to walk down the aisle where Antonio waited for me. I hadn't seen him since early this morning, where Sophia kidnapped me and started getting me ready. I wasn't even allowed to see him until the ceremony, but I tried to sneak out and steal a kiss or two from Antonio, but Sophia caught me before I managed to find him. Don't mess up your makeup, darling, Sophia said softly and tilted my chin up, preventing the tears from falling from my eyes. I'm just so happy. I whispered. Sophia's dark red painted lips smiled at me. You deserve it, every second of it, she said, and allowed me to look down again. Sophia had spent hours on my makeup and hair. I can understand if she doesn't want to redo it just because I shed some tears of happiness. I hope Antonio will like the dress, I said, my voice shaken slightly. I was so nervous. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest. It was at least 200 people that would come to the ceremony, but only 50 had been invited to the party afterwards. Most of those attending only came because of duty. That's why the guest list was so long, and why the party list was much shorter. The people who would come to the party were closer to Antonio and Sophia. I hope they'll find me worthy. He will love it, and gave my hand a gentle squeeze. Since George had rejected me, I had no one to walk me down the aisle. I almost had a heart attack when I realized that. I was so not ready to walk down a super long aisle alone. But Sophia quickly stepped in and offered to walk me, and I accepted immediately. What would I do without her? Well, if he doesn't, he'll get no sex tonight. I joked and winked at Sophia, who laughed out loud, Nelly smudging out her mascara when she wiped her eyes. It felt so natural to talk about everything with Sophia. She acted so young. You know just how to punish him, Sophia laughed. We laughed together, but when it died down, I stared at myself again. I was so beautiful. Well, are you ready? They are waiting for you. Antonio is waiting for you, Sophia said softly, like I was a small kitten. Am I ready? Fuck yes, I am. I'm going to walk down the aisle like a fucking queen and look fabulous while doing so. Let's go and kill it, I grinned. Sophia laughed again and opened the door leading out of the room. I spent the whole morning here. The entire mansion was empty of people, except for a bodyguard here and there. But the main chatter came from the green garden in the back, where two hundred people had gathered to see me marry Antonio, their king. Sophia hooked her arm in mine, and together we headed towards the big glass doors leading to the garden. It was a warm day, but not too warm since a cool summer breeze rustled the trees. It was sunny as well with no clouds in the sky. Everything was just perfect. And I looked perfect. The dress was a bit heavy with the long train and the long veil. But it was still perfect. I loved every part of the dress. I couldn't have asked for a better day or look. The chatter died down when me and Sophia stepped over the threshold of the double glass door. The chairs everyone sat on were made of wood and matched the white color of my dress. Together they formed a wide path leading to two men, a priest and the love of my life. Antonio wore a black tuxedo, looking perfect as always, and grinned like an idiot when our eyes met. I could have stood here and stared into his pale eyes for hours, 
It was Sophia who nudged me forward. She also looked extremely beautiful, fitted with a dark red dress and flowy hair. Sophia was the maid of honor and also the only bridesmaid. But Antonio was no better and had no best man, but neither of us cared about that. We just wanted to get married. The only thing Sophia had done for the path was spreading red rose petals all over the green grass. It gave everything a romantic touch. Sophia had made everything perfect. My heart leaped in my chest again and found an extremely quick pace. All eyes were on me. Literally everyone was staring at me. And then they all rose from their chairs when me and Sophia reached the first row of chairs. Many smiled while they looked at me. Some just stared, scanning me with interested eyes. Not everyone had seen me before. The path felt extremely long as I walked. I had seen it yesterday and tried walking down it with hills, but it felt so much shorter then. Now it felt like the longest walk of my life. But when my own blue eyes suddenly met a pair of pale eyes, they urged me to walk on, and I did. Mine and Antonio's eyes locked, and they stayed locked during the remaining walk. His eyes were so beautiful, like always. But it was the emotion in them, pulling me in like a hurricane, that made me walk forward. Soon he would be mine. Soon I would be his. Soon we would be together, bound to each other for life. And for once in my life, it was a commitment I didn't fear. After having a non-loving mother, I always found it hard to trust in people and relationships, both romantic and friendly ones. That's why most of my previous boyfriends never stayed long. I just couldn't commit. But with Antonio, it just felt so natural. I didn't even hesitate to give my entire life to him. That's how much I love him. When I finally reached Antonio, standing under an arc dressed with red roses, Sophia gave my hand a reassuring squeeze and smiled at me before handing my hand over to Antonio, who waited eagerly for me. He smiled like he was the happiest man on earth, which made me blush madly. Now my cheeks match the red roses surrounding us. Great. You look stunning, my queen, Antonio said as we took each other's hand. His comment just made me blush a thousand times more. How I love this man. You don't look so bad yourself, my king, I said and smiled, trying to calm my rapidly beaten heart. Antonio chuckled and together we turned towards the priest, the now sitting guests looking at our backs. Sophia had taken a seat in the front and was now watching us with a beaming smile on her lips. The priest gave us both a graceful nod, and then he opened his mouth. Me and Antonio had decided before to keep the ceremony pretty short. Neither of us wanted a long speech from the priest. We just wanted to be married. Into this union, Elena Hell and Antonio Gennaro now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not be lawfully wed, speak now or else forever hold your peace, the priest said smoothly, yet his voice was heard to the very last row of chairs. My heart skipped a beat when I feared someone would rise, someone loyal to Alexandra, and speak against our union. But when not a word was uttered, and the only thing we heard were the birds in the trees and the waves caressing the sand below, the priest continued, I charge you both, here in the presence of God, and the witness of this company, that if either of you know any reason why you may not be married lawfully, and in accordance with God's word, do now confess it. The priest continued, and stopped for a second to lay his kind green eyes on me. Please join hands and face each other, he then said. I practiced like shit yesterday. I knew the entire script in my head. I didn't want anything to go wrong so I knew exactly what to do. Me and Antonio did as we were told and faced each other, and I took both his hands in mine. 
Antonio couldn't have looked more perfect or happy as we locked eyes again. I still couldn't believe this man loved me. What have I done to deserve him? Elena Hell, please repeat after me, the priest said, and I didn't even have to listen to his words. I knew what I would say to Antonio. I, Elena Hell, take you, Antonio Gennaro, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death do us apart, I said, fighting to keep my voice steady. This is it. This is really it. We are getting married. Antonio smiled like an idiot the entire time, and I nearly laughed while looking at him. He looked so happy. Antonio Gennaro, please repeat after me, the priest said again, and turned to lay his eyes on Antonio. I, Antonio Gennaro, take you, Elena Hell, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death do us apart. Antonio said, not having to listen to the priest either, the words just left his mouth and left an everlasting stigma in my head. Elena Hill and Antonio Gennaro, having witnessed your vows of love to one another, it is my joy to present you to all gathered here as husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. The priest finished. I felt a leap of happiness in my chest, and I didn't even manage to smile before Antonio pulled me towards him and crashed his lips on mine, kissing them hungrily. Chairs erupted from the big audience. They rose from their seats and applauded like we just had performed an awesome music number. I didn't want Antonio to stop kissing me. I wanted to have him like this forever, and it truly is forever now, until death do us apart. And if there's a life after this, I will have him there as well. Antonio soon pulled away and gave me a white beaming smile. I couldn't stop myself and started laughing. This was the happiest day of my life. I married him. I fucking married him. The rest that came after, walking down the aisle towards the house, having to greet every guest and thank them for being here, all passed in some sort of blur. Maybe it was the extreme joy I felt bubbling inside my chest. It even burned like a fire when me and Antonio had our first dance to A Million Reasons by Lady Gaga on the dance floor with fifty happy eyes watching us, including an out-of-this-world joyful Sophia who couldn't stop crying when she saw us together, or when we did things a bit differently and exchanged rings in the middle of the dance floor. But all that attention quickly tired me out, and I found a moment to slip away, and I left the hot mansion to stare up at the stars from the marble balcony. From here I only heard the never-ending chatter from our guests. They laughed and cheered. I felt home with them, even if I didn't know a single one. Tired already? A smooth voice asked behind me. I turned my head and saw Antonio leaning against the doorframe, the light behind him giving him an aura of dim gold. He truly looked like an angel now that he had taken off the black blazer and only wore a white suit shirt with both sleeves rolled up to his elbows. I had also removed the veil and let down my hair to Sophia's great dismay. I looked at my husband, my freaking husband, and smiled. A little bit, but I'm not done celebrating, I chuckled, and fully turned around when Antonio walked up to me and took both my hands in his, like we had done at the ceremony. I will never stop celebrating this day. You're mine now, officially and legally, he said and smiled, staring deeply into my eyes, making me laugh quietly again. I'm yours in every way, I whispered, feeling the love I had for him surge in my chest. I still couldn't grasp the impossibly strong love I felt for my man. 
and I'm yours too, forever. He whispered back and carefully pulled me closer to give my lips a sweet kiss. This time it was my turn to smile like an idiot. This man is someone I will never grow tired of. How could I get tired of perfection? Come on, let's get inside before they notice we're gone, Antonio said when he broke the kiss, leaving me wanting more but I ignored the growing desire in my stomach and nodded eagerly. The party may be tiring, but it's fun to celebrate with his closest friends, and Sophia, of course. I still held on to one of Antonio's hands, stroking a finger over his blank golden wedding ring as we walked back to the party and into our shared future. And for the first time in my life, I was truly happy. Chapter 36 Epilogue Ten Years Later The sun was shining so brightly that I nearly couldn't see a single word on the pages I read. Not even wearing sunglasses helped, or turning away from the sun. My last solution was to move under the Marquis, but it was also so comfortable to sit in the sun, and I did promise to not move a muscle until they came around the corner again. What I wouldn't do for them. Suddenly I heard running footsteps, and I turned my head to watch my two boys running after one another. Richard, who recently had turned eight, and Joseph, who couldn't wait for his sixth birthday, laughed and screamed when they tried to finish first. But it was Richard who reached my chair first and stuck out his tongue at his little brother, who immediately gave him an angry look. Richard, be kind to your brother, I said and ruffled his dark brown hair. He laughed and grinned at me. Both boys had dark brown hair, a trait both me and Antonio had, along with pale blue eyes, a perfect mix. Mom, why is Richard faster than me? Joseph said, clearly annoyed at his constant losing. Richard never backed down from winning a competition, which irritated his brother all the time. Baby, come here and placed my book on the glass table in front of me. Joseph happily crawled into my lap and allowed me to put my arms around him. Richard is faster because he's older, but the older he gets, the more tired he will be, which means that some day you'll beat him, I explained. Joseph's eyes lit up while Richard just rolled his. Really? Joseph asked happily his eyes glimmering like diamonds. Really, I said and chuckled, carefully pulling a hand through his hair, which made him giggle and duck away from my hand. Let's race again, Richard exclaimed and looked eagerly at his brother, who hesitated. Joseph didn't like it when he lost all the time. Richard, I said and gave my oldest son a long look. He sighed in defeat. Joseph, can we please race again? He asked more sincerely, but drawing out his words. This time Joseph didn't hesitate and climbed down my lap. Running a lap around the mansion was something they loved to do, as well as going down to the beach and swimming. They also loved it when we went to the cinema or a museum. To be honest, they loved to do anything as long as me and Antonio were with them. But since we ruled a mafia, we didn't always have time to be with them, but now I had a lot of time to be with them, since I was taking it easy. Well, it was Antonio who insisted that I didn't stress myself in this condition, which always made me laugh, but I accepted his request and now only operated from our home in Italy. Mom, will Sophia run with us too when she comes? Richard suddenly asked. I smiled and placed a hand over my big stomach. You'll have to wait a few years for that. She'll be too small, I explained. Me and Antonio always wanted a third child, and I felt very content when we found out it was a girl. Smaller than me? Joseph asked with big eyes. I chuckled and nodded. Even smaller than you, I said and started stroking the big baby bump on my stomach. I remember how fascinated Richard was when he saw his little brother who was only a small baby. Joseph will be just as excited, I bet. Come on, 
Richard said, and grabbed Joseph's arm, dragging him away from me. And just a second later, they ran away like two bullets. I couldn't help but laugh when I saw my two sons run so fast. I loved them both so much. I was blessed to have them as mine. I looked down at my stomach, still caressing the bump. It felt natural for me and Antonio to name her Sophia when we found out we were going to have a girl. She was overjoyed when we told her. Sophia was such a wonderful grandmother, taking care of our sons whenever me and Antonio were preoccupied. Being a grandmother filled her life with a new purpose, and she cared for the boys like they were her own. And now that we soon would have a daughter, she was eager to dress her up in pretty dresses and spoil her. I leaned back in the chair and closed my eyes, enjoying the silence. It was absolute bliss to have children, but it got a little loud sometimes. At times like these, I enjoyed being alone feeling the sun gently burn against my skin. I loved this life. I loved being the queen. Just two years after our marriage, I was fully adapted to my new life. I handled just as much as Antonio, attending meetings and giving out commands. We ruled together now, and I had earned the respect of all families within the Mafia. No one dared to lay a finger on me, because they all knew the ordeals I had gone through. It was inevitable that the truth about my blood would come out. And when it did, and everyone found out I had killed my sister, they saw me in a new light. They saw me as a force not to be reckoned with. But unlike my sister, I was kind and ruled with an iron, but gentle hand. And so I was both respected and feared. Sleepy already? A soft voice whispered in my ear. I didn't even need to open my eyes to find out who it was. I recognized his voice immediately, and him finally being home made me smile. What can I say? I'm sleeping for two. I chuckled and placed a hand on his cheek with a soft stubble. It took me a couple of years, but I managed to persuade him to shave his beard down to only a stubble. He looked so much younger without it and it felt so much better when he went down on me during sex, and Antonio loved to go down on me. How are my girls today? He asked and placed a hand on my stomach, probably trying to feel her kick. Our little girl had been very active the last few days, kicking and turning. We're fine, just enjoying the sun and my husband, I said, opening my eyes and taking off the sunglasses. My husband was crouching next to the armchair I was sitting and looking lovingly at me. Ten years together, and he still looked at me like that. And the boys? Are they running around again? He chuckled, being very well aware of their sprint around the mansion. They are, I sighed and looked dreamily into his eyes. Then we have some time for ourselves before they come around, Antonio said and captured my lips in a passionate kiss that awoke my desire as quickly as a lightning strike. When we found out I was pregnant, Antonio wanted to have sex all the time, because he knew it would be none of that as my stomach got bigger and bigger. I felt my womanhood grow wetter by his kiss alone. It had been a month since we last had sex. Ruling the Mafia with two children really took up a lot of our time and at night we just wanted to sleep. Some evenings we didn't even go to bed at the same time. But I wouldn't trade this life for anything. Neither my mother, father, or Julian had tried to reach out to me. But I was happy without them, especially my mother. I moaned into Antonio's mouth and grabbed the front of his white suit shirt, pulling him closer. My husband chuckled, but eagerly obliged to my closeness. It had been too long since we shared an intimate moment. Raising a family is tiring, but it's worth it in the end. I wouldn't trade away my boys for anything. Suddenly, one of Antonio's warm hands sneaked under the low plunge on my dress, his hand teasingly reaching my breast. I shivered with delight. For a short moment, I feared that Richard and Joseph would come running and see where Antonio's hand was, but I quickly remembered that my chair was turned away from them, 
so I allowed myself to relax and enjoy Antonio's teasing touch. My nipple immediately hardened under his hand, and his fingers quickly started playing with my nipple. The intimate touch sent shivers down my spine, and I pulled him closer. I'm going to take you so hard after our little Sophia is born, Antonio whispered against my lips when he leaned back to get some air. His kiss had taken my breath away, and his words made my womanhood pulsate. My king, I moaned appreciatively. Dad, Richard suddenly shouted. We reacted quickly, being very good at hiding our intimate touches when our boys unexpectedly came around, and Antonio stood up, removing the hand from my chest, and I fixed the dress. Now it looked like nothing had happened. I decided to join Antonio and rose from the chair I was sitting in. My two sons bolted towards Antonio, who kneeled down and opened his arms to them. My favorite boys, he laughed and embraced them. The three childish little boys in front of me laughed and hugged, like a family was supposed to do. Just looking at them, my family, made my stomach all warm and fuzzy. Carry me, Dad, Richard begged. Antonio struggled to lift Richard up. He's not a little baby anymore, but he always obliged when Richard asked to be carried. Me too, Dad, Joseph exclaimed and reached up his thin arms. Antonio chuckled, but managed to place Joseph on one hip and Richard on the other. It looked very funny, and I saw Antonio was struggling to carry them both. Can I carry Sophia, Mom? Joseph asked me happily. Of course you can, but she will be very tiny and fragile, I told him. Joseph nodded eagerly, looking very excited to finally meet his little sister. He couldn't wait to have someone to protect, and someone smaller than him. Come on, let's go inside before your mother gets a heat stroke, Antonio joked and winked at me. I just rolled my eyes at him. Ever since we found out I was pregnant, Antonio didn't let me do anything for too long. He was so protective over me, but I did feel very warm, so heading inside was probably the best option. Antonio let the boys down once we were inside, and they ran off to play in their big playroom. The mansion had gone through a big renovation during my first pregnancy. We wanted to make the mansion into a family home. Well, I was more keen on changing almost everything. I just wanted my children to have a wonderful childhood. What's on your mind? Antonio asked softly and placed an arm around my waist. I didn't tell Antonio about my horrible childhood until I became pregnant with Richard, and after that, Antonio spent every second trying to keep me as happy as possible. Just old stuff. But I'm over that. I have you, and soon three wonderful children, I said, and beamed up at him, even if it was very tough at times. I loved being pregnant. It was a special feeling to have life inside of me. Soon, Antonio sighed and looked down at my stomach. Now we were just waiting for my water to break. Our doctor said she would arrive in around three days, but nothing was certain. Very soon. She's been very active these last few days, I said, remembering how she kicked just an hour ago. Well, she'll need to be active with Richard and Joseph as her big brothers. Antonio chuckled and still kept an arm around my waist as we walked towards the giant living room where we spent most of our time together. She certainly will, I chuckled with him and placed my head on his shoulder. Suddenly I got another contraction. I've had some small ones this week, but nothing this strong. I hissed and had to stop to get my bearings. That's when I felt hot liquid run down my legs. Oh, shit. Darling, are you all right? Antonio asked and removed his arm to look down at me. My water just broke. Our daughter is coming. I breathed, still managing to smile in spite of the pain, but it soon vanished when I got another painful contraction that almost made me fall to my knees. Our daughter's coming. Our daughter's coming, Antonio exclaimed and widened his eyes. I screamed when another wave of pain came over me. Jake, get a car right now, 
Antonio shouted and placed his arms firmly around me, sweeping me off my feet to carry me like a bride. I didn't even complain as more waves of pain rode through my body. Jake, the bodyguard who had guarded me when I visited my mother all those years ago, sprung into action and rushed out of the mansion. More guards had heard their king call, and they flocked behind us as Antonio carried me towards the big front door. Let's have another baby, I whispered and smiled up at him. Antonio grinned, completely overjoyed, and placed a gentle kiss on my forehead as the entry doors closed behind us.